about the OJ. So I get home yesterday. I turn on the TV to check out the OJ. Mm -hmm. And there's a uh, Captain Japan presiding with his computer. <laughs> Ranch. Rance Edo. <laughs> <laughs> and he's on there. And I, I saw one report. Tomorrow, Captain Japan is going to have his parents. No, to, yesterday they were in the courtroom. Were they? Room. Yesterday they were in the courtroom, and he was upset that they weren't going to get to see the opening <laughs> argument. You know what I say to that? He Here. was wrangling. Here's what I say to this. Oh! That's right. You know why, Robin? Why? Oh, boy, that reek. Oh, Ooh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's leaving. <laughs> Ooh, uh, you just cleared the studio. Oh, oh stinks in here, Robin. Ooh. I wonder why. This guy, can you imagine? You see, this is what I mean with these judges now. They, they're, they're looking to be celebrities. Why would his parents, they don't come to any other case. What? That is an obscenity. Why is the judge's parents, Mrs. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Rito, <laughs> what are they doing in there? What is going on at that trial? Him with the computer. Did you see the setup in this courtroom? Forget about whether O.J.'s guilty or innocent. We all know he's guilty. You don't even buy the new alibi. No. <laughs> Did you see the setup? They got computers in there. I'm going to tell you what that computer equipment is worth. Half a million dollars. Easily. Easily. Did you see what that computer can do in there? Yes, I was reading about it yesterday. They're all hooked up with big video screens. You would think this is a rock concert they're putting on. They got projection TV. They got uh, the court reporters wired in right to Lance Ito's little computer there. They can see um, evidence on the Unbelievable. Computer. And it's all tied in so that the, the cameras at home can pick up evidence. This TV equipment is fancier than the taping of Roseanne. Do you know that? I was talking to a guy who was involved in the taping of Roseanne. He says, we don't have equipment that good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like it's like justice unplugged. You ever see the MTV MTV unplugged? This is justice unplugged. We would like to see some unplugged justice yeah, ever change. The, too much unplugged. electricity. Yeah, the acoustic judgito. <laughs> <laughs> too much. I'm watching this. I'm going out of my mind. And then I'm watching. I turn it on and. Uh, Lo and behold, they, they're calling witnesses, and they, they say, uh, we're going to be uh, calling uh, Tony Katane, who is, of mm -hmm. course, our, our mm -hmm. friend, also uh, the star of uh, Hercules. <laughs> and uh, I heard the name Steve Leeds mentioned as, as a witness. No, you didn't. Steve Leeds, the record guy we know. Really? i got to call him. I didn't hear that. I was trying to listen to that jury list. I didn't hear Steve's name. Yeah, Steve Leeds, they said. I, I mean, I'm sure there's other Steve Leeds in the world, but could it be our Steve Leeds? I thought about it all night. Because I called Gary and go, is Steve Leeds going to be at the O.J. trial? What kind of connection? I don't know. Want to call him? really talking about the connection. I have his number. Yeah, why not? Let's find out. It could be, you know, O.J. did videos. Maybe. Did you see it, Ralph? Yeah, I was watching it. There was, it was a list of people who were possible. Possible? Possible uh, people who witnesses. were going to be witnesses or interviewed oh, or yeah, something. Right. We right. know that. And he was on the list and uh, Tony Katane. Oh, that's right. Get out, get out, get out now. Ralph just came in and repeated everything we just said. I know. Get out. You are the most annoying man on the planet. <laughs> you have nothing to add to my show. He's a backup talker to the show. Right. He said it in reverse order. Right. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> puppet head. <laughs> Empty as a puppet. Billy, work a Ralph from the back. <laughs> There's a list. There's a list. <laughs> There's a list of people, and Tony Katane was one, and <laughs> Steve Leeds was the other. <laughs> I saw it. Steve Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> There's a list. Dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, I saw it. There's a list. Of prospective jurors. Tony Katane. <laughs> I better go in. I can help. <laughs> <laughs> you think Steve's home? He must yeah, be so a record I guy. I can't believe he's the lead. They don't get in until uh, till 10, 30 or 11, those guys. Yeah. That's a record guy. And then his wife might answer. What's her name? Mrs. Leeds? The lovely Wendy. Wendy? Nicole. Good morning. 
Hey, Steve. Yeah. Howard. Steve. Steve. Good morning. It's Howard. You're on the air. Well, good morning. How are you? <laughs> Were you listening? Um, I was actually in the next room. It's on in the bathroom. That's usually where I do most of my listening. Well, they do say it's toilet humor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steve. Now, maybe I had crap in my ears, but I turned on the TV for the Judge Ito show yesterday, and I heard your name mentioned. Yeah, I got a couple of people called me about that. Is that you? Oh, well, I guess I have to tell the truth, huh? Yeah. No. Oh. Uh, no. I knew it wasn't. It's, Damn. I got more phone calls yesterday from that than I did when I'm on your show. Oh, so it's not the st our Steve Leeds. No, I'm sorry. I didn't figure it's another that. Steve Leeds. All right, so Steve, we'll uh, call you again in another five years. Oh. Gee, okay. So, uh, anyway, we're having the uh, Super Bowl party on Friday. Who are the guys who want to come, Fafa? I can't believe Steve Leeds wasn't the Steve Leeds. Holy. I didn't figure it could be. Yeah, Steve sold him the knife. <laughs> <laughs> what did they say about Tony Katane? I was trying to remember because they said something weird about her when they mentioned her name. I don't remember, but I know that, you know... They showed a cool picture of her on the news. <laughs> she was bent over in a bikini and a uh, big breast were... Yeah, they're trying to find the most uh, sexy pictures of her that they can. I know in all the video shows, the tabloid shows, mm. whenever they talk about her, they get some of those videos of her sliding around on a car. <laughs> yeah, rolling around on a Jaguar, <laughs> half naked. When they talk about her and OJ. And it's great because every guy watching it goes, I mean, he had that and he had to go kill the other one? What the hell for? Who cares? It was pretty funny because yesterday I was... You got 20 rubber holes. What are you worried about one of them for? Oh. I was looking at the transcript of O.J. on our show. Yeah. Have you ever looked back at that to see what it was all about? We have a transcript? No, we don't have a transcript. We have a tape. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Has that been subpoenaed? <laughs> O.J., uh, you questioned O.J. in depth about losing Nicole. Want to play it back? It was great because you're sitting there saying, Man, I can't believe you couldn't satisfy your wife. <laughs> he could have killed me. But it's really incredible because you're. Like, when did you hear it? I I just happened to look at it yesterday. Really? Yeah. And what do you mean you looked at it? I have a transcript of it. Oh, you do? Yeah. And I just happened to pick it up to see what was said to OJ. What did I say to him? You just started asking him about the breakup of his marriage. Yeah. And you said, gee, man, I can't imagine a woman leaving you. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, it happens. And you say, you couldn't satisfy her? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and when you think about O.J. now, you're like, well, what, are you crazy asking? <laughs> and, what, and what did he say when I said you can't satisfy he's him? like, no, man, it was never, nobody ever left me for that. <laughs> oh, just because I beat him. Yeah. <laughs> I might have caused him to go and over. And then you start talking about the new girl, and you're like, hey, well, she must be pretty hot. You know, if you're, you know she must be incredible. And what's it like when she first, do you, does your head explode when, <laughs> when she first, you know, like you know you're first going to get her? Oh, yeah? Oh, it's pretty wild. Hey, I'm holding on to that tape. It's very valuable. <laughs> to think that you had this interview with OJ. Right. An exclusive. <laughs> Howard knew the whole time. <laughs> hey, where's Gary with the uh, Super Bowl? <laughs> All right, Robin, what's in the news? Come on. Well, Let's of get course, the big OJ trial never got to opening arguments yesterday because they started wrangling over a brand new list of uh, prospective witnesses mm. issued by the defense and the first claims by the defense that they have a possible alibi that it would have made it impossible for O.J. to have committed the murder. Mm. The yeah, now, why is that just coming up? The prosecution went ballistic when they heard this news. They said that the defense wasn't playing fair. They were supposed to provide them with uh, this kind of information and this list long before the day that opening arguments were supposed to start. And so there was a lot of legal wrangling going on in the courtroom yesterday. Yeah, why wouldn't O.J. mention this so he didn't have to spend a full year waiting for trial? Yeah, why and... wouldn't you want to get out of jail as soon as possible? If you had evidence that you weren't the culprit, wouldn't yeah. you release that right away? Wouldn't you want the prosecution to know about that? OJ, I'll tell you why you don't, because O.J.'s alibi is the exact same one that Scott has. <laughs> it's confidential. <laughs> I don't want to reveal it at this time. <laughs> God, liberty to say. <laughs> 
You know, why didn't O.J. mention that his car was home at the time earlier? Why yeah, they wait? now say that there's a woman who mm-hmm. lives in the neighborhood who saw O.J.'s car there at the time Nicole was allegedly being killed, so oh. O.J. couldn't have been there and doing it. I am not at liberty to give my alibi. They're even implying that maybe the police might have moved the car to make their story better. They're really yeah. sticking with this allegation <laughs> that Mark Furman is trying to implicate O.J. in this murder. Mark Furman hates black people. <laughs> do you believe any of that? I don't. Well, he might have said some things. I don't think so. How do I know? I mean, that's a real good distraction. So, so what? What What the I hell is... I don't say that he didn't say these things. Yeah. He might be a racist, but did he frame O.J.? I don't know. I don't yeah. think so. That's a, a far way to go. Who was it, Mark Furman, who beat Nicole the whole time? Yeah, did he kill her yeah. and Ron Goldman and then pin it on O.J.? <laughs> yeah. The cops, I heard, airlifted the car with a helicopter. <laughs> and this nobody, witness, saw. nobody saw except this one woman that just suddenly appeared. That's, how, that's a hell of a... I'd love to be the prosecuting attorney on this case. You think that Marsha Clark will be able to handle it? I don't know. She gets a little shaky up there sometimes. Yeah, because she seemed to be rattled by this. Yeah, I know. Her eyes get all watery and buggy. You know what I mean? Like, mellow out, honey. But she's okay. I mean, you know, she's got a nice body. Well, Judge Ito says he expects to see some good lawyering yes. during this lawyering. He's looking forward to it. I am very excited about Dream Team. <laughs> These best lawyers ever assemble. Everybody, and now, suddenly, now that the trial's starting, the jury's being brought in, it's like 50 black attorneys all up there. <laughs> you know Everybody's got black Everyone is black. There was a guy up there yesterday. He must have just got out of law school. I don't know. He was all confused. Looked like the Super Bowl. Looked like the choir. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's uh, Martha Reeves? We got the Vandellas back there. <laughs> you mean you got the pips where it's glad it's not? <laughs> yeah. Whatever. My comedy is not pure. <laughs> like my lungs. <laughs> I'll come back when I have a better line. <laughs> well, anyway, let's listen to a little bit of what went on. I love Judge Ito. Here is the judge giving some instructions to the lawyers. You behave. <laughs> I expect to see a demonstration of absolutely fabulous lawyering, lawyering skills. How do I look, Mom? But I also expect to see absolute professionalism. In this endeavor. Yeah. His, he brought his parents into the professionalism. He brought his parents into the courtroom to How watch him. How professional is that? He thinks he's a rock star. Welcome to my carnival. Is this right. a play? This be greatest trial of my career. I can see inviting your parents to the opening night of a play. Yeah. But not the opening arguments of a murder trial. Yeah, I don't get it. Oh, uh, we get to a front row seat, Mama-san. <laughs> Uh, people at home, don't adjust your TV color. I am yellow. <laughs> I mean, and so conscious of the camera. Judge Ito has a monitor so he can see how, how he looks? looks on TV. I don't even have that on the E show. I don't want to see how I look. I want to look at the dairies. Well, where are rushes? No, that's film, uh, Your Honor. Oh, all right. Okay. So, anyway, here is. Judge Ito, the only thing the jurors heard yesterday were these instructions from the judge. Do not open until tomorrow. I rub show business. You must base your decision on the facts and the law. You have two duties to perform. First... Duty. Hey, Jackie, duty. <laughs> <laughs> you must determine the facts from the evidence received in the trial and not from any other source. A fact is something proved directly or circumstantially by the evidence Duh. or by stipulation. We know a that. A stipulation... Like, like that jury's going to follow this. Yeah, what is stipulation? This is, uh, I don't know how many people, 12 people who never heard of O.J. There's <laughs> <laughs> an agreement between the attorneys regarding the facts. Second, you must apply the law that I state to you to the facts as you determine them. Oh, that's clear. And in clear. this way, arrive at your verdict and any finding you are instructed to include with your verdict. Imagine if I read a live commercial like he reads the rules to the to the jury. I'd be fired. Perfectly understandable. Yeah. He communicated very well there, and everybody now knows what they're supposed <laughs> to do. He could care less if the jury understands. Who could follow those rules? Why would you speak in lawyer speak to uh, 12 lay people? Lay people. That's what I want to do <laughs> at the uh, Super Bowl party. So we have more of Judge Ito's instructions. 
fascinated by yeah. all this. Oh, Jackie mm -hmm. took something from me. The prosecution has the burden of proving these facts by a preponderance of the evidence. Preponderance of the evidence means evidence that has more convincing force and the greater probability of truth than that opposed. <laughs> Can you imagine? These are the rules. I know. And the probability. He's not even interested. He, he could care less. <laughs> Come on, let's see some good stuff. More pictures of Nicole. Did you see that picture of Ron Goldman laying there on the ground, all bloody? That brought no. it home. Well, what happened was, I thought it was kind of weird. You know, they've always said, let's not show pictures of the dead bodies. So evidently, Ito has a button that he can hit that if he doesn't want the cameras at home to see stuff... Or the jury. Or the jury. He hits it. So they showed the body of Ron Goldman laying there in a pool of blood with the, um, the I guess, the coroner, or not the coroner, but whoever the investigator was, wearing shoes. That's supposed to be the defense's, uh, you know, look how that sloppy they were on the crime scene. Right. You see this guy's body laying there covered in blood. If you don't convict O.J., you well, know, you want to convict the guy who killed him. Oh, well, please. <laughs> if, you know, it really drives it home because everyone was saying, well, gee, that really helped the prosecution. It didn't help the prosecution. You mean? I mean, you know, everyone was saying it helps the defense. It helped the prosecution. So yeah, I heard it. a lot because I didn't see all of it. I wasn't at home most of the afternoon. But the part that I did see, they kept talking about the videotape they had. They hmm. sprung a videotape on the prosecution as well yeah. of the... Uh, officers at the crime scene trying to prove that evidence was mishandled. To it. Thank you, Judge Ito. Judge Ito, thank Now, here is F. Lee Bailey for the defense. F. U. Bailey. <laughs> he is arguing about Mark Furman and whether his alleged racism should be an issue and uh, a point of cross-examination in the trial. If he suppressed evidence and claimed to find incriminating evidence... I think we hardly need go further before we have the right to ask him, and by the way, haven't you said on past occasions that you are in favor of genocide? Because what he really said was, let's put them all in a pile and burn them all. And I haven't heard that come from anyone since Adolf Hitler. All right, F.U. Bailey getting in. You know, you never see him on TV that much just sitting there shaking his head and stuff. Yeah, but there he is. He's getting a few words. Here's some more. F.U. Bailey? Mm-hmm. Area F. Bailey. We're not trying to prove that Fun guy. did anything, because we don't have to. We're simply saying, if the only evidence you have that this glove came from O.J. Simpson's home is Detective Mark Furman, that isn't enough evidence to convict a rat, let alone a human being. And I think that's a fair argument under the circumstances of this case. There you go. F you just reducing the whole trial to a glove. You know, no blood in the car, nothing. Well, F. Lee Bailey, one of the key witnesses in. is Mark Furman, and if yeah. you impugn, impugn his testimony, Howard, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then their case has a big dent in it. Yeah. Suddenly, it's not the O.J. case and who killed this. It's, it's a it's oh, Mark, Furman Mark, Mark Furman case, and he, you know, trying trying to confuse everyone. And of course, that jury will be confused. <laughs> well, Judge Ito has decided that questions about his. Uh, Feelings on race are acceptable. Admissible I mean, admissible yeah. in this case. So they will be addressing that, I'm sure, on cross examination when they get to him. Now, tell me about this woman who supposedly saw OJ's car parked there the whole night. What was she staring out the window all night? Yeah, she's obviously one of those people who just watched. Do they know her anything? Do they know who she is? Uh, I have no idea how much they told the prosecution. I just know that they're saying now that a woman is uh, willing to testify that O.J.'s car was there all evening, and if it was moved, then somebody else had to move it. Is she willing to testify that the Virgin Mary uh, came to her in her encyclopedia and started crying? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm because not I need someone to testify. <laughs> so let me get this straight now. So what you're saying is the O.J. case boils down to this, if I may be simplistic. Yes. Yeah. Furman. No, it doesn't boil down to anything. Well, let me just let me let me give you my summation. Furman said nigger, so O.J. is innocent. Now he didn't only say nigger. If you oh. were listening to F. Lee Bailey, he told he him said to burn more. all the niggers. He'd like he'd like to see all the niggers burned, I guess. Oh, I see. And uh, they want to show a pattern of racism in his life. Okay, so Furman's a racist, so O.J. is innocent. Okay. That's their contention. That's good. That's, that's very good. to question whether, you know, they were saying that the other police officers came and they sh uh, shined flashlights into the estate and they didn't see any glove. It was only when Mark Furman showed up that a glove appeared. I see. So that's what they're trying to say. You have and to question his motive. And how did Furman get the blood into O.J.'s car? 
They didn't talk about that. Oh, okay. So you're at, you, they I'm had jumping never ahead. They said right. that Furman put the blood in O.J.'s car. And did Furman uh, stick O.J. in the car as he tried to get out of the country with uh, a disguise? They and a, never oh, okay. accused him of that, but you can imagine that if O.J. was being framed by someone so formidable as Mark Furman, it could send him over the edge and I put see. him in a car to... Right. Slowly go down the road. Did Mark Furman beat OJ's wife? I'm just curious. Did he ever get a good punch in her tail? That is not what they said he did. No. <laughs> See, you're trying to confuse me. Did Furman gas up the getaway Bronco? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Here is Marsha Clark just to right. hear a little bit of her argument about why she spent <laughs> is playing games with the way they handled things yesterday. She gets all excited. The problem is that we don't, how can we proceed with opening statements ourselves without knowing uh, what the defense is going to be permitted to do? The defense complains about being, we're always asking to preclude them from doing something. We're not. We're asking for a fair and orderly trial in which the people's rights are not being abrogated by these last minute ambushes. I'd like to get her in the sack. <laughs> you Quiet like her it. down. You still want to. I like it when she's mad. Yeah. <laughs> Feisty, a little ballerina body. Former dancer. They always go former dancer. Yeah, you she's still dancing. Ballerina. Right. Okay. What ballet was that? Former dancer. And finally, I think this is Judge Ito making the decision that uh, the question of racism can be a part of the trial. This is Judge Ito? Yeah. I'm precluding the defense from making mention of Detective Furman during the course of their opening statement solely on the basis of the fact that of the late turning over of the other statements of Kathleen Bell today. However, I find the issue of racial animosity to be um, something that they're entitled to cross-examine on. All right. So they will be questioning. It should be interesting. Makes for a better trial. <laughs> Makes for better television. Everybody, they, they constantly... Uh, question, you know, now they're going around asking people, are you watching the O.J. trial? Mm. Uh, are you going to pay attention to the trial? And people are saying, oh, I'm tired of it. Oh, I've given up on it. Oh, it's too much. It's yeah. taking too long. But as soon as O.J., if O.J. took the stand, everybody would be watching. Oh, and also, by the way, um, you know, people, I, the, the other point is people are going around saying, I'm sick of the O.J. trial. I hate the O.J. Mm -hmm. trial. I can't stand the O.J. trial. And they were saying that when the O.J. trial was not, the other day they decided not to put it on instead of the soap operas. Everybody was watching soap operas. Abandoned the soap operas, the viewing went down, and they all went over to CNN and watched the uh, OJ trial. Mm -hmm. People are totally consumed with the OJ trial. Absolutely, and those people who are saying they're not interested, right? They're lying. Will the word nigger go out over national television? I think so. Better call the E network. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing them. gavel to gavel coverage. I don't know what they're going to do. Well, they're going to want to bleep it. They're going to want to bleep that word. We'll have to see how they handle right. it. Yeah, it's going to be handled properly. Ooh, what is this I see in page six today? Let's get back to that in a second. We have to take a break. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I'm watching the O.J. trial, and um, first of all, I watch the li I get the E channel half a day, so mm -hmm. I was watching E. Oh, so you got to watch some of the E coverage. Yeah, E is covering the trial, and it's real funny because Kathleen Sullivan is sitting there and doing like Marsha Clark's fashion mistakes. Are you kidding? Did anybody else see this? Yeah, you saw it. I did. It was Marsha Clark wardrobe on trial. Yeah. Oh, no. You know, it was pretty funny, yeah, because... But although, I got to admit, I was getting into it, too, because Marsha Clark is... First of all, Marsha Clark's got to grow her hair out or do something with what her hair. What is with that hair? I, I think, don't know. I was distracted by the hair. I think Because she's, I'm like, is that a, like a tight little curly perm? It's almost like she's going bald. She looks like a guy who's going bald. Because she'd be so much... If she straightened that out, I think she'd just be so much better off. Well, if you remember, originally, she hadn't straightened out and it looked like she was losing her hair. Yeah. And she's got a great body. Well, how about some of Jose's secret hair? <laughs> yeah, like why not add some hair? Like there's no shame in getting some uh, some of like, those spray cans. Or the so. secret hair. Now you clip mm. it in and you can tell. Well, that would look really cute. Rogaine. Give her some Rogaine. <laughs> you better make, call that 800 number for the Minoxidil. Folder. And she has like a um, she wears a blue suit with the shirt buttoned all the way up to her neck. You know, like that one of those little white. Frilly shirt. Right, little pinafore kind of uh, very yeah. circumspect. I guess she can't look slutty in front of the jury, but, you know, there's a whole thing going on there. But she wears blue stockings with a blue 
outfit. And I think that's a fashion no-no. The critique well, yesterday... you certainly did look her up and down. <laughs> I sure yeah. did. The critique on E yesterday was that she's going for the little orphan Annie look again. Yeah, but these are women p picking her apart. They're not picking apart any of the what the, uh, the men, men are, are wearing. wearing. But so what? The men are boring. They wear a suit. They said Shapiro's tie had to go. Oh. <laughs> Shapiro. Every lawyer up there is Jewish, except if you're black. Ashley Bailey's not Jewish. Probably is. Probably changed his name. <laughs> <laughs> Used to be F.U. Bailey. <laughs> changed it. <laughs> All Jews are lawyers. All Jews either have lawyers or are lawyers. <laughs> Jews love to fight that way in court. That's true. They love the court system. The Jews finally got their way. That's where they do their best fighting. The Jews so they're love not the kind of no, people who fight on the not street. physical fighters. They love to fight in court. Yeah. They got lawsuits going night and day. <laughs> Everybody's got a lawsuit. <laughs> the judges love it. The lawyers love it. They all love it. They love it. It's a big money racket. <laughs> it's a shakedown. Verbal karate. Yeah, verbal karate. And they they're finally good got at it. it. Oh, good you at it. All they get was you negotiate. Right. I don't care if you really weren't damaged. Why? <laughs> my get in weapon there. is the pen. Yes. <laughs> this is my weapon. The, this is how we punish the people. The Chinese use those little stars. Right. I use the pen. <laughs> the Schwarzes hit each other in the face. We got a pen. They sue in their sleep. <laughs> Unbelievable. Contracts, contracts. Yeah. Never seen one I couldn't break. <laughs> I was damaged. <laughs> Make me whole. Yeah, Anna, I need a remedy. <laughs> yeah. You should be able to settle stuff by punching people in the face. <laughs> now they'll see you for that, too. <laughs> the whole system loves money. They sue for it, argue for it, they, they, they collect it. Never bang their wives, just for the money. <laughs> Unbelievable. And I'll tell you, you know, I'm watching this case, and they get this black guy up there. To, the, Chris Darden? Chris Darden. Looked like he just got out of law school. Sounded like he just got out of law school. And it was clear the only reason he was there, because he was black. There was no reason. No reason. For him to do opening arguments. The guy was awful. I mean... I was trying to follow him, and he kept repeating the same thing over and over and over again. He was like... Uh, he sounded like, like Tom Chisano, you know, would be a lawyer. He started out into control. You got to understand something. Controlled Nicole. They had a great. They have a great case. The prosecution has a great case. Oh, everyone knows OJ is guilty. But you got to get up there. If you're going to be a lawyer, you got to razzle dazzle. You got to have a little bit of showbiz. You do. You got to be able to say. You know, it's almost like giving a eulogy. You don't even have to present the facts. Let me tell you what an opening argument is. You don't even have to present the facts so much. What you have to do is get people emotionally involved. Show those pictures of the headless bodies. Get lots of blood going. Uh, Ron Goldman's dad broke down and started crying when uh, they the showed mom the picture. Of uh, Nicole Simpson was glaring at O.J. the entire time the opening arguments were going on, and at one point did break down in in verb audible sobs. Yeah, it's good. that's good, and you got to make people cry and feel emotion. I mean, you 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 can't stand there like a a, a robot. That does not compute. <laughs> But it was clear they brought in this guy because O.J. had well, a whole bunch of blacks. Oh, oh, I don't know why they brought. Him. Oh I wouldn't man! To oh, put in their oh, oofa, <laughs> oofa! Where'd they get this guy from? He's always worked there. Darnell. I didn't know where the microphone. Darnell. Was. Yeah. His name is Chris. Darnell. Oh, <laughs> wasn't Darnell? No, it was Chris Darden. Darden. That's it. That Darden was his first name. No. no. <laughs> But the one thing I find very... Let me give my opening wait argument. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just let me say this. All right. Every time they mention one of these black guys, they got to tell you what a superior lawyer they are. Yeah, right. Like, you couldn't... If they are superior, they'll show me. Right. You don't have to tell me every minute. Yeah, well, every minute they're trying to tell you that the guy's got, you know, credentials and stuff. So, anyway, the prosecution brought in their black guys. Now, first of all, when... Uh, in most of these cases, what they do is... you got to understand something. What? Like, most of the prosecuting attorneys are not real good attorneys. If, you, if you're a good attorney, you go into private practice where you can milk and bilk at 400 mm -hmm. an hour mm -hmm. so that you can rob from the rich. Now, if... And most guys who go into the DA's office to get a little training, then they branch out and get into the private practice. Right. Good. Any lawyer who's got a, the gift of lying 
is going to be in private practice. So that when he hands you your bill for fifty, sixty, seventy thousand, he can do it with a straight face. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that you know you can go, uh, well, here's your bill, and you go, what? What, what do you mean fifty no, thousand? You, you fall over. Yeah, when say. you keel over, F fifty thousand. There's no person on the planet that makes fifty thousand. Oh well, you're wrong. And there were doctors, medical men who can take your heart, pull it out, and put in a new one. You could don't get, get a 50, whole 000. new heart, lung, right. everything, and the guy won't charge you that much. Yeah. Now there will never be any reform in this area because the all lawyers. the judges and the lawyers and all of the legislators are law liars, yeah. lawyers. <laughs> So, therefore, they're all creeps. They're all in it together. When you go to law school, you learn to be a creep. You learn to tell your client the following. If you were damaged, make it worse. If you are, if you are not damaged, lie and say you were damaged. Don't tell me you're guilty. Right. <laughs> if you're, uh, yeah. That's the point. Think but me, well. if I was going to... Look, so what they do is they have a prosecuting attorney. In most cases, what they do is... They bring in somebody called a um, uh, special counsel, they call right. it. Special counsel means they go get a professional liar, lawyer for you. Somebody else who's outside of the system who's really, really, really good. Really good. But I'll tell you something. This Marsha Clark was pretty good. I didn't think she was great either. <laughs> she, yeah, was she did boring. okay. She was boring, but she did all right. She presented the facts. The black guy started out good. Don't get me wrong, but he droned on. He, didn't, he got it, you know. He's got to think of himself more like a minister or a preacher. He talked for, what, an hour, right. hour and a half? Right. And said the same thing. Yes. O.J. was under control. you got to a play on the emotions. You stand up like Perry Mason, and you address the audience. The audience, of course, the jury. When he was sitting there, and he was saying, he slapped her. He humiliated her. He beat her. Man. He talked about her in public. He called her fat when she was pregnant, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. That's how you got it. You got to get emotional. Let me show you how I do it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the trial of the century. Now, I call it the trial of the century for one reason. You see that skunk sitting over there? You know who that is? Skunk. That skunk, that, thief, that thieving, lying. This is a guy that got more white women than anybody on the planet, and he's sitting there killing people. Now, when I think of that hot blonde... I, I'm afraid, excuse Howard, me. that the, the judge... If the judge didn't object... Who, Captain Japan? <laughs> hey, the uh, other attorneys would. When I think... All right, Your Honor, I understand what you're saying. Let me uh, go on. You're arguing... Let me continue. I'm already in contempt of court. <laughs> An opening statement, let me... Your Honor, when I think... Of that hot blonde, with her head hanging off like it's on a hinge, my heart cries. My heart cries guilty! When I think of this bullying man hacking this waiter's throat like it's a side of roast beef, my heart cries guilty. And gentle persons of this jury... When I see two gloves soaked in blood like a potato soaked in gravy, and I, I think of the blood spurting out of their necks like an like an Epcot fountain, I cry for a guilty plea. And don't listen to Judge Hop Singh over there. <laughs> He's going to try to be fair. <laughs> He's going to try and tell you all kind of things. He's going to tell you, yeah, I'm out of order and all this kind of crap. I'm not out of order. You know who was out of order? O.J. was out of order. <laughs> Hop Singh's going to tell you that I am not conducting myself in a proper manner. Well... I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> I'm thinking he's going to ask you where you got your law degree. That's right. <laughs> I think of that man sitting over there poking that blonde woman in her pregnant belly with a fire poker, and I cry. <laughs> now, I'm going to present evidence that shows you a lot worse. Now, you might think when I present my evidence, I don't have a brain in my head. <laughs> but I do. And I'm here to prove I have a brain in my head. I will prove not only that that man killed that woman and that guy... But I have a brain in my head. Don't forget what this trial is about. It's about whether I have a brain in my head. Right. Imagine I get convicted after the trial. <laughs> I end up in jail. O.J. walks free. No, in all seriousness, you got to be emotional with the audience. You see, I'm painting a picture. You mean the jury. Forget an audience. I call it an audience. <laughs> Believe me. 
the judge will try to paint me as incompetent, and I want you to ignore all of that. I want you to concentrate on the fact that there are two dead people. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to sit there and take the opinion of a guy whose family folded laundry for centuries. Oh. And now he's going to tell me that I'm not a good attorney? <laughs> Charlie Chen. What's that guy to do with anybody? Charlie Chen don't know what he's talking about over there. He's busy thinking about shrimp and lobster sauce. Right? He should be out looking for number one son. Right. <laughs> These are people don't even share our calendar. <laughs> we got the year of the rat. Is it the year of the pig? Is that what it is? You're it? damn right, and that's OJ. Robin, and people of the jury, and Robin, <laughs> I move for a guilty verdict. Now, we don't even need a drug. Right. I want to skip all that nonsense and get him right in the chair. I'm going to throw Captain Japan in the chair with him. <laughs> It's unbelievable what's gone on here. And I'm going to tell you something. Right from the beginning, I knew things were wrong. You wouldn't address the fact that, you know, you got to take away the idea that O.J. is a hero, O.J. is an actor. All right, let me get to that part. I was getting to that. Captain Japan will probably try and stop me. <laughs> they ought to cook him like a Peking duck for interrupting me every two seconds. Cup an apple in his mouth. Yeah, right. <laughs> Listen, what I'm trying to say is the following. Channel persons of the jury. I want you to understand something right now. I want you to understand that this is a guy who used to kick her like she was an extra point. Ooh. Am I right, Robin? Oh, where is Robin? There you are. Well, hello. What did uh, you do to me? I don't know. <laughs> yes, that is true. All right. I move for the death penalty. And I wish Marsha Clark would wear a merry widow and grow her hair out and wear five-inch spike heels. I could dress her. Yeah. Anyway. She needs a power suit. And I'm going to tell you something, what they're going to do. They're going to try and tell you that I can't show you pictures of the dead bodies. That's what they're going to try and tell you. They're going to say that those aren't, those aren't admissible as evidence. And I'm going to tell you something, you chink. Don't you scramble my evidence electronically. Yeah, that's to get the judge in line. You start insulting him, then right away they fall into place. Put him, put him in his place. Yeah. <laughs> now, I notice a lot of you on the jury here are black. I, I notice things like this. Everyone does. Don't treat this guy like he's some kind of black man. A good, honest black man. Wow. I'm a good, honest black man. Right. I'm an honest black man. <laughs> now, for everyone in the jury, I've ordered chicken. Oh, oh yeah. right, This is the way you get on their good side. Do you notice what I'm doing? I'm, I'm establishing rapport. Discount watermelon. Discount watermelon. <laughs> What's next? That's right. Yes, sir. Anyway, uh... Lunch on the colonel. Well, I'm going to do, in my summation, I'm going to say the following. <laughs> that this was a bloody murder. You understand? Mm -hmm. I have never seen such a horrible murder. This is the worst. In all my years as a trial attorney. This is the worst you've ever seen? This is seen? the worst I have ever seen. They just walk out. <laughs> what are you talking about? Just, okay, I'm painting a picture. Free. He's free. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Seriously, I'm painting a picture. And did you see what I'm doing? I'm painting a portrait. Hey, nobody wants to see the picture. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This O.J. is no Sinbad. He's evil, evil, evil. Carving up a woman like that like a Thanksgiving turkey. In the commercials, you saw the good O.J. But right. At home, he was evil. Right. You never know what's going on there. <laughs> so what I say is, ladies and, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I move for a conviction of this gentleman. So, Oriental James Simpson. Thank you. <laughs> then I'd sit down. That would be the end of it. I wouldn't bore people. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> I have been oh, wondering. Throwing a little humor. I have been wondering. Right. <laughs> where is the OJ we used to see in commercials? Oh, he's gone. He's he's left the planet. <laughs> the, that's the artist formerly, no, the football player formerly known as OJ. Because yeah, I look at that guy yeah. in the courtroom. I have never seen that face before in my yeah. life. Yeah. And how do you like? Like every minute, he's like shaking his head. And did you notice that during the Marsha Clark? opening statement, yeah. O.J. sat quiet. Yeah. They got to him in that break, and they said, O.J., you have to be still. Yeah. Well, they say he's losing it. He yeah. might. They're even saying he might just get up and start screaming during the trial. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call my first witness. <laughs> I'd like to uh, subpoena Tony Katane. Oh. <laughs> Why? I'm horny. <laughs> No, I would like to call Tony Katane to the stand. Tony, uh, how big are your breasts? <laughs> are those real or implants? 
That's a lie. What? <laughs> That's OJ talking to his counsel. <laughs> Tony, uh, answer the following question. Would you sleep with me if I asked you out? <laughs> What a trial I could have. Counsel's badgering the witness. Yeah. Uh, and about your uh, beeve. Oh, Let me ask you a question. Oh, Come on. Oh, oh. Where's the gavel on this? Somebody should be hitting it. Oh, shut up, Captain. sitting on it. Yeah. Hey, Captain, don't you want to know about her beeve? Oh, I'm hot. Oh, me don't want no beeve. Muckery. Muckery, muckery, muckery. Who are you? Is Wait, there look. a point to this questioning, <laughs> this line, this line of questioning? Sure there is. I was threatened to remove all camera. Yeah. <laughs> well, you better get to it quick. That's right. What do you think? Oh, this is the first thing that O.J. ever did? This is a pattern with this man. There he is. There he is over there. <laughs> he's the worst husband ever. He cheated at Scrabble. He peed on the laundry. <laughs> He mooned the local rabbi. <laughs> he flushed the parakeet down the toilet on two separate occasions. And then, <laughs> and then, Your Honor, the gentleman of the jury, he chopped up two people like a Polish lumberjack. <laughs> I rest my case. Thank you. No more witnesses. Tony, Tony, you're excused. Huh? Am I powerful or what? Oh, yeah. You're ridiculous. Like I said, OJ well, gets off if you're not in the But what a trial it was. And I'm watching this thing, and I'm looking. Everyone's analyzing what uh, Marsha Clark is wearing. And yeah, not, the, the, nothing matters. And then yeah, all of a sudden... It's the most important situation in OJ's life, and they're saying Marsha Clark's wearing the wrong outfit. And they go, now Johnny Cochran is going to make a uh, his speech, you know, to defend OJ. And all of a sudden, Captain Japan pulls the plug. Why? One of the jurors was shown. Two alternates. Yeah, two alternates. And he goes, now I must consider pulling prog on camera. Now, this if, this guy, if, if this guy had any balls... If he wasn't, didn't have such a hard on to be famous, mm -hmm. he'd pull all the cameras out of there today. Everyone's laughing. They know he's not pulling we any camera been out. We've through this before. He's not pulling anything. Two people are dead. Captain Japan's checking his camera angle. And inviting his mother. Yeah, inviting his parents in there. And, and, and everyone's concerned what earrings Marsha Clark is going to wear today. <laughs> this, is the, this is what I'm talking no about. Wonder OJ's this, is a, this is a three ring circus. <laughs> You know what I call that guy? I don't call him Judge Ego. I call him Judge Ego. That's what they all are, Judge Ego. They all want to be... They can't even keep justice straight. They're busy worrying about how they look on TV. Judge Ego! Why does this jury have to be anonymous? Who? <laughs> what did you say? Why does this particular jury have to be anonymous? How should I know, Robin? Is O.J. a danger to them if he's convicted? I don't know. This Judge Ito is so full of it. When he makes his, uh, a statement on thinking of pulling the cameras, you know he's not going to. He, he, would, he would never pull the cameras. This is the most exciting thing that ever happened to this but guy. But answer me the question. Usually the jury is anonymous when you're trying to mob. Of course. What do you think? OJ's going to come back and get you? So what if we see the jury on TV? Crazy. For two seconds. It's such a load of crap. This is from a guy who uh, was probably entertained his whole youth by watching Godzilla movies. No, he was watching those little bad Japanese uh, cartoons. Yeah. Uh, Speed Racer. Yeah, Speed Racer and Godzilla and, R and Rodan. <laughs> and Diver Dan. Yeah, that's some country. They give you some entertainment. <laughs> Rodan movies. That's one thing they can't beat us at, is making movies. The whole thing's a joke. Well, I'll tell you something. And then, so they get they, they haul in this black guy to give the opening statement. They all... Did a, Put everyone to sleep. Marsha Clark could have done the whole damn thing. Yeah. But they, they had to have... You, you got to march out a black guy. Because if you look over in O.J.'s corner, you, now you can't even find any white guys. Well, wait a minute. O.J. has so many people, they didn't have enough room for the audience to get in there. That's right. That, that, that jury pool is on one side of the courtroom, and O.J.'s lawyers take up the other side. Right. There were so, so many people. Now, F.U. Bailey sits there, and uh, Johnny Cochran, and there's a new black guy. on. Uh, they have the, another black guy. A, and a bunch Robert of black Shapiro. guys. Yeah, I Robert Shapiro. I saw the two black guys, Johnny and that other guy. Yeah. And then there's a couple of others. Well, everyone's trying to pile black guys in. You're telling me now, in order to have a trial, you got to pile black guys in. Oh, come on. You, you resent black people having jobs, don't Bull. you? Bull. <laughs> Why can't they get some of the money? And, and then they bring in this guy, and... The guy's name is Black Guy. 
After she introduced it, Marsha Clark got up and said, by the way, this black guy is going to talk to you so we can show we have a black guy. <laughs> What's his name? Black guy. <laughs> Just call him black guy. Prosecution yeah. black guy. Press number one, press yeah, it's, like a, yeah. it's like a basketball team of briefcases. I never saw such an opening argument. Well, you know, I really find I resent you, too, saying Thank that you. they only have these lawyers there because they're black. Well, come on. You, it's cross your mind, too. No, Johnny Cochran, Johnny Cochran is a very competent lawyer, from what I understand from his reputation. These the, other guys. The, come on. Come on. There's only one, Howard. No, this guy they brought in the private. Marsha well, Clark was doing a bad job. It was really All right. sad and stupid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a it's a disgrace to uh, the black jurors that they think they can't win this case unless they are being argued before uh, by a black man. Well, that's true. <laughs> you know that. Stop that. Well, well, that happens. Warning! 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 <laughs> you know what? It's funny because I think after those opening statements, though, a lot of black people are now going to have to give up on that O.J. <laughs> Do you think there are any black people left that still... John, we go out on the street. We need another survey. We need another right. survey. Listen what I'm going to do. Take a break. Scott, get a microphone out on the street. Ask black people if they still think O.J. After they saw that trail of blood. Right, right. Excuse me, black people? <laughs> black people. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's up with the crack? What's that crack? <laughs> All right, very good. You're cracking your ass. What's up? All right, Billy, very good. All right. Everybody having a party on my on my job. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know what I'm saying. What am I saying? You're saying we're about to go to a break. Oh. <laughs> and then we're going to get a microphone and go downstairs. Mm -hmm. and How'd you like when they said, I didn't even know there was blood on O.J.'s socks? Yes, and the bed, the, the foot of his bed. Yeah, covered in blood. Not covered. Wow. There was blood there. Yeah. How are they going to explain that away? But that's what Marsha Clark said. Look, you know, the guy didn't commit a murder. What's all this blood doing everywhere? Yeah. Well, how are they going to, how is the jury ever going to let this guy off? It can't be, because someone said to me today, well... Prosecution uh, didn't open up with a stunning, uh, you know, who cares? A, a puppet could have given the opening statement. <laughs> to say there's blood all over the guy's Just socks. Figure it out. You got Ron Goldman's blood. You got Nicole Simpson's blood. You got O.J.'s blood appearing everywhere together. And I like when they flash on O.J. and O.J. starts shaking his head. Yeah. No, 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 no. He's like Lurch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 is, what are you shaking the head? What exactly is he shaking? No, it wasn't on my socks. It was on my shoes. That's a you lot. Know, I mean, yeah, that's a lot. He's like writing on the pad. I don't know a size 12. Yeah. Eight. Yeah, like, you think he's getting into minutia? Sure. She lied. She said I wear a size 12 shoe. Yeah. I wear a size 11. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> get a lip reader just to see what he's saying. Yeah, we were thinking about that hiring. You see, that's what the E channel ought to do. Get a lip yeah. reader so we can read OJ's lips. What is OJ saying? <laughs> I bet you OJ was giving away key evidence. That's why they shut him up. Yeah. All right, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. I guess they got me. Yeah. <laughs> that bitch is next. <laughs> yeah, why don't they get a lip reader? But the, as, exactly as Marsha Clark said, forget DNA. What's this blood doing all over the place? Yeah. Why has he got blood everywhere? Yeah, that is weird. And if I was uh, if I was Marsha Clark, every time OJ starts, you know, <laughs> I would say, excuse me, OJ's trying to say something. I think we ought to listen because he might be giving a confession right now. Shut up, fix me. All right, let's take a break. You're a good manager. If you want to try it one more time, Howard Scott should be down there. All right. Time. Well, let's continue to experiment on the air. Hello? 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 Yeah, we can, he can hear you now. Hello, sir. Yes. I was just trying to find out if you thought O.J. was guilty or innocent. I think he's innocent. You do? You still think so? Yeah. Well, he didn't hear the opening <laughs> argument, so it really isn't. But they found uh, O.J.'s socks full of blood, and they found blood in his bed. They did? Yeah. Didn't know that. Now what do you think? I think there's a slight chance. <laughs> slight chance of what? <laughs> Be honest with me. Why won't black people why won't black people say that OJ's guilty? Because we, we have to stand up this, and, until he's proven guilty. Well, they <laughs> how much more speculating. So this doesn't mean yeah. he's gonna go to jail. I just want to know deep down in your heart what you think. I mean you're not on the jury, so it really doesn't matter if you if you speculate. Deep down in my heart I hope he's innocent. Well, I'm we all hope so. We all hope the juice is innocent. But yeah. but let's let, looking well, there's, at the, there's there's a chance he's <laughs> he could be guilty. No, I know there's a chance. Of, but what do you think deep down in your heart? Is it a big chance or a little chance? Yeah. 
Well, if you listen to all the evidence, it's probably a big chance. Ah. Oh, I see. Strictly by the evidence, it's, it's probably a great chance that he uh, will be found guilty. Well, did you see, I don't know if you saw this on the news, they found um, his wife's head in his overnight bag. Oh, no. <laughs> then he might be guilty. <laughs> all right. Maybe. Might be guilty. All right, thank you, sir. Sure. All, all right, right. We, we got someone else, Howard. All right. We got another one. We got... <laughs> How you doing? Hello, sir. All right, go ahead. Hello, sir. Yeah, how you doing, Hart? How you doing? Okay. All right, I'm trying to find out what black people think about... After the opening statement. After the opening statement. Right. Did you see them? Yeah, I watched it. All right, what do you think? Guilty or innocent? Well, I like to know where all that blood came from. Right. <laughs> well, would you say he's guilty then? Yeah, from that opening statement, is he guilty or innocent? Yeah, you know, if it wasn't O.J., if it was anybody else, he'd be guilty right away. Right. Everyone's saying... Because he's OJ, they don't know, but... Well, what do you but think? you're saying you don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think. Say it. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll say he's guilty. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Finally. Although, uh, what if they prove that OJ has a twin somewhere who looks just like him and... All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes. Even though I know we have this elaborate Please, setup on hold the street, do you want to talk to a black guy on the phone? Yes. Who was swayed oh, no, no, into thinking O.J. was innocent by watching the opening oh, statement? Oh, really? Let's go to him. He's got a great, a great. Girl, I'll be right back with you. Find mm. some more black people. We go find more black people. <laughs> yes. What's up, Howard? Hey, Howard what's Paul? up in the house? In the house, baby Paul. Right. All right. Listen, I looked at this thing from beginning to end. Go ahead. At first. I thought O.J. was guilty as everyone else's. I thought there must have been a video showing that he was cutting his head off. But w but once they showed the pictures of the actual murder scene mm -hmm. with no footsteps going through the blood, and then they showed a video ten minutes later with the detective Vandana walking through puddles of blood up into her house. Hey, Howard, come on now. That's the same person that went and checked the Jeep. He's the same person that saw a piece of blood less than an eighth of an inch from 50 yards back. How did the Super blood get on? Can't see how that. did the blood get on OJ's socks? The blood got in the sock because they had access to the house oh, right after they went. They to the framed them. You mean they? Listen, you mean they, Howard, they quickly? Wait, 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 sir. That they purposely framed them, but the same people oh. who went and checked the house went and checked the. Uh, the murder scene went to O.J.'s house afterwards. How come the limo driver saw O.J. The... pull up in his in his uh, white Bronco and then all of a sudden wait, he, wait, wait. he no, was asleep in the listen, house? Look, listen. You, you guys are arguing. We were talking just from the opening statements. We yeah. were getting far afield. Yeah, but this guy didn't get past the first grade. Tell her the truth. <laughs> I don't know how it, how it. You have never graduated hate, first grade. I hate to hear this, but I'm a graduate of the University of Maryland. I think oh, that's a little bit above you, you didn't say that. university, perhaps? No. no, I don't think so. I, I think so. Oh, oh, we're a oh. Boston University. University? Come oh, on, Howard. I didn't really apply myself in high school. <laughs> All right. You're never part of but hey. All right. Thank you, sir. Hey, but I want to tell you. Please. I love you. I love your show. Thank you, sir. Keep it up, man. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're honest in your answer, and thank you. That is the the re most ridiculous <laughs> answer I've ever heard. Look, you asked him. And Creepy he knows what he was a, talking he about. Had a statement. There were no footsteps, and then there were footsteps. He said footprints. Whatever. Or whatever he said. I don't remember. <laughs> we gained one and lost one. What? We gained one and lost one. Right. We gained a black guy. He, he thought him. that O.J. was guilty before the opening <laughs> statement, and then he was converted. So. Gorilla, do you have more people? Or? Yes, we do. All we right. got someone right here, Howard. That's right. more with them. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Good to speak with you, sir. You are black? Yeah, I am. All right. I'm going to ask you the following question. O.J., guilty or innocent? After the opening statement. Well, we're clearly after the opening statements. Guilty or innocent? Yes. Actually, I don't know. Did you see the opening statement? No, I haven't been following the trial since it started. Oh, but I see. I'm surprised. Huh? I'm surprised. Uh, I mean, it's... No big deal to me, anyway. All right, very good. Howard, do you want to speak to someone who thinks he's innocent? Yes. Okay. I didn't say he was innocent. Uh, he's innocent until proven guilty. That's it. Yeah, but what do you think deep it. down inside after the opening argument? Well, I actually... The opening arguments, I thought, were very, very weak. <laughs> I thought that uh, that guy really needed some acting lessons, whoever that black lawyer was. You're a black guy? Yeah, you want me to come up? No, <laughs> I got to get to work. Yes, I'm actually black, and I love Robin, and I love you. Really? Howard. You don't sound very black. King of all media. What does that mean, Howard? I don't know. Don't that means I black. sound like Robin. Right. You don't sound all that... Uh... <laughs> but whether do I think he did it or not... Hey, uh, hey, Gorilla, get me some real black people. Uh, hold on. Black, I didn't hold on. Whether he did it or not. <laughs> yeah. He did it. He did it. Of course hold he on, did there's it. there's a guy over here. Don't get fans of the show. Get regular blacks. All right, hold on. There's not the, not these uh, bougie blacks. He doesn't want to... Get me a regular black... 
Oh, Hold on. I'm Give me a street black. Hold on a second. What's the matter with you? Oh, you don't no. know how to pick out black people, There's do you? There's no black people down here. Yeah, well, I've never heard that before. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I can't help Give me it. a regular black guy, you know, doesn't look to be working or something. <laughs> right, Robin? There's nothing but white people <laughs> in this city. How come when I go down there, there's nothing but black people? I never see you white people. Never... Find black people. I never see white people in Manhattan. Oh, stop. Another question. Uh oh, what do you uh -oh. want to ask? Him? Why don't you go up to Holland and we'll find some black? Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Really, get up to because we don't have microphones that go that far. We can't even hear you down four flights. Yeah, there. hold on. Someone's coming down the block. All right, go ahead. Hi. Do you, do you want to speak on the air about the OJ trial? Not didn't even look at me. Can right. we talk to you about OJ? All right. I can't take Gorilla's voice. He's so annoying. Screaming. <laughs> yeah. You guys talk about the. Don't go about the OJ trial. They tell about the phone. Well, every time he says he can't find a black person in Manhattan, the real estate is skyrocketing. Uh, someone just called me. They're saying, wait a second, you're saying there's a place in New York where there are no black people? Stampede? Yeah, there's a stampede going on. It's about, are there still Jews there? Yes. Oh, well, then it go back down again. <laughs> me, me. Now you find a piece of real estate with no Jews or blacks. <laughs> now, you now, you're now you're talking. <laughs> we may be able to negotiate. I think in Jackie O's building, they just sold her apartment for $9 million. I think there's no blacks or Jews in there. <laughs> I think the guy who just bought it was a Jew. Is that right? Yeah. Warning. Warning. <laughs> warning. 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 They warning. 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 Approaching. Well, Jewish life form. But it's spelled Koch, so you tell me. Who knows? K O C H could be Coke, also. And what is that? Is that's that not Jewish a Jew. Or not? That's that's a no Jews. Really? Yeah, I that's the way I I think. Oh, you. Best piece of real estate is St. Patrick's Cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a break. We'll be back right after this. We'll be back with the Howard Stern Show. Don't go away. 97.1 The Eagle. Howard Stern, morning. You'll rock all day. All 97.1 The Eagle. <laughs> you to the Howard Stern Show. Once again, Howard Stern. All right. Thank you. Yeah, it. Okay, so we're back. We've been talking about OJ for the last hour and a half. <laughs> How can you not? And we will continue. <laughs> All right. We have a little bit of uh, Marsha Clark's opening statements. I think I want to play them in uh, reverse order. Ooh. If you can handle that. Oh, put down, huh? You don't think I can handle it, eh? You're right, I can't. All right, what do you got there? What do you mean reverse order? Starting from number six? Yes, the, the highest numbered one mm -hmm. you have, I All right, suppose. I can handle it. Since you put it that way, I'll prove it to you. This is Marsha Clark laying out the evidence. In the defendant's car, in his house, in the, in the driveway, and even on the socks in his very bedroom, at the foot of his bed, that trail of blood from Bundy through his own Ford Bronco and into his house in Rockingham is devastating proof of his guilt. OJ shaking his head the whole time. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Let me, please, let me just, let me just stand up and defend myself. And then she goes on. What? <laughs> oh, okay, wait. You got a Johnny Cochran there. No, no, no. You I told you I couldn't handle it. Number four now. All right. <laughs> what you have here is a trail of blood from Bundy Drive to Rockingham Avenue and into the defendant's very bedroom. Didn't she just say that? by the defendant's white board bronco. They kept bronco. repeating these things over, over and over, over again. again. Well, maybe you had to drive it home, you know? So go on. <laughs> this, is an, this is not the identical... Number three. <laughs> All right. The evidence will show that on the night of June the 12th, 1994, the defendant had an hour and ten minutes of time in which his whereabouts are unaccounted for. And we will show that it was during that hour and ten minutes that the murders were committed. Mm, she can do that. Ooh, that's good. And, and then uh, finally, she said... Let me ask you a question, what? though. Cato is the guy who saw O.J. at like 9.30? Yeah. 
And after that, he didn't see him. And he mm -hmm. saw him leaving the house? I don't think he saw him leaving the house to go to the airport. No, but I mean, did he see him getting in his white Bronco to go somewhere? No, I think the last time he saw him was when they split up after, you know, he went to dinner with him or something, wasn't it? No, I don't know. This movie just heard a thump or something. That wasn't when he saw O.J. He, oh, he did see him then running <laughs> through the yard or something. He saw somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Come back from a killing rampage. <laughs> All right. When he heard that thud. And here's Marsha Clark with the most uh, incriminating allegations. The results of the analysis of that blood confirms what the rest of the evidence will show. That on June the 12th, 1994, after a violent relationship in which the defendant beat her, humiliated her, and controlled her. He done flipped his lid. After he took her youth, her freedom, and her self-respect. Just as she tried to break free, Borenthal James Simpson took her very life in what amounted to his final and his ultimate act of control. I hear you! I still don't find these persuasive ways to deliver an argument. Yeah, I know what you mean. Hey, you can be more emotional, but hey, you know what? The job was done. This is not a tough case to prove. They didn't really have to put on a show, no, is what you're no. saying, huh? Well, here is uh, Johnny Cochran, because uh, after Marsha Clark finished her opening statements, when they went back into the court, Judge Ito was seen, but he was not able to be heard. And at that time, it was learned that he'd again become angry with the camera people Jeez. and the media people in the courtroom. What a joke. Because one of the two alternate jurors sitting on one side of the court uh, were seen briefly. On camera. Ridiculous. So uh, he is now threatening to pull cameras from the courtroom once again. And Johnny Cochran, who is supposed to give his opening statements today, felt that that would be horrible for the opening statements of the prosecution to have been broadcast live on worldwide television and then for them not to have an opportunity to rebut in a public forum. So what's the decision? Judge Ito is going to allow, or they don't know yet? They so. haven't. Uh, he hasn't decided. I'll tell you the decision. Well, would you play Johnny Cochran first? Johnny Cochran first? Yeah. I'm, no. I'm not faulting the judge. It was a tough situation for all of us. I mean, quite frankly, um, our client... I'm faulting the judge. ...said that's unfair to him to have them show uh, what there would be evidence to make him seem like he's... Uh, Total, total argument of character assassination. We don't get to even rebut that. Oh, please. Cochran wants airtime. Jojito wants airtime. There'll be plenty of airtime. Those TV cameras aren't going anywhere. Well, I like it that O.J. had to tell them, this is unfair. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. O.J. didn't say a word. In fact, if you were O.J., would you really want this on TV? None of it. Of course not. O.J. doesn't want any of this on TV. The, the worst thing he can do is put it on TV. Just sitting in that chair makes you look like a criminal surrounded by lawyers. Yeah. Who, who are they kidding? This is all like about ego. Sitting right behind your table. You look pretty... Yeah, and, yeah you look like you're in control. You're pretty, you look pretty guilty. Yeah, that's how you want to look. That should get you a lot of endorsement work. Yeah. Yeah. And Judge Ito's on a hotline uh, being coached by Judge Wapner. <laughs> you got uh, Johnny Cochran can't wait to get on TV. Everyone can't wait to be on TV. There's absolutely no justice served. And I must tell you something. Uh, this Judge uh, Judge Ego doesn't Judge Ego doesn't surprise me. Uh, he loves to carry on with the cameras. Yeah. So a juror, an alternate juror, was shown for two seconds. As Robin pointed out earlier in the show, they used to not show the jury because the jury, uh, you know, in a mob case or something, you could have said, "Who cares if I saw the jury?" You know, maybe they think, well, some of the black people will feel like uh, race traitors if they find O.J. guilty. If they're seen on TV, they don't want to be seen on TV. I don't know what they want to see. But for two seconds, you see them, it ain't going to ruin their lives. And let me tell you something. Let me let me tell you something. It this, was an accident. The guy didn't intentionally show the jury. This judge ego will never throw the cameras out. You have no fear of that. He loves being on camera. This is the biggest event of his life. <laughs> He's going to parlay this into... He is now going to get his own TV show. Cottage industry. It's going to, it's going to be a whole thing.
He's not a judge. He's a producer. You know, he's, he's going to leave this court and then start his own TV show. Let me tell you how he's a producer now. Now he's got buttons. They, te they First of all, God knows what it costs to put all this uh, computer equipment into this courtroom. I, I'm shocked by what I see on TV. From what then, I understand, this whole ninth floor is wired this way. Yeah, it's lovely. You know what it costs to wire a floor like that and computers and everything? I mean, the, the taxpayers are paying for these jokes of justice. The judge needs a new toy. You mean to tell me he can't do that without a computer? No. Ten second array. De read button. Yeah. So yeah. Now he's got a panel evidently in front of him, where he can control the camera angle. He can shut off all the sound. He can. He's got. He's got a whole. He's. He's worrying about cutting off sound. He's the, he's the switcher. He is the switcher. You know. Let me tell you something. You ever you gotta pay attention to the law. You ever try to direct a TV show? It requires all of your wits. That's right. I George Lucas. Yeah. I George Rukas. I George Rukas. I George Rukas of the courtroom. I mean, it's unbelievable. And this is a guy who is all excited. His first sexual experience, his senior prom, his wedding day, the birth of his children, his mother's funeral, all pale in comparison to this event in his life. <laughs> This is it. He's a pretty funny guy because I remember when he gave that interview to a TV reporter, he was shocked that they used it for promos. Right. It's like, give me Shock. a break. This is so exciting He's for running these guys. This case. Me go into a private practice now and be most famous. Say OJ Israel tomorrow, Star Wars 4. Confucius, eat your heart out. Ito's Court, a new TV show. George Ego. <laughs> he will, when he makes a threat that he's going to pull the cameras, you can just laugh that one off. He ain't well, he gets anybody. a lot of attention when he does it. Oh. He was uh, feeling uh, overwhelmed by these other court reporters uh, or the lawyers now getting the spotlight. So then he decides to pull the cameras, and once again, the focus goes back to Judge Ito. Right. If you were a guy who was really upset that justice wasn't being served here, which it isn't, if you were really upset, you would pull, you would just say, yeah, okay, the jurors, the, the juror was shown. I told you not to show any jurors. Cameras are gone. Out and Z. Out and Z. That's but it. It would have been done the first time he had right. a problem with reporters. Not this constant argument. Now he's going to talk to a media reporter or right. a lawyer again right. to determine whether this is the right thing to do or not. It's yeah. a lot of deliberation and consideration. I have seen now. Um, complaint by people, other people in the legal profession who say he is dragging this case out by con constantly saying they're going to do things and then having some hearing that delays the proceedings once again. So judges uh, making make, this case uh, last a lot longer than it necessarily has to. Judges make idle threats all the time. It's it's despicable. Uh, if something is sealed and the guy just uh, one of the uh, one of the lawyers just opens his mouth and gives away information. The judge is supposed to disbar this guy, hold him in contempt of court, and have disbarment uh, proceedings. They don't do it. They don't do it. They're like, oh, well, okay, it must have been somebody else. Yeah, they don't. They don't do it. They don't do it because they don't care. I'll give you five more chances to piss me off. Right. <laughs> five more chances. Five, five more, more chances. chances. That's it. They throw camera out. Oh, no, no. Judge Ego gives a bad name to all honest, hardworking judges. <laughs> well, this is not a courtroom. This is a miniseries. Do not criticize my miniseries. I'm so done. When Marsha Clark was giving her uh, opening statement, Judge Ito thought she had lapsed into argument in certain places, and so he began to warn her. And finally, he said this. No donkey! I'm warning you. I've warned you three times now. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. I'm warning you, you bitch. <laughs> I'll take that dress and wrap it over your head. <laughs> I'm warning you. What happens to her if she does it again? Hey, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the opening statements of Johnny Cochran are supposed oh. to be presented in the courtroom yeah. today, if Judge Ito deems it uh, appropriate. <laughs> and uh, I suppose the defense argument is that O.J. couldn't possibly have conduct or carried out this crime because he's not physically capable. Yeah. <laughs> Jackie, come on. They say that <laughs> OJ wanted to take part in the opening statement. He wanted to address the jury. Right. Judge Ito ruled that that wasn't appropriate, but OJ will be allowed to show some scars from his years as a football player.
If O.J. show scar, me ratings go up. <laughs> it's good. And Marsha Clark, you wear sexy outfit. O.J. do slow strip. Yeah. <laughs> Fix that hair. Baggy eyes. Oh. O.J. So OJ goes, goes into court, requests, uh, hey, I want to make a little speech to the jury. I want to show my, my clothes off. I want to take my clothes off of the jury. <laughs> I want a few days in Disney World. I mean, give him everything. <laughs> well, they're not giving him everything, but right. he will be able to show the... <laughs> Millions of scars, I suppose, in his knees where he's had ligaments realigned and cartilage removed. They say that this can occasionally cause a former football player or former athlete to have arthritis. But whether it would prevent him physically from committing this kind of crime, we don't know, really. Yeah. He was able to play tennis every day. He was able to play a Navy SEAL in a TV series and swim and do all kind of stuff. He made an exercise video. They also claimed that O.J. suffered some kind of injury where he can't get his hands above his head. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. First of all, I can't he they... He plays basketball. How does he make his shot? Please, I can't play basketball. <laughs> and you know what's funny? Why does he have to do that in front of the jury? Why can't they just take pictures of these injuries? Or right? have a doctor come in and yeah. certify that O.J. Yeah. has these injuries and they prevent him from doing certain things. Yeah. They know how to grandstand. Showboating. So anyway, that's the O.J. Simpson case. I suppose we'll find out later today what Judge Ito decides in terms of whether we can see what's going on or not. Because I quite frankly think the... TV cameras do serve a purpose. How often do you get to sit inside a courtroom and see how justice is meted out in this country? And justice isn't meted out in this country. Well, I mean, how it's meted out, whether it's real justice or not, is another question. Well, you don't watch L.A. Law? <laughs> All right, let's take a break, and we'll be back right after these words. I got to the question as to whether O.J. would be able to kill Nicole with his football injuries. I vote yes. <laughs> hey, you know, um, as long as you bring up O.J.'s name again, yeah. here's something. I, I'm sure you're going to be watching the trial again today because Captain Japan can't bear to take the TV cameras out of there. And um, watch Judge Ito. I mean, Judge Ego. You will see this acting. You, you, did you notice every time the camera's on Judge Ego, he acts angry he's like an angry guy yes and he's and always considering things yeah, you know he's angry. something that's very simple to say i pointed out the other day it takes him forever to say it because he knows the camera's on it well first i started watching him boy this guy's always pissed and i said well it's not like you've ever seen a jolly chinaman <laughs> i mean you know what i'm saying you don't really see some big jolly chinaman but isn't that how judges are supposed to act yeah too? but he's he's not he's not judging he's auditioning I was watching a movie the other day. He's uh, always contemplating. Murder in the First. Yeah. And there was a judge, of course, because there's a lot of courtroom scenes in right, the movie. Right, right. And the judge is always angry. Yeah, but that's what I'm telling you. Like, what is he angry about? Like, they're, just, they're doing opening arguments, and he's sitting there, like, all perplexed. And Look, mister. Yeah. <laughs> Did you notice? He's pissed. You better get to the point. And the way I figure it out is that the newspapers respond to that. They say, judge Ito today seemed very angry. Well, they're always pointing out how he's very sharp. Yeah. Like Marsha Clark. He reads that and gets off on it. Yeah. And that, uh, you know, they pulled out the fact that he had warned her three times during her opening statement about not arguing the case at this point. Right. Look, I'm warning you. Right. I've warned you three times now. Yeah, but he's always, ang even when they're not even doing anything that concerns me, he's angry. Oh, crabby. <laughs> crabby. Maybe his shorts are too tight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But watch him today. He'll be pissed. Maybe he should get some Hanes or something. He even said to them, have a nice lunch. Yeah, right. Well, let's go on. I mean, we can't dwell on OJ all day. No. <laughs> so, uh, you watch the OJ trial? Of course. All right, let's move on to another topic. Did you, uh... <laughs> Wait a minute. You know what? The one thing that cracked me up about the OJ trial yesterday yeah. was, oh, besides the e-coverage, is... <laughs> oh, you watched E? Yes. What did they do? Talk about clothing? Well, they were uh, hearkening back to movie references. Right. Every movie reference, they had to look up and explain. 
Right. Judge Ito mentioned Rodney Dangerfield, and uh, he, this is a very Hollywood trial, is he? He mentioned Rodney Dangerfield, and yesterday, Marsha Clark brought up Jurassic Park. Did they show clips? <laughs> they should have shown clips. There you go, yeah. Every break. Yeah. This is such a Hollywood trial. Yeah. See, but I would rather hear that kind of commentary than the boring commentary on CNN. Uh, but they have nothing to say about it, really. They're right. going to repeat to you 5,000 times that Jack Nicholson was the bad guy and a few good men. Yeah, but anyway, go ahead. So anyway, they put that big picture up yeah. of O.J. with his daughter. It was, like, right. huge. And they had it on an easel, and it sat there the whole time. And quite frankly, every time they flashed to it, O.J. was bending over, and he was handing some flowers to his daughter, and he had his arms wrapped around her, and she has a strange look on her face. And I said, yeah, I don't know if this is good for O.J., because it looks like he's trying to kidnap her. I just thought it was a very I don't know what you're talking about. You didn't see that picture? No. They had this huge... You didn't watch. No, I watched it. I just didn't... I guess I just missed it. Yeah. It was sitting right next to... Over in a corner, and every time they panned... Yeah. You could see this huge photo. It looks like O.J. trying to kidnap his daughter. Yeah. Oh, I get you. And it looked like he was spiriting her away. You know who's really hot is O.J.'s uh, older black daughter, Arnell. God, she's a piece of ass. Mm. (laughs) They should let me do the commentary one day on E. Hey, can we get a better shot of Arnell? Yeah, let's see. You know, I know the camera's locked down, but do you think we could zero tighten it, yeah, zero in on Arnell and what she's up to at this point? <laughs> that was kind of frustrating with the lockdown camera because you couldn't watch O.J. during the uh, proceedings. You also can't see the other families anymore. Yeah. All you can see is O.J.'s family, quite frankly. You get a good shot of O.J.'s mother. Yeah, Ito really ruined it. And, and everyone's saying, who cares if the jury is shown? What is the point? It's not. It's not a... Trial like a mafiosa trial where they go and Who hunt down the jury. For this jury. Yeah, no one's looking for this jury. In fact, the jury would probably like it if they were on TV because it'll help them with their booking deals after the uh, Do you trial. Know that they've also put a sort of gag order on the jury for 90 days. They can't do anything like television <laughs> and book deals Why? after the trial is over. Because yeah, Judge Ito wants his shot. Yeah, Judge Ego needs to talk about all his stuff. <laughs> Judge Ego wants to talk, and then he'll have everyone else talk. But the big news today is, remember the guy who was objecting all day yesterday? Yeah. He had chest pains last night. Well, you know why. He's trying to slow down the... Um, he, uh, you all think of a sudden... they would go to the hospital? They'd go through the whole yeah. ruse of going yeah. into the hospital and the whole thing yes. just to slow down the trial and get a postponement? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Lawyers will do whatever they have to do to get the job done. I think the guy's name is Hodgman. They say Hedgeman. he had to... Uh, is it Hodgman or Hedgeman? Hodgman. Is it Hodgman? Yeah. Uh, I think that they said he... Just uh, call him the white guy on the prosecution. <laughs> There's a white guy, a black guy, and a woman. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he apparently suffered some chest pain during the meeting between mm. all the lawyers and Judge Ito right. after the jury had been dismissed, and they had to take him to the hospital. So what does that mean? Are they going to postpone well, the trial? Well, I heard Gil Garcetti, the district attorney, say that they were thinking of asking for a postponement pending... Mm. The outcome of his test. Right. Well, I'll tell you something. Like, Johnny Cochran is smooth and everything. Everyone's talking about, you know, he's much more interesting than the other people. And he doesn't well, he did he doesn't... act like he was talking to a group of jurors yeah. and tried to persuade them of something. And he doesn't, you know, appear to be reading from a piece of paper or anything like that. So, you know, that's like a high marks for him. But it is pretty funny because everyone still knows O.J. did it. And yet... They're all trying to say, you know, how persuasive he was. And, and it's real weird, too, how he persuades people. He goes, well, you know, I'm going to tell you something. The police, when they collected Nicole's underpants and panties, they put them in the same bag. You see? And you go, yeah. So? <laughs> and i got to tell you something else. There were four guys out there that night. We we dug up somebody who said they saw four guys, and I'm going to tell you something. It was probably four guys who killed O.J. and Ron. I mean Nicole and Ron. And it was probably Ron's uh, high school teacher. Or, you know, <laughs> I'll stop it. you know, it's like it's like it's like wacky things that well, coming out of this what? guy's mouth, and everyone's going it's persuasive. Wacky, yeah, but the point is that a jury has to decide the case. Yeah. Not on in terms of whether this one's right or that one's wrong. If they find that there's a reasonable doubt right. about any of the testimony, hmm. then O.J.'s off. Yeah. All he has to do is get one juror, and he's got a hung jury. Yeah, well, I don't know. 
OJ's got a star over his head. You know, he's got he's got luck. I mean, you know, it's like I saw like a lot of educated commentators sitting there going, "Wow, you know." I'm really starting to doubt this whole case. And I'm like, whoa. It's not about doubting the case, though. It's about how well their uh, yeah, I know. will stand up against the defense's attack on it. Yeah, well. <laughs> and that's what people don't realize about the law. Yeah. It's not about whether you know basically O.J.'s guilty. Right. It's about what these two uh, groups present. Yeah, well, all I can tell you is... So if they say, you know, the one, the one of the big things was, you know, in order to determine the time of death, they should have kept her stomach contents. Yeah. But the uh, coroner's office threw it out. Right. So that puts a question in a person's mind as to exactly what time Nicole Simpson died. Yeah. <laughs> Makes a difference. O.J. did it. That's how a jury has to decide. What I would do is I would go up to the jury and just say, look, you know, look, you know O.J. did it, right? You know, they're going to give you a lot of crap. You know, they're going to tell you I'm this sure and they that. messed up on the right. investigation. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what? Collecting other evidence. Think about it. Would you know to keep somebody's vomit inside a, you know, inside a bag? You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's no rule book on this. So, look, here's the deal. If you got any doubt in your mind, we all know O.J. used to beat this woman. So <laughs> put him in jail for that. You know, so what's the difference? Well, see, there again, you're skirting the law. Yeah, the of law course. Is O.J. is on trial. There's no such murder. thing as law. <laughs> it's a matter of conviction. <laughs> well, I'll I'll tell you what the law says. You can go on about right. that all you want. I'm not and looking that's for what facts. The experts were uh, carrying on about. They said, "Wow, you know, he's really." Uh... And the point is, that I'm just trying to protect his next girlfriend. <laughs> you know what I mean? That they can say anything they want in opening yeah. arguments. Right. Whether they can actually bring this. You know what they say. Whether they have the witnesses, whether they can, uh, the witnesses stand up to cross examination. That's all to be seen during right. the trial. Right. Got it. So they can say all they want, because okay. it sounded pretty convincing the other day when Marsha Clark was talking. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he did it. It's obvious he did it. That didn't persuade me. If I was a juror, I'd sit there and go. <laughs> Well, when the guy says O.J. was uh, couldn't even deal cards. Yeah. <laughs> O.J. That, what's that got to do with stabbing a person? I saw O.J. in person a couple of times. He took Tawny Katane. He dipped her backwards. Couldn't and, deal cards yeah, that day. Started making out with her. I can't. You know, Tawny Katane's no lightweight. She's a she's a big girl. I couldn't dip her backwards without breaking my back. That O.J.'s was as powerful as a tree. <laughs> Come on. He couldn't deal cards. And did you see when they said to him... After he played golf. Did you see... Yeah, right. Did you see when he, they said... Um, they told O.J. to come over so he could sh pull up his pants and show his scars? Yeah. O.J. was like hobbling over. Did you right, notice? Right, He could hardly walk. Yeah. That was great. And then... Uh, <laughs> it was really good acting. And then... Lock him up for that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Lock him up for his performance. <laughs> and Tom Chiasano, who is an expert golfer, was telling me yesterday, they should call Tom as an expert witness, expert golf witness. Well, I heard that testimony. Yeah, Tom. Oh, really? What yeah. did he say? Well, Tom came in and told me that in order to golf, that you have to, you know, it's a lot more athletic than you think. Well, there's certainly that weird grip you have to uh, He said the grip effect. and your knees and your ankles are really used in the swing and all that. And if you had arthritis of the knees and ankles, it would be way too painful and too, too difficult. Uh-oh, here he is. The Am I explaining this properly? The hands above the head, too, huh? Yeah. 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 I mean, but one of the other things they said was that you, he couldn't lift. He has a disease that he can't lift his hands above his head. Right. I mean, in order to play golf, you've got to have flexibility in your hands and your arms. And they're saying now that he has arthritis in his hands. Yeah. But I've read where the guy played golf like five days a week. Right. Well, he played golf that day. Yeah, the day of the murders. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, when they so I'm not talk saying about... it's the most strenuous sport in the world, but there are some things that you have to have flexibility and, you know, and be able to, ability to swing your arms is certainly one of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, they have a doctor who's ready to come and testify that O.J. was in a severe... Uh, portion of right, his he arthritis. Right, just flared up. His arthritis had just right. flared up. That right day. after the golf game. Yeah. Well, we have Dr. Norris with us. Dr. <laughs> Norris, any uh, validity to that? Absolutely none. He's guilty. Prime. Prime. <laughs> did you watch the trial, Tom? I, I listened to a lot of it. I did watch it when I got home. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's fascinating. I mean, yeah, Johnny Cochran. I mean, Johnny Cochran's real good. Well, I mean, a lot of people are now saying, you know, gee, this is really good for justice because we're getting to see, you know, a trial up close. And I, and I go, what are you, high? I said, this is a guy who spent $10 million on a defense. You think, you this think. This is a usual justice. Yeah. I said, you think if you went to court 
First of all, if you killed two people and you were some regular schlub, you plea bargain this out, you'd be out in four years. <laughs> I said, this is, no, this is not looking at justice. This is TV stuff. I said, uh, you know, um, they're going to call in the top expert witnesses. When you talk about DNA testing, they're going to bring in, you know, the the, I have a Nobel, the they're going to bring in the guy who invented the DNA test himself. You think if you were accused of murder, He'd you could available? get that guy? Right. Yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> There's no such thing as justice. I mean, justice is a lot of... the lab for a day for you? Yeah. I mean, it's a great example of it's the best money, the best defense money could buy. And he bought the, I mean, Cochran's really Well, good. he needs the best money uh, because he, he needs the best guilty, defense. you do need the you, Yeah, when, you, when you've done something really bad, you need it. And also, uh, let's face it, uh, you have a situation where uh, this is being telecast all over the world as a TV show. Not, it's not even a trial. Yeah. Oh, it's absolute entertainment. Yeah, it's absolute entertainment, and you need good performers and all that stuff, because most guys just plea bargain this stuff down. Lots of people have killed two people, killed their ex-wives. They go in, they tell the judge, I was completely jealous. I saw her making love to another guy. I was going out of my mind. Judge, the guy you says, can understand. They give him a, a 10 to 15 year sentence because they, they knock it down to uh, like a second degree murder, crime of passion. And then you do about three or four years. You go before the parole board if you behave yourself, and you're out. That's how you kill your wife. I expect it to you end know. like a Perry of course. case. Regular guys can kill their wives, be out in three or four years, start dating. <laughs> 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 this is not law. This is not justice. This is a show business. I mean, it's unbelievable. It is interesting, though. Yesterday I saw this news report about these um, animated computer graphics people are now introducing into court. I don't know if they're going to use this in the O.J. Simpson case. Yeah, cartoons. Right. But people go out and they hire a studio right. to make a graphic animated cartoon right. of the crime. So they can show either their guilt or their innocence, depending on how they're arguing. Yeah. And one guy went out and he was accused of beating his mother to death for her inheritance. So he used some of his mother's inheritance money mm. to get one of these computer graphics made. And it backfired on him. Because when they showed it in court, it looked like, yeah, his mother fell down the steps after they were arguing over VCR. But then it turned out when his expert uh, engineer who had made the graphics came onto the stand, the guy was working with old information, not the new stuff. Hmm. And he wound up uh, getting convicted even after spending all that money. So money doesn't always win. Yeah. Well, it shouldn't win this time, but it might. Like I said, all they need is one juror. Some guy, if I was on trial for murder and I hired some cartoon dude to make cartoons <laughs> of my thing and he screwed up, I'd beat the damn artist to death. I'd kill him with his pen. Well, that's what I said. It's pretty funny. Yeah. This guy gets up there and goes, ooh, well, gee, I wasn't working with the right information. You stupid bastard. I paid you a fortune to draw my cartoons <laughs> and you draw the wrong cartoon and get me convicted? I put, I'm killing you. The Howard and Stimpy cartoon. <laughs> I get I get Billy to do the voice of Ren Stimpy. <laughs> because on Geraldo once they actually showed a uh, one of those computer things of OJ. Oh yeah. Yeah. So they they somebody's gone out and made one already. Yeah. Of OJ taking care of Ron and Nicole. Yeah. All I know is I can't get an animated opening to our uh, TV show. <laughs> I've been trying to get that done for a couple of months now. But OJ's yeah. got one. OJ's got cartoons. <laughs> I'd like to see those cartoons. Let's kill somebody. Yeah. There you, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's how you get it done. But it was pretty funny watching everyone go, yeah, Johnny Cochran. He's making a lot of sense. Yeah, it was four guys killed Nicole. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, that's why Nicole's on tape screaming, he's going to kill me. Well, that's what some of the other experts say. Uh, yeah. They said, why was Nicole going to these battered women's shelters? <laughs> yeah. Why was Nicole making videotapes and taking pictures, taking pictures. if uh, O.J. wasn't doing all that? Why was she getting um, um, metal uh, boxes at the bank, those security boxes? Safe and deposit box. Safe deposit box and locking up her diaries and stuff so there'd be evidence after O.J. killed her. Yeah, well, that's what I said. She was taking yeah. pictures of herself and putting that in there. She yeah. had a diary in there. Yeah. But... Hey, four guys were walking around the neighborhood that night. No, he, he actually, uh, she was killed by a racist cop or something. No, she was killed by four wild guys. And then the racist cop came over and quickly got O.J. Uh, framed. It, it was awfully interesting <laughs> to me. You know, I hate to, to think this way. Yeah. But when I saw the two witnesses, one is this little old maid. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> well, you know, they've already, the defense has already, I mean, the prosecution has already explained all that. Do you know that? No. Remember that Johnny Cochran got up there? This is why it's all a load of crap. You know, you got to use your. Uh, you hope that these jurors have more than an ounce of brain power. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. So, um, jurors, 
people who have time to sit on a jury for six months. To some little old maid who looks like she's been in this country for a week uh -huh. who says she saw O.J.'s car parked out there the whole time. Now, now, why would you be looking out your window and noticing that car? You're the maid. You're busy. All right. But let's say, first of all, that night, A.C. was worried about his pal O.J. Do you know they had matching identical Broncos? Yes, absolutely. And A.C. was went by, according to this article I read, A.C. went by uh, O.J.'s house to check on his buddy because he was real concerned because he kept calling there and didn't get him. So he went and parked his Bronco out there. But also, I thought to myself... Why wouldn't this woman want to testify for O.J.? Well, it, you know. yeah. <laughs> Come on, you yeah. save O.J. Simpson's life. Yeah. <laughs> what does it mean to you? Right. Uh. He's already, they've already talked about how generous he is. Yeah. Hey, throw a little of that my way. <laughs> I saw you too that night. Yeah. I'm not casting aspersions. It just seems you like can. it's very convenient that it's a, a maid, not the people who own the house. Right. Well, they were out of town. <laughs> she can't remember. You know, she hardly knows English, but she can remember the color and make of a car at that time. And where yeah. it was parked. And why, I don't know where things are parked yeah. around my neighborhood. I've never once looked out and noticed where everyone's car is at, at what time. I just don't. I don't buy it either. But okay. That's an awfully yeah. thin thread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me remember that in cases of murder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go around tracking everything. Um, yeah, you're walking around making diagrams of the neighborhood Violent. just in case something happens. And we got a lot of stuff happening today, uh, aside from the OJ case, which uh, we have just analyzed. <laughs> so OJ's still guilty. Don't don't anyone get nervous? Like, like maybe, oh my God, there's new evidence. And you know, I never looked at things that way because most people are so stupid that whatever argument they hear last, they just fall for. That's exactly how it goes. Yeah. You know, and Johnny Cochran is clearly a far superior uh, um, um, attorney, uh, actor, actor than um, <laughs> than these other two. Well, I'll tell you one thing: when Johnny Cochran was talking, I said, "Well, this seems like L.A. law to me." Yeah, because it's interesting. <laughs> At least you're interested. It's not it's not dull and boring. The guy has. Well, a that's how it always looks on TV. Right. The two lawyers are always well prepared. Right. And they. They really work the jury. At 700 an hour, he better be well prepared. <laughs> you know what I mean? If he's not well prepared, then then you know what? I would take back all that money. If I was OJ, I'd get up and stab him if he did a bad job. <laughs> yeah. How can he get you? <laughs> With my retainer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger doesn't make $750 an hour when he works on a movie. And he's the biggest box office star in the world. But those other two, they seem like bad college professors, you know, yeah. the kind that just sort of drone on. They don't care that the class is sleeping. Well, everyone agreed. They've been working on the case for seven months. Do you really have to read every word out of a book? <laughs> I mean, when you got up and made presentations to your class, if you made a presentation and just read to them from a piece of paper, as opposed to standing up there and having a command of the facts, mm -hmm. already you're doing better. Yeah. You know, come on, put a little effort into it. Well, that's why they're $30,000 a year lawyers, because they don't put that much effort into stuff. Mm. Guys who put a lot of effort into it get paid for it. They were even pointing out that Johnny Cochran had gone home and worked last night, you know, yeah. the night before, because he was using all these terms that Marsha Clark had used. Yeah, right. In his... Uh, Opening statement. Yeah, like he, he did a little homework. Yeah, probably took him ten and, minutes. And, and revised since he yeah. had a little more time. Yeah, because <laughs> he wants because he wants to make a good living. <laughs> he's actually motivated, but he's pretty slick. And I, you know, I pictured all the black women on the jury going, "Mmm, that is a slick black man." <laughs> you know what I mean? Didn't you guys? I was just like, oh, "Yeah," because yeah. he's kind of like a preacher, you know. Well, I'll tell you, that Very doesn't seductive. work in your uh, <laughs> your detriment. No, the jury starts to fall in love with Johnny. Yeah, Cochran. Yeah. Sure. remember in the William Kennedy Smith trial, right. one of the jurors started dating. Right. The lawyer. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> so, mm, uh, look at that fine about that. black man. Mmm. Look yes. at that. Look how proud. Forget OJ. Let me see your leg. <laughs> yeah. Hey, pull up your pants. Mm, look at that fine black brother. Look how he has pulled himself up. OJ's going up the river. What are you doing? And each, each black guy who gets up there, because uh, Darnell from yesterday. Darden. Goes, Darden. He, uh, he said, uh, you know, I'm from Louisiana, and I pull myself up from the bootstraps. Right. they got to give their credit. And then Johnny was like, yes, I understand Darnell is from there, but I happen to be from deepest part of Louisiana, where a black man could be hung just for looking the wrong way. <laughs> Imagine that. I had it worse. Yeah. 
I could have sworn I heard one black, because there's six black females on there. And I heard one of them go, uh, tell it, say it. I heard it, I'm telling you. One fainted. Ah. She just couldn't take <laughs> yeah, it she couldn't take it. Was <laughs> yeah. so mm, that Johnny Cochran. Ooh. Now, that is my idea of a black man. Ooh. Now, that's what every brother should aspire to be. Now, he just made a point. Mm. You know, you can't you can't uh, disqualify any point Johnny made. <laughs> you know, and Johnny I think boy. He's sexy, too. Mm. Look at that. Mm. Mm -mm. That is a fine black brother. Now, that's a man. Mm. That's a man who takes care of his Are family. Are you saying that the white women wouldn't be impressed? Uh, white women, schmite women. There's black women on that jury. That's who he's got to worry about. He could sway them, too. Though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I'd like to bug their conversations in that hotel. What's he wearing today? Yeah, all those vibrators going. <laughs> Johnny Cochran. They're not supposed to discuss the case, but it's all right to discuss Johnny. Yeah, I now, ladies. Le yeah, right. They're all <laughs> having a coffee clutch about Johnny. <laughs> now, ladies, let me take it. Look, look, look here. Yeah, I'm sure Johnny Cochran sounded just like that, didn't he? Not to them. I love right. the way you spell your name with an I-E. Yeah. Johnny. What cracks me up is everybody referring to Johnny. It sounds like they're talking about a little boy. With yeah, the extra Johnny. Name. Well, Johnny, really. Johnny. Johnny can read. Yeah, how about becoming John? <laughs> yeah, at your age. Johnny. <laughs> mm, that Johnny is a fine man. Now, they say our people can't aspire. None of these here white lawyers speak as good as Johnny. <laughs> and he is good. Look at that suit. Yes, That's a fine brother. That's the way all brothers should dress. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, there's O.J.'s uh, underwear. Now, you ladies of the jury looking especially fine today, so I would like to make a special presentation. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Mm -mm. <laughs> Say it. They're in a trance. Yeah, yeah trance hypnotized. Let me show you my ensemble. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm going to have <laughs> O.J. come over here and pull his pants up for you girls. <laughs> See, model for you. <laughs> model for you. Model his knees for you. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back and talk uh, some more. We have a lot of exciting things going on. You know, what the hell? It's from a magazine called... Uh, it looks It looks like New York Magazine, the way it's laid out here. I, I just can't tell. I think it's New York Magazine. Anyway, um, they say that... Th this will show you how nutty Judge Lance Ito is. Ego. Larry King visited the courtroom last week with his executive producer, Wendy Walker, and his daughter, Kaya, oh in tow. This is, you know, Larry evidently is, you know, was not around all that much when his kid was growing up, so I guess now he's making it up to her by, well, I'm going to take you into the courtroom. Well, now he, she's fun. <laughs> yeah. Now, um... Ito abruptly stopped a hearing for 38 minutes to meet with King in his chambers. Listen to this. When less, in other words, Robin, if I now, forget me, my neighbor down the street should be able to walk in and have a private meeting with and, Judge Ito and have a, a hearing interrupt. Who is Larry King? Larry King's nothing. Well, you know, this goes to prove your point. Yesterday, you said he wouldn't ban the cameras. Yeah. Oh, I know it. You know what? A real judge, a judge who's concerned about justice, would have said, you know what? I put down a rule. Right or wrong, I didn't want the jury shown. You, you blew it. Camera gone. That would have been the end. No more cameras. He would never do that. This is a guy who stops the court proceedings for 38 minutes to meet with Larry King. This is the most... This is what I'm talking about here. What's going on? This is a man who's supposed to be worrying about justice. You don't stop court proceedings for like... Okay, so let's, see, let's read on. Larry King walks in with his producer and his daughter. Yeah, I'd like to bring my daughter by and, you know... Well, give Judge Ito a call. He doesn't care what he's doing. When less famous reporters return to the courtroom after the break, they witness CNN's biggest celebrity not in the press gallery, but on the judge's side of the bar, shaking hands with all the attorneys involved in the case. Oh. When King tried to shake O.J.'s hand, however... A reality check was violently imposed. A deputy had to throw himself between King and O.J. to stop him with a bystander. Says a bystander. So they were still sitting there. Yeah, listen to this. When King couldn't get close, instead he raised a closed fist as if he were in solidarity with Simpson. You know, Man. this is a guy accused of murdering two people. And beating, and beating his wife. Women. I mean, that's for sure. He beat this woman. Well, La you, you've seen Larry's track record with women. While he's not accused of beating them, he, he does... in solidarity. He does, do a, he does do a pretty good number on marrying him and dumping him pretty quick. Because he's such a fox. 
Larry gave him the solidarity. You know, hey, don't worry, OJ. You know, OJ. Courage. <laughs> Courage, OJ. <laughs> what kind of a dick is Larry King? What kind of human being is that? He's a guy who doesn't like you. Yeah. You talk on the radio. The only guy he won't say, the only guy whose ass he won't kiss is mine because I've, I've just so brutally pummeled him. Yeah. If I went on the air every day and said Larry King is like one of the best broadcasters, forget about it. He would kiss my ass just like everyone else. Larry King. When King couldn't get close, he raised his fist as if in solidarity. <laughs> um, Producer Walker says the visit was planned. We thought it would be nice for Larry to meet the principals in the case. Why? The time we waited for Judge Ito was longer than the uh, actual session. So, oh, I see. No, oh, okay, that's a different story. Yeah, it would be nice if Larry met everybody so he could have a more intimate understanding of the case. Well, and it, Judge uh, Ito went and met back with him. In his private chambers. Yeah. And interrupted a hearing yeah. in order to do so. Yeah. Guy, guy sitting in prison for something he either wrongly or, or, or rightly did. And uh, Judge Ito has to take a break to meet with Larry King. Why? Yeah. You think this I'm is a sure guy? OJ would like his uh, mm. time in that prison cell to yeah. be as short as possible. Right. That 38 minutes meant a lot to him. Imagine you are an innocent man, which OJ isn't. But imagine you're an innocent man and like you're dying in there. You're di you're dying because you want to get in court and prove yourself. And the judge stops the proceeding so he can go back and hang with Larry King for 30. Larry King. At least if it was Dan Rather or somebody notable. I, it's. It's Larry King. But it's questionable even in, even in the right. case of Dan Rath. Of course. It's questionable. It, the judge shouldn't even be... Pay he goes, you know, I saw uh, one of the prosecu one of the defense attorneys get up. That other black guy. Not Johnny Cochran, but that other black guy. Yeah, I don't know his name. Who, who appears to be like uh, uh, Robin to his Batman. <laughs> he gets up and he says, uh, Your Honor, I know we want to get uh, our opening arguments underway. This is a couple of days ago because the whole world is awaiting. And Judge Ito goes, I don't care about any of all of that. It's like, sure you do, you dick. He knows what to you say liar. on the camera. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about any of that. The cameras? Which angle am I on right now? What? Which camera am I looking into? <laughs> Captain Japan. Please. Judge Ego. What is going on, dude? <laughs> Larry King. 38-minute <laughs> meeting with Larry King. Oh, I just wanted to come by and say hi and ask how the case was going. And give my support to OJ. Right, I needed to give him the fist sign. <laughs> Larry King. I don't know. It's like it doesn't bother anybody but me. Why does that bother me? I don't see anybody writing about it. I don't see anybody commenting well, on wrote it. Wrote about it for New York Magazine or whatever magazine that was. They seem to be bothered. Yeah, right. But no, you, like, you don't. But like, you don't see screaming headlines. Yeah, I mean that would be like, oh my God, Judge Ego at it again. It's a, it's a big joke. Yeah. Well, you can tell that he's following every word that uh, is said about him in the press. Yeah. Because yesterday in court he made the statement, even though I seem to now be the Rodney King of or the uh, Rodney Dangerfield right. of judges. Right. I will say. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I hope that when I hope OJ gets off. And he's so grateful to Larry for giving him the fist sign that what he does is O.J. starts dating Larry King's daughter. And they get married, and then O.J. can beat Larry King's daughter every day. And Larry can give him the solidarity sign. Hey. Give him a big fist. Hey, way to go, O.J. Beat my daughter some more. All right, what's going on? Your surprise is here. Pop, 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 Should I take a break first? Or? Defense lawyers hope to pick up where they left off yesterday in the O.J. Simpson trial. Johnny Cochran informed uh, the jury and Judge Ito yesterday afternoon that he wasn't through because he had been interrupted so many times. He still had points he wanted to make in his opening statement, so it would continue today if there were no further delays in the trial. But yesterday evening, William Hodgman, who is one of the prosecuting attorneys, was hospitalized just hours after he blew up in court at defense tactics. He, he literally blew up. He exploded. His head exploded. It was like scanners. Yeah, it was really good. It made for a better television show. <laughs> 
doctors say Hodgman is in good condition and that it's unlikely he suffered a heart attack, they won't speculate if his condition is stress-related, but Judge Ito says that he's never seen Hodgman so agitated as he was last evening. The bone of contention, if you will. Mm. I have a bone of contention. (laughs) Had to do with a number of new witnesses and new experts that the prosecution was never apprised of who Johnny Cochran referred to in his opening statements. The prosecution feels that this is a breach of the discovery procedure. They are supposed to be informed Hmm. about all witnesses and all experts and all of that stuff so that they can plan their case before they actually go to trial. So they feel that they're not being given enough time and they may ask for a delay in the trial so that they can update themselves as to the new defense strategy. Here is a little bit of what went on yesterday. Let's start with Johnny Cochran. Oh, Johnny Cochran. The lead defense attorney for O.J. Simpson, who said, number one, that his man is innocent. And then he uh, methodically went through, point by point, all of the prosecution's assertions and allegations about his client to show that there was great weakness in their case. We expect to introduce evidence that from their own records, that laboratory is a cesspool of contamination. Not up to speed, not up to standard. We think we can conclusively indicate that in the course of the testimony in this case. So how did O.J.'s DNA, you know, get there? Let's just say this, that I I just want to explain to people what he's talking about. He is now um, complaining about procedures conducted by the uh, Los Angeles Police Department lab. He says that they do shoddy work and that you can't trust any results based on samples they've... What else does Johnny Cochran have to say? Johnny Cochran, what else do you have to say? Speak up. We expect there will be testimony that on the date of June 12th, Mm. Mr. Simpson was involved in the acute phase Mm, of the rheumatoid arthritis. Oh. (laughs) And on that date, after he had played golf... How do you play golf with rheumatoid arthritis? Problems with his hands... Was so severe he could not shuffle the cards where he played gin rummy. What a life! Country club thereafter. <laughs> what a day this yeah, guy he had. Spends the day playing golf at the club and then playing gin rummy. Uh, how could gin OJ? Rummy in the locker room. How could OJ be so damn angry? He's got that Paul. You know, listening to the history oh. of Paula Barbieri in his life, he took up with her after the divorce from Nicole. Then when Nicole started chasing him, according to Johnny Cochran, it was Nicole who decided that she wanted to try to put their family back together. She put together a family videotape and then sent him pictures and said, I want my family back together. Hmm. So O.J. said, let's take it slow. I've got a new girlfriend. And so Paula was dating him. Nicole was dating him. Super lifestyle. (laughs) I mean, why did he have to go nuts? This was heaven, was it not? Oh, please. Of course it is. Please. Some people's lives have been reduced to meeting with Stuttering John. <laughs> you got a guy. Imagine a little golf. This is what I'm going to do. Wake up this morning, do a little golfing. Then I'll play gin rummy after lunch. And I'll go home and have sex with eh, maybe Nicole, Paul Barbieri, uh, maybe uh, the one the run from the White Snake videos. Tony Katane. Tony Katane. Or maybe, you know, there's yeah. a new girl in Playboy this month. Right. Let me give yeah. her a call. Because I am going down to do the Hawaiian Tropic uh, <laughs> beauty contest. That's right. I'm a judge. All right. That would make you vicious. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> You'd be angry. You tell me, maybe this is a defense right here. Yeah. How could the man be upset? Yeah, it's impossible. There is nobody <laughs> on the planet who would be mad having that kind of lifestyle. But that Johnny Cochran smooth. I like his glasses, too. He kind of looks like Sammy a little bit. That's true. They're those big power frames. Power frames with the tent because yeah. you can't really see his eye. Yeah, well, that's to make the ladies swoon. You got six <laughs> black ladies on that jury. Johnny is going to win. Mm, look at that fine brother. Mm, 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 mm. I mean, and he's always very complimentary. Notice how he, when he refers to the jury, yeah. he says, you know, I know that we worked long and hard to make sure that we got people who would keep an open mind. Mm. And I know you're keeping an open mind, ladies. He's a preacher, that guy. He's no lawyer. He did a good job, but O.J.'s still guilty. Let's hear some more of what... Well, his job is just to get him off, not to prove he's innocent. Yeah. 
there will be, as I understand the evidence, no trace of blood on the white carpet upstairs or up, on the stairs or upstairs. No trace of white of blood on the white carpet from any bloody shoes. Hmm. No trace of blood on the white carpet from any bloody pants or shirts. And no trace of blood on this white carpet from any bloody socks. Yeah, but there's some blood in that car. and Maybe he took his clothes off before he got in the house. It's grasping at straw. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> Why has O.J. got blood anywhere? Yeah. But why, what, how do you explain the blood anywhere? <laughs> and ha, the blood mixture. You know, I wish they could show the jury. I don't see why they can't, because I'd love to see... You know, listen, he's playing to the six black ladies in the jury. There's no question in my mind. He's got to get them going. And I picture them swooning like the Supremes in unison. <laughs> you remember how you know. uh, salt and pepper treated Larry Lawrence Fishburne? Yeah. <laughs> That's a man. <laughs> that's how those women are thinking of Johnny mm, Cochran. He's a fine Ooh, what brother. What a man. Mm, now, that's a black man. Let me say something. That's the black man that white America does not see. <laughs> but there's a brother who wears fine suits and can speak well, and he is articulate. And he is winning me over, God damn it! He is right. There he is, is no right. blood on that white carpet. <laughs> he is right. <laughs> so if Johnny's testimony, his opening statement, was interrupted several times right. during the day by William Hodgman, one of the lead prosecuting attorneys, who objected to all of this new information they were now getting and a big meeting was held after the jury was dismissed because one of the jurors had a previous doctor's appointment hmm. they uh met in closed door with uh, behind closed doors with uh, judge ito judge ito judge to ego exactly what was going on here and what the prosecution would like to see done as a result so here is william hodgman lodging some of his complaints i don't like it we have a myriad of representations as to the defendant's physical condition with regard to dyslexia. Where is the report? Arthritis of several different varieties. Where are the reports? Uh, an expert regarding shoes. Where are the reports? An shoes. expert regarding shoes. Uh, Your Honor, I am the expert regarding <laughs> shoes. I've been a foot fetishist for the last seven years. I believe I know everything that has to be known about shoes. <laughs> That's a lot of the evidence that they had no idea the yeah. defense was going to present. No Here's wonder Hodgman's having heart attacks. <laughs> Mr. Hodgman, again. Uh, which number do you know? Uh, number five. Oh, we did that one. Oh, you didn't do number one. Is number one a Hodgman? Yes. Okay. A Hodgman. It is not labeled as such. Hodgman. <laughs> Hodgman. It's much more complicated than Mr. Hodgman. Oops. So we are being... That's not him. Who is that? Who is that? I don't know. Jackie Ball. <laughs> this, case is, this case is more confusing here. <laughs> Number seven is Mr. Hodgman. Number seven? Yeah. I think. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they're not labeled, really. All right, here we go. We're doing a boxing scene. And, you know, we're throwing the oh, punches no. like this. and it's No? I know what that is. That's not William Hodgman. <laughs> that <laughs> is one of the guys who I wanted to play this for you. Yeah. Because this is one of the guys who was... Working on that fitness video, yeah, with OJ, yeah, because in this whole period of time, while OJ's arthritis was preventing him from doing anything, mm -hmm. he was making a fitness video. Yeah, he was playing golf, he was playing tennis. Meanwhile, he just couldn't do anything, according to Johnny Cochran. Yeah, he couldn't kill anyone. But this guy talks about one of the little outtakes. In the video scene, O.J. apparently is doing some kind of an exercise where he's doing like an uppercut motion. Boxing thing? Yeah. So the and guy says... Uh, the guy says, O.J.'s doing this little boxing thing. Kind of moving to get your upper body involved. And, and as I'm talking about how you get these upper body muscles going and you're keeping the legs moving for cardiovascular and so forth. He makes a comment. I don't know exactly the wording that he used, but it's something the fact that and if you hit your wife with this punch, just blame it on the video. And I remember thinking, oh, man. And obviously we cut. But the funny thing was, we cut, we started up again, he did it again. <laughs> he made the same kind of statement. He didn't know anything was wrong with it. Oops, there it is. <laughs> Let's take a break, Rob, and we'll come back and do some more news for okay. you. Let's return to the Howie Stern Show. Uh -uh. Oh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. That's a good song. David Lee, right? See. Tobacco Road. Where were we in the uh, 
Captain Japan trial? <laughs> Judge Ego. Yes, once again, uh, Johnny Cochran making the case that he thinks the Los Angeles Police Department conspired to plot against O.J. Simpson and frame him with this murder. Yeah. He uh, had a couple of new witnesses. He says there's one person who will testify that she saw four men with uh, wearing ski caps in the neighborhood about the time the murders occurred. Uh, next door, uh, at the house next door, a maid will testify that she saw O.J. Simpson's white Bronco parked at the time the murders were occurring. Where was the Easter Bunny <laughs> during the murders? Anybody see him? And he says that the dog will not make a good witness either. <laughs> so the case know. will go on today. I think Johnny Cochran's an excellent, excellent attorney. There I am talking like Judge Ito. Excellent attorney. <laughs> but, uh... He's got an uphill battle. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Jeez, I mean, it would take a lot to convince me that O.J. didn't do it. <laughs> you know, it would, it would just about take a guy standing up and going, I did it. That's what would convince me. Some people are thinking that they're going to see some kind of a Perry Mason stunt. Oh, yeah? In this trial. Yeah, somebody from the gallery will jump up and say, All right, I did it. I confess. I did it. <laughs> All right, when do I get paid? I understand that there's only seven seats available in the right. jury room for an audience. The rest of the seats go to people who know somebody. Yep. Already, you know, the people who are lawyers and other people in the judicial system who can just get seats. Do you think you and I could get worked into the audience? Because if if that's the case, let's go down to Los Angeles and do it. <laughs> do we know anybody? We know OJ, but well, surely somebody listens to this show and wants to get us in there, don't they? Yeah, because I think, like Larry King, we should be in there, and Giorgito could meet us back in the chambers. <laughs> I think that'd be really cool. Larry King, this is this is how out of control this judge ego is. <laughs> First of all, you knew that he wasn't taking any cameras out of there. Yeah, he came to that conclusion real quick. And notice that the camera was, of course, bolted down, but, of course, Judge Ito could be seen perfectly. You don't miss the judge any time now. No. He doesn't have to worry about that camera moving off him. No. So he knows where it is at all times. much easier to control. And Larry King shows up a couple of weeks ago, I guess, and uh, Judge Ito actually stops the proceedings and has a 38-minute meeting with uh, Larry King in his chambers. I guess maybe Judge Ito wants to line up his appearance on the Larry King show for after the trial. Yeah, he doesn't want to burn any bridges. Yeah. Judge Airtime. That's his new name. Judge Airtime. You don't say no to a Larry King. Yeah, right. Judge Airtime. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and then Larry King came out and shook everyone's hand and, you know, all the all the various uh, attorneys. attorneys and then tried to sh shake O.J.'s hand, but the... Sheriffs and stuff jumped on top of uh, O.J. They, they got between them and wouldn't let that happen. But Larry did give him the power sign, the fist of solidarity. Yeah, they were even saying yesterday when O.J. walked over to the jury to show his knee. Yeah. That it wasn't as dramatic as it could have been. Right. Because there were six bailiffs behind him as he stood there. Yeah. And I was like, so? Of course there are bailiffs behind him. You yeah. know, this guy is a defendant. He's under arrest. And he's clearly unstable. <laughs> if he did this act, which I believe he did. Yeah, and wouldn't you bolt if you got the opportunity? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm holding these people hostage. <laughs> so, of course, they followed him over there. I demand a white Bronco. I was thinking we could do, like, a if we wanted to write a sketch, we could do a Judge Ito sketch, and all of a sudden, Judge Ito has to call a, a you know, a timeout. Because he has to switch into his costume as Captain Japan. Uh, because he's really a superhero. A superhero? Yeah, I was thinking about <laughs> writing something up like that. And he goes out and saves people. Just working on it. Just the germ of an idea. He's such a little superhero, though. Yeah, but he has superpowers. <laughs> I imagine him sitting at that, on that big chair behind that podium, swinging his legs because they don't hit the floor. Right. Hey. <laughs> uh oh, me have to get out of here. He's got... sitting on a phone book. Me have to go say someone. Mm, I'd be faster than a speeding bird. <laughs> oh, what? So in Chinatown they have the phone booths with the little pagoda tops on them. Yeah, that could be where he changes. <laughs> <laughs> and a pagoda pavilion. Yeah, that'd be cool. 
Oh, oh no, me can't change in regular phone booth. Oh. Me must go to Chinatown. Pagoda. Pagoda. <laughs> Where's the pagoda booth? Where's the nearest one? Well, as I predicted, he would not ban the cameras. And you were right. Right. Absolutely right. But I didn't think he would either. He's so reactionary. Mm -hmm. He's angry. You know, I was talking on the air yesterday that Judge Ito is always angry. So Marvin Kitman actually wrote a column today about how Judge Ito is always angry. Yeah. <laughs> he actually... I a, noticed that. Yeah. He's angry all the time. And what is he angry about? It's almost as if you're afraid to stand up and offer an objection because Judge Ito will yell at you. Isn't the judge's job to sort of like be there to referee, not to sit there and be angered? Yeah. Because when this William Hodgman was jumping up yesterday, he had to be very respectful. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, Your Honor, I'm sorry, but I would like to offer an objection. Yeah, I mean, you got to kiss the judge's ass every time you open the mouth, you know? It's like, excuse me, Your Honor, I love you, Your Honor, I'm going to, you know... You're I'm a wonderful suck. man, Your Honor. Yeah. And I know I've said this before, Your Honor, but I'd like to just point out again, Your Honor... Did they yeah. say Your Honor? Oh, well, because, because it's so deferential. Is that the word? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why don't they just bow? Yeah, like, yeah, look, that's what he wants. Emperor, bow! Emperor, Emperor Ito. Follow me! <laughs> You'll bow, dog! Like, bow now! Whatever happened to that? I object! You know, no, no, you don't yell no. like that in uh, Judge Ito's chamber. Uh, excuse me, Your Honor? Uh... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And Judge Ito's got that scowl on his face. Yeah, and he's just, he doesn't have time for you. Right. When you offer your object, I've said that already. I've, I've listened to you before. I heard, I know what you're going to say. Yeah, excuse me. You don't know what I'm going to say. You, if you knew what I was going to say, if you had anything, you'd be an attorney in private practice instead of taking a job for $20,000 a year where you don't have to worry about anything except people kissing your ass. Now, don't tell me you know what I'm thinking. That's what you want to say to the guy. And then when he pointed out, I have that in my notes already. Hmm. Yeah, sure you do. If you got it in your notes, why don't you shut the guy up? <laughs> no, you're not allowed to talk back to the guy. I'm going to give him his opportunity to speak here, and I'll, we'll take that up later after the jury's gone, okay? Now, Judge Ito's got to remember something. The prosecution represents those two dead bodies. That's, you know, that's a pretty important uh, position to take. He represents all of us, and that's we right. to be made whole, as they say. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Judge Ego, on camera. And people say to me, oh, this is so great. We're getting to see how justice is done. This isn't justice. Just, this is how justice is usually done. You kill two people. You kill your wife and her boyfriend or something or some guy that she knows. You plea bargain down. You get, a, you get a, probably a sentence of 10 to 15. You plea bargain down to 7. You serve 3 to 4 with good behavior. That's justice. Nobody, nobody goes to prison for killing anybody. A couple of years. The worst. And then, you know, and by the way, when you're, when you're going to be on trial for murder... I doubt you could afford to have the head DNA expert in the world show up at your trial, so you might as well kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> you know, I like that to go. Uh, we are now going to um, tell you that one of the people you'll be meeting is the guy who not only wrote the book about DNA, but he invented DNA itself. And won a Nobel Prize. And won a Nobel Prize. <laughs> now, when you go to trial, you're going to get the guy who wrote a book about DNA, about read the guy who yeah, read a book about <laughs> DNA. So that, you know... This He's is not got justice. the woman, the woman expert, yeah. who's going to come and talk about him not having this uh, syndrome of the kind right. of batterer who commits a murder. She's the woman who is the mother yeah. of spousal battery and, and, and uh, testifies in all these cases. Yeah. I wish he would let me uh, be the commentator. You know, like I, I, I would draw little bubbles over mm -hmm. Judge Ito's head. Mm -hmm. What he's really, thinking. yeah, what he's really thinking would be like, you know, hmm, even if I get miniseries, I not make as much moolah as friggin' attorneys. Me mad. <laughs> you know, really, well, oh, I could go for some ribs right now. Ah, oh. I wanted to ask you what you thought of all of uh, Johnny Cochran's uh, oh. his oh. circle of benevolence that he was painting of yeah. uh, O.J. Simpson, the man who gives back to his community, never forgets where he came from. Well, what it is is, let me tell you what I think about what? that. Um, there's a guy who's smart attorney. I mean, the fact of the matter is, most black people feel, no, don't forget the six black jurors. Mm -hmm. Most black people feel when they see this black man with all these white friends, white women, white lawyers, all this <laughs> stuff, they start to think, they go, hmm, now what's with this brother? Why don't he give back to the community? He forget where he came from. <laughs> so now they're like, he gave $5,000 for uniforms for the little black children Even in the inner city. Even while he's in jail. Yeah. Well, of course, especially <laughs> while he's in jail. No, no. Uh, O.J. is not one of those guys who really was involved with the black community. You know, he gave his mother a house. Big deal. This man brought it, the one of his first acts. Yeah. 
and he hasn't upgraded it. That's what it said to me. No, a brother. It's the same house. A brother who hangs with, you know, if he would have stuck with his black first wife. You know, that's a guy who, who remembers his roots. Uh, you know, but yeah, I, I really thought about that. I yeah. think he bought his mother her house when he wasn't making that much money. Yeah, it's he just, never bought her another one. It's just a play, Robin, to say to the to the black members of the jury, mm -hmm. and even the white ones, say, "Hey, this is a brother who came from bad. You know, he's really a poor guy, not a rich guy." Right. Oh, now OJ's stupid too. Yeah, right. He's got dyslexia. Right. Yeah, he's <laughs> dumb. He's just a big, dumb, feeble guy. Yeah. You know, he's Muhammad Ali or something. <gasps> All of a sudden, you know, one yeah. minute OJ was a no, OJ, brain surgeon. Yeah. OJ <laughs> spends every day in a 99.9% .9 white country club. It's 99.9% .9 because he's the only black member. He's a real homie. Hey, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. And his brother, let me, let me tell you some things you don't know. You know one time he gave $5,000 to some black children? He still buys the uniforms and his only stipulation... Is that he remain anonymous? And why are you talking about it? Well, hey, it's time to pull out all stops. Until you commit murder. You know why? Because if that's the only thing you did for the black community, you want to keep it quiet. <laughs> now, this man you're looking at is a charitable, crippled retard. <laughs> barely able to tie his own shoes. He <laughs> wasn't smart enough to commit this murder. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't do anything. Meanwhile, the guy was a commentator on television. What yeah. dyslexia did he have? It's so funny. I said, my goodness. It's not the O.J. I know. Yeah. It's not the O.J. O.J. knows. <laughs> Why is he constantly scribbling on that pad if he's so bad off? Because he's trying to figure out how to write his ABCs. <laughs> he's still taking lessons. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then the... He does, you know, now there there was a good argument when they uh, they have accused O.J. of stalking Nicole. And he said, I'll bring out his calendar, his diary, his yeah. date book, and I'll show you where this man was and how he couldn't have possibly been a stalker. And he wasn't standing in the bushes watching Nicole have sex with that guy. Yeah. He came over to have a conversation with her. Yeah. He was over there a little too much. <laughs> and that's when he saw. And you know, then they did bring up the Marcus Allen thing that, look, O.J. found out one of his best friends had had intimate relations with his wife, and he didn't go crazy. Yeah, he didn't kill anyone. <laughs> it was the first time he ever killed anyone. What's the big deal? Hey, I forget. What did this country used to do before this murder? <laughs> you know? Wait, what did they do? What did I do in the afternoon? i got to get home. What are we doing? <laughs> Colin Ferguson, meanwhile. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you want to hear the OJ tapes? Yes. All right, I was watching dying the. Uh, for this. Yes. Well, I got them. Hey, you know, I was watching the the uh, the courtroom yesterday, and I got to ask a question. So I'm watching this, and they got all that computer equipment, and everything's all high tech and super labeled, and everything else. And they still, to this day, have that one woman sitting there with that stupid tra stupid transcriber machine. Yes. <laughs> well, well, you know, like like. Right. We have, we're, we're videotaping it, videotape. everything's on video, everything's on audio, and the woman is still sitting there with that antiquated piece of thing, writing down everything that they say. Holding saying. down three bars at a time, this gotta, those squiggles. Because everyone's unwilling to change that. There's got to be like a union. That must be like a stenographer's union. I don't know. a voice activated thing now. That'll put it right into a computer. I know. Well, you know what they said? Even he, Gary's probably right because I remember at one point, was it yesterday? Yeah, that uh, Judge Ito said, you know, now would be a nice time to take a court reporter break. <laughs> yeah. But you know what happened? Court reporter break. Yeah. yeah. So she could get arrested. Yeah. Well, of course. I mean, she's, <laughs> I mean, first of all, I have no idea how that machine works <laughs> because all they do is like they just hit the button once. If you, I, I was watching yesterday, the prosecuting attorney was reading a list of names mm -hmm. and for each name she just went Boom. right she holds down like Boom. three buttons at a time there's only yeah. a few keys on that thing yeah there's only like five it's keys it's like 12 it's, it's, like 12? it's like 12 keys it's amazing but she, it's instantaneous I think if the judge says uh, what was that go back three sentences that she can actually take it and read it back yes she can she that's can. always amazing yeah I always thought it was just someone with a good memory who was <laughs> scamming everybody. Because when they have those volumes and volumes of transcripts that the witnesses or the jury goes through, I'm like, yeah, that court reporter wrote all that stuff. Yeah. But did you ever notice also it's on uh, a tape that, like, you get at the supermarket? Yeah, it's the a bank. Little, little thin Like tape. a little tiny bank roll. <laughs> ticker tape. A little ticker tape. Yeah. yeah, and she's reading it. Yeah, she's like, okay, here's what he said. <laughs> 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 
That's. I mean, that's got to be a high-paying job. I mean, I couldn't do that. It better be. There's a whole yeah. court reporter school you have to go to. Yeah, wow, I imagine. That's a pretty cool skill. But that was pretty funny. This whole thing gets broken up because she needs a break. Yeah. Yeah. Lawyer yeah. takes a breath. You know, that's a good place to have a court reporter break. <laughs> so all the commentators yesterday were saying that Judge Ito has lost control yes. of his courtroom. And I'm like, well, okay. It appears that way. They're all fighting with each other. Yeah, but I think that goes on all the time, doesn't it? You know what? That's funny to me, though. He's so caught up in it. At one point, somebody made a comment about, uh, I don't know, some specific fact or name of movies, and Judge Ito blurts out the answer to the question. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, all I know, here's my commentary, okay? This is what I got out of the trial. Can't believe there are still court stenographers <laughs> with all that electronic equipment. I think that's the human, you know, the fail-safe. Right. Because if all the electronic equipment goes down, she's still there. The other thing I got out of the court case was, Orenthal is not a name I've ever heard in my entire lifetime. <laughs> Equally, Arnell is another name I've never heard before, <laughs> except on the planet Krypton, which is Orenthal's daughter, Arnell. You know what? The funniest thing to me was I was reading O.J.'s sister's name the other day. What is it? Carmelita. 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 <laughs> Yeah, where are they from? That's not even bad compared to Orenthal. But, I mean, you got Orenthal and Carmelita in the same group of kids. And Arnell is his daughter, and she is one hot mama. Cute. Yeah. But the naming, I mean, Orenthal, when they say Orenthal James Simpson, I'm out of my mind. I mean, Judge Ito is a more common name than Orenthal. <laughs> you know what I mean? And nobody knows how to pronounce it. Is it Orenthal, Orenthal? The other thing I get out is that it appears the key to being a lawyer is knowing how to kiss the judge's ass and say your honor every three seconds. And uh, I'm trying to think what else I got out of it. All of it was BS. All that arguing was just wasting time. Yeah. I don't know. That's sort of what I got out of the, the trial. They spent all day going around and around and around about one issue. Are we going to sanction the defense for not giving us the names of witnesses? Yeah. And it took all day. Yeah. I learned blacks can be good lawyers. Because <laughs> that guy Johnny Cochran seems pretty cool. Yeah. Johnny Cochran. He's got them all stymied. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, here's the here's the tape of O.J. Now, this is exclusive tape. We have the first to air it, I That's believe. That's correct. I mean, in its entirety. This is O.J. rapping. This is his, his book. His right. book is coming out today called This Is What I Want to Say. Right. And they do these audio books, and this is O.J. talking. Okay. So the, set, the setup on this is O.J. is in his jail cell. And the guy that wrote the book with him gives a little rap about how O.J. narrates the most important chapters. But basically the tape is people wrote O.J. letters and they have actors read the letters and then O.J. sort of answers them. Okay. So this is O.J. He telling everyone he is not guilty. As soon as the small microphone was set, O.J. leaned forward, looked me directly in the eyes and said... Who's this? That's, That's the, guy the, author. the author. Oh, okay. I am 100% not guilty. In my open letter read on television on June 17, 1994 by my friend Bob Kardashian, I said I was innocent. When asked at my arraignment, where the charges against me were first formally stated... In Would they tape this in prison? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's in your cell, oh, right? Oh, you can hear people walking around in the back. Yeah, listen to that. That's in one of those visiting rooms. Right. In fact, I'm 100% innocent. In fact, the author describes that um, uh, they brought O.J. in and he has, I guess, the... Uh, uh, shackles on his wrist hmm. that are um, shackled to his waist and then they take it and they clip it onto the floor wow. so that oh, his wrist boy. is shackled to the floor and the guy's describing how uh, OJ clipped it himself um, so you know so gracefully just like when he used to run with the ball mm -hmm. to me he even sounds guilty <laughs> for I said I am 100% not guilty I said it again in Judge Ito's chambers. It sounds like they slowed the tape down. Yeah, it's weird. It does sound weird. But I said it again, Judge Are you Ito. sure that's not, you know, some medication he was on? I don't know. It sounds to me like somebody told him if you talk slow, you sound more sincere. And I said to you here, I will continue to say the truth until the day I die. I don't even think he sounds like he believes it's, it. It's being read. The guy says O.J. leaned uh, into him and immediately said this like it was extemporaneous, yeah. off the cuff. Yeah. He's reading. I'm, yeah. I'm 100% page two. Okay, now wait a second. 
Um, <laughs> this thing is really funny. This is now OJ explaining. He, he's asking, who could have done this? Okay. Jackie Mall. Yeah, who? Since I know I didn't do it, who did it? Hmm. hmm. I can't relate to why anybody would kill another person. <laughs> How funny is that? How about jealousy? Like talking yeah. to a stranger. I certainly can't relate to why anyone... Well, why would someone beat a woman? I can't, I can't relate, relate to that. To that. Yeah. Because you wouldn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> he has this really great... Rap. Well, it's really funny because later on in the tape... Uh, O.J.'s too busy to, to read himself, so they get an actor to read his right, words. Right, right. And he's complaining that uh, Dan Rather had shoddy reporting mm. because Dan Rather said that um, he beat his wife nine times. You know right. how incidents? And he goes, where did they come up with this number? Instead of saying, hey, I never did it, you know, instead of nine, it was only like a little bit less. Yeah. Maybe it was 11, maybe it was 10. So O.J.'s upset 12. about the amount of times right. they're saying he beat his wife. How could they count right. the number? Of yeah, how would they know I beat her nine times? Well, I beat her six times. He they know that for a fact. He said, where did they come up with this magic number nine? Yeah. It wasn't in the kitchen, it was no. in the living room. Right, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a right They're lying. And defined beating. <laughs> Kill Nicole and Mr. Goldman. I sat in my cell and asked myself, what would I say to whoever did this? The only thing I could think of is why. I also have to ask myself if I can ever forgive whoever killed Nicole. <laughs> now, my Bible tells me I have to, but right now I can't. I know whoever did this. My Bible. This is so a guy who's out. Rosie Greer gave this me. guy out banging everybody in sight. He's got an affair going with Tony. He's got Paula Bavieri. He's got he's got he's got the wife. He's he's well, beating you know, her up. My he, Bible. He, he never listened to the Bible. The Bible yeah. says you're not supposed to cheat. Yeah. But he did that the anyway. The Bible. So he's not going to forgive the person who killed the girl. Yeah. They will have to face the Lord. Yeah, you sure will. Now, uh, now this. Lucky for you, that's. A bunch of hogwash. <laughs> the Lord. What's great is you're having an affair with a hole in your jail cell wall. That's who you have sex with now. That's your punishment. That's your punishment. You had all that great tukey, and now you're going to have a hole in a wall. I love you. Howard, this, uh, this piece of tape here is... Let uh, me take a break. We'll hear some okay. more of Oriental James Simpson. Shut up, already. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the OJ tape because I want to see these girls. Okay, so the whole tape, like I said, is letters that people write in. And i got to tell you, the bulk of the letters are like, you know, OJ, we support you. You know, we know you're there. And it's just really weird. We know you're there. You know, of course you we know, But we know, you know, we're there with you. We know that you're desperate. Yeah, the kooks. And, and OJ's whole tape is, you know, me, me, me. You know, nobody can imagine what I'm going through. Yeah, poor me. No, yeah, Nicole's dead. I'm in a black hole. I, me, me, me. I'm depressed I. every day. Right. You know, all that junk. But, um... O.J. talks about one of the racist letters he got. Okay. Mm. The majority of the letters had some religious theme to them. Many addressed important social... Sounds like lurch. Religious theme to them. Uh, it's a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Many of the letters had some theme to them. You know, and this is a guy who called himself an actor. In fact, I heard one of the attorneys refer, his own attorneys refer to him as a would-be actor. <laughs> they did? Yeah. A would-be actor. <laughs> Even they can't bring themselves to call him an actor. But do you think they told him to act, like, low-key on this? You know, don't be too happy, you know? Yeah, well, yeah. And he's just so obvious that... <laughs> Kill issues that needed to be dealt with. There are obviously a small minority of racist letters, many of them unsigned. Ah, uh, looky here, Sambo. It done looks as if you is done jumping into bed with any more white women. Glory be and amen. Now, something like this would only happen more often to Hollywood niggers like, say, Quincy Jones or Mr. Portier. The world would be a better place. Ain't what a nice letter to send to a guy in prison. Wait, this, the best part about this is the guy actually signed his name in town. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Worse than celebrity niggers with money. Another Carl K. King, Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. <laughs> Let's call him. <laughs> How do you know it wasn't a phony name? It is. Yeah. Carl K. Carl King, K. King is K. 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 Yeah, right. With a K, you probably said Carl. Yeah. Carl K. King. And then this last piece of tape is uh, O.J. explaining his financial the second situation. second reason. What is he explaining? His financial situation. People think he's a lot wealthier than he is, and he's explaining oh. the reason he's doing the book is for money and why he needs this money. The second reason is financial. Many people think that I am very rich and have access to unlimited funds. <laughs> Many people think I'm very rich. This is not the case. 
I have succeeded. I have been able to provide for my family, my friends, and loved ones. And some say I've been too generous at times. The legal system requires that I defend myself in a trial since my statement that I am 100% not guilty has not been accepted by the District Attorney of Los Angeles County. This has and will continue to consume all my resources. When the system starts to gain speed, you must keep up with it or be run over by it. The state of California has unlimited resources from the taxpayers to prosecute. Yeah, O.J. wrote this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's reading a statement, that the same statement that his lawyer's making. Unlimited resources. Yeah, and they say they don't know anything about when this book or how this book got made. Yeah, yeah sure. It, yeah, they, they just let him write whatever he wants. Who cares if he even no, incriminates they didn't himself? Look over no. anything that he said. No. Hey, that's OJ's thing. He's got to write his book. <laughs> we can't get involved. Many people think I've been too generous <laughs> <laughs> at times. <laughs> There's one part where he sits, he sits around and he says, uh, "You know, uh, I wonder what was going through Nicole's mind at the time she was killed." And all I could think of was the back of your hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I often lay awake at night wondering why somebody would kill Nicole. Turn the page, Paula. <laughs> <laughs> These resources will never run out so long as taxes are paid and the state wishes to proceed. I don't have access to similar funds to prove my innocence. In fact, I don't have the sort of sums many people think I have. I'm using all my financial resources, and I am now in need of additional funds for my defense. Just like a guy in a reading class. Yeah. Trying to learn how to read. Oh, the other thing on this tape that's... I am now trying to get my funds together. The other thing on this tape that's real evident is somebody must have told him, mention the kids every five minutes. Right. Because, you know, you got to mention the kids a lot. a lot. Yeah. So they're coming up. Yeah, the kids, the kids. But first, I want you to know I have already provided for my children. Oh. I have asked the writers of these letters included here to contribute mm. their letters with the full explanation that the majority of the income derived from this tape will go to my defense fund. And I am grateful that those who even believe in my guilt also believe that I should have my day in court and have agreed to let their words be used in this tape. There you go. Is that it? There's a lot of other yeah, a lot of other junk. But I, I like to hear when he when he says he's innocent. You know, I right. love that stuff. One hundred percent not guilty. He said he's he's busy talking about all the you know the kids, the estate, the money, why he's doing the book. I can't imagine why someone would kill her. Uh, how about answering why there was bloody socks on your floor? Gee, could I ever forgive them? You know what is weird though? Like, how come OJ remembered to get rid of everything that he was wearing except for bloody socks? He Isn't probably didn't notice the, there was such minute traces of blood on the things that where they did find blood. Right. He probably didn't notice the blood on those things. Wow. It's like, how stupid can you be? Why should you find blood anywhere? Like, wh why was there blood in his Bronco? Like, he could say, well, look, there wasn't blood all over my shirts. There wasn't blood on my hands. But why was there blood in your Bronco and on your socks? Again, I don't think he could see that blood in a rush. Yeah, and how did your blood end up at the crime scene? <laughs> That's the point. Why is there blood anywhere? Right. <laughs> All of this beats the hell out of me. <laughs> All of it. There's one other part I didn't pull from the tape that's really funny. You know, they have all these actors reading it, I guess, in the voice that they imagine the writer is of the yeah. writer. That's the O.J. portion of the program. The hell with O.J. We have Super Bowl. Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Let me go see who's here. He won't be enjoying Super Bowl as much as he usually does. Right. Yeah, we'll dedicate this one to O.J. <laughs> Do it quick, then. Okay, O.J., no trial today. Judge Ito has to sit and consider all the arguments he heard yesterday. The prosecution has accused the defense of uh, misconduct. Right. They say they have failed to disclose a lot of information they were supposed to. They have failed to give them lists, uh, accurate lists of witnesses. They uh, both argued valiantly before Judge Ito yesterday, and Judge Ito says it'll take him the weekend to consider. He'll make his pronouncement on this situation on Monday. You're an expert. What's uh, going to be the uh, jury verdict? Give me your best guess right now. Uh, the jury verdict. The jury verdict. What will it be? Give me your best guess right now. You've seen a little of the prosecution. You've seen a little of the defense. Go ahead. I believe. Go ahead. It will be a hung jury. Look at the smoke coming out of your ears on that question. 
She takes her job seriously. You say a hung jury. Yeah. Now, what is the definition of a hung jury? I believe that there'll be one or two jurors who will just not be able to come to terms with the others, and they won't be able to reach a verdict. What about the uh, idea that Judge Ito himself will be sentenced to 12 years in prison? <laughs> have you heard that theory? No, I have not. OJ's sitting over here right now. <laughs> You gotta wear the uh, OJ mask to the scores, Neil. Neil's got his OJ mask on. <laughs> Did you also see in the paper today that uh, a lot of reporters are upset with Judge Ito because two reporters are being given given preferential treatment? Yeah. Joe McGinnis and Larry King, Dominique Dunn, have permanent courtroom seats. Why? Because McGinnis is writing a book about the case, and Dunn is covering it for Vanity Fair. They say Dunn even has his own LAPD detective. Wow. So that they get to get fair. into the courtroom every day. Now, the other big... Let's see it. I'll ask the listeners, right? Let's ask you the listeners for advice. They're always so full of good advice. <laughs> they know they nothing. want us to keep it, I'm sure. Yeah. Hello? 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 Yes. Can I get to how it's done, please? Yeah, you're on the air. I'm on the air. Oh, anyway, I, I didn't think I was going to get to I want to talk to you. You're a really nice person. I like the way you are. You make people laugh and everything. But I, what I'm upset is that I can't believe that you're judging O.J. just by what you hear. You oh, you are so... Person. Don't listen to me. Listen to me. I will not discuss the O.J. trial with morons. My first wife. I will not discuss it... Where is O.J.'s first wife, that despicable that woman? Let her step up onto the stand and talk about the abuse she took at this she guy's hand. Barbara Walters. Why can't they find her? Yeah, why can't they find her? And where... where? Who didn't get abused? No. no. on television. That's right. Oh, please. I feel that the man is innocent. Why, why would you feel that? His blood is all over the place. Who do you think killed her? Blood. Did you read today's report in the paper? How many people have the same type of blood? All right, ma'am. So you know what? I I'm glad morons exist in this country that can sit on juries and let killers go. Oh, please. I'm so tired of dopes. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you I don't know anything. You know everything. <laughs> I'm going to sit and discuss the O.J. trial with her. Who do you think did it? Oh, the four hitmen? The four hitmen of the apocalypse. Yeah, and did you notice <laughs> they who... They were galloping through his neighborhood. The, the woman who allegedly saw the four hitmen, they're now saying is a... Well, that's what... Professional uh, witness. Darden said at the time he was um, arguing before Judge Ito about this new witness list. Yeah, this new witness list is filled with, with liars. Wastrels. Yeah, and... and, and uh, Oh, for God's sakes. Who do you think? You know, there's a lot of people now running around saying they think O.J., is, now they have doubt. Well, the point is, if Johnny Cochran can present the case he uh, says he can in opening arguments, it would cast reasonable doubt. Would it? Well, gee, I haven't heard anything yet that casts reasonable doubt. Well, you didn't listen. Yeah. <laughs> i got to tell you something, uh, Jerry. He didn't do it. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess I doubt it. Yeah. Was an man. I don't have a videotape of him doing it. What do you think? What do you think? A man has to be convicted? The only well, way if you can cast doubt on the validity of drug test, I mean the uh, blood test, yeah. because of the way they were um, taken by the police, what is a jury supposed to do? Yeah. Validity of the, of the blood test. What is the jury supposed to do in that case, Howard? There, there, is, no, there is no lack of... Validity. I said you're not answer. You're not no. answering the question. I told I you, O.J. is guilty. I said suppose he can prove that there were a lot of mistakes made. Let him prove it. Let him prove it. And that Nicole had blood from other people on her body. They already explained. They that. already explained that the whole thing is a farce. What he said. <laughs> it's not even. It's not even close to being true. I just said this is the case he says he's going to present. He's got no case. <laughs> I told you he's got I no said, case. I said if he can prove these things, that would be reasonable. Point enough. by point, they've already seen here. Witness. Okay. All right. First of all, now you got another report. Now there's a witness coming forward. Simpson promised that there wouldn't be a Nicole. In a, did you read about this? Mm-hmm. There's a woman who worked for Nicole Simpson. She was like a housekeeper. <laughs> Pain in the ass. Yeah. 
She says uh, she she went she was having a fight with uh, Nicole Simpson. She went to OJ. OJ said, "Listen, she, she ain't gonna be around much longer." Okay, Ooh. I got some inside information. <laughs> I mean, come on. What do you want to know? <laughs> Here, listen to this. You know, Mike McAllary. I'm answering it. If I'm answering it right now, it's been mistake after mistake for the Dream Team defending OJ Simpson. Um, here we go. Cochran told the story about how um, the guys, all, four people rushed in with caps. Right? I didn't ask about the four people. The woman who, t who now claims this story has no credibility. She's a professional liar, not unlike other alleged witnesses who tried to bluff their way onto the case. Unbelievable. And then I hear, I, I'm sitting in a conversation with somebody the other day. They go, yeah, I'm starting to doubt the case. I go, do you, you have a brain in your head? You still haven't answered my question. Yeah, if he can, if he can produce doubt in the case, then I will, I will say OJ's innocent. <laughs> now, let me see him do it. Yes, there's the answer to your question. I Thank heard your question. You. Thank you. There's your answer. <laughs> uh, the defense had maybe one good witness, the maid, Rosa Lopez, who lived next door to OJ Simpson. She was found by another investigator in July. She tells a muddled, often confusing story that even the supermarket, the supermarket tabloids wouldn't buy. <laughs> she tells a story about OJ's Bronco being parked outside a gate. She can't even be sure which gate of O.J.'s house the Bronco was parked outside. She doesn't know what window she was No, in. she doesn't know what window she looked at. She's a sweetheart. <laughs> Thank you, O.J. Mass. <laughs> the only thing that seems to ma matter is that Lopez told this story to Los Angeles detective Mark Furman. And the detective never came back to her house. Oh. Now, now we're trying Mark Furman. Well, yes, they've been doing that all Yeah. Long. Now, we're now, now you think Mark Furman killed somebody. Good luck. Hey, listen, O.J. walks free. What do you think I'm going to... I ain't doing anything. I'm going to live here. What am I going to do, go to another country? What am I going to do? <laughs> what am I going to do? What am I going to do? It will be an interesting trial. Get a couple guards by the door. Okay. Hey. Unbelievable. And I'll tell you something with this Mario Cuomo. Go ahead, Robin. Today, the New York uh, Newsday reports that on opening statements, the defense will suggest Simpson was framed by police. The paper cites unidentified sources who say the defense will claim that officers took a sample of Simpson's blood to his house the day after the murders rather than to a laboratory, giving them an opportunity to create a trail of blood. See? Yeah. <laughs> okay, he's innocent. I told you there was a rationale for this whole thing. What would be their possible motive? Meanwhile, the... <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> I said, what would be their possible motive for doing that? There is none. Of course not. Didn't think that needed an answer. Jackie's laughing because he thinks I tricked you or something. He's got a show. Jackie has a show going on over there. It's unbelievable. I'm not eating you, pal. I see what you eat. I'm not eating you. He's got a wacky Jackie show. They say that OJ was drawing big ratings uh, last week. He was bigger than the soaps that usually run at that time. <laughs> Roughly 25 million to 30 million people tuned in. He drew big ratings. Yes. Right. What? I'm, Are you I'm tricking saying, me again? No, I'm saying he drew... <laughs> I think we're fogged out. <laughs> this show goes on way too oh, long. And, 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 and it makes it so much easier as the live commercials keep coming on. i got to keep reading them. <laughs> anyway, 25 to 30 million people tuned in to see how OJ's opening statements would go. That's a slightly larger audience than they usually get. That was the combined audience from all the coverage, including E! Television and CNN, which are really reaping benefits from showing the O.J. trial. CNN is reaping benefits, and E? Yes. Yes, yes they found that their uh, our audiences are larger during the day and evening, both. A CNBC poll released this weekend showed that the percentage of participants believing Simpson guilty had dropped from 70% to 52% <laughs> after hearing the partial opening statement 
of Johnny Cochran. Oh. <laughs> so it's working. Oh, my God. The country is dumb. That could be happening on the jury. This is a stupid country. <laughs> this is just a dumb country. It's filled with dummies. You know why? Too much immigration. <laughs> it's, it's destroying the gene pool. You know, in other countries, they would have already killed O.J. It would have been over with. The trial would have been done. He would have been hanging from somewhere. The gallows. <laughs> oh, my God. This country's full of morons. Who built all the buildings? That's what I can't figure it out. There must be a couple of must smart people. Must have been people. one guy. Must have been one guy. I think it was uh, LaFrac. <laughs> Sam LaFrac. 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 Frack you. <laughs> must have been just one guy. I miss the OJ mask. What about you? I do, too. Yeah, he's great. Should have been here now. Yeah, now he should be here. <laughs> Stupid. Then he leaves. Gotta get back to his beeper business. <laughs> Let me see what else is going on here. All right. I just think this is kind of interesting. I was watching the OJ trial yesterday. God knows what the hell's going on. I'm already so bored with it. I can't even keep my eyes on it. Thank, thank goodness. I think the opening arguments are over. Yeah. Well, as I predicted yesterday, Robin, as you know. Yes, I wrote it down. I said that the opening arguments would go on uh, immediately, that Judge Ito would uh, carry on for a few seconds and then allow them to go on. Well, he did critically sanction yes. the defense. Told so the uh, jury that uh, they had broken the law. Right. Which damages their credibility greatly. And then I think Johnny Cochran was so rattled, he didn't remember what he said last week. Did you see that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said that, oh, now, first of all, uh, O.J. was severely hampered by his arthritis. Right. And was having trouble. And then he was out swinging a golf club at the time at Nicole night. was supposed to be murdered. In the middle of the night, he was practicing his golf swing yeah. outside. Yeah, in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> but, then, but, but didn't he tell that limo driver he'd been asleep? And why was he in such a rush? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> if he had time to play golf, why did he have to run around the house to get ready? Because he's guilty. <laughs> and why couldn't he answer the door? <laughs> because he's guilty. <laughs> He's guilty of murdering two nice human beings, a lovely woman with two children, and uh, who did nothing wrong except to marry O.J. <laughs> and a guy named Ron Goldman, who had his whole life ahead of him, handsome guy, big muscular guy, who had his whole life in front of him, chicks. A hunk. A hunk. <laughs> a hunk. Good-looking guy stopped off, and I don't care if he was having sex with Nicole or what he was doing. He's he a free woman. She's a free woman. Who's this O.J. controlling the world? This guy wigged out, and he killed, and he deserves to spend the rest of his life in jail. And that's that. I love you too much. I loved you too much. I like I that. I guess that was my problem. Yeah. <laughs> and when he says that, it's so funny because they should flash the pictures of her with beaten and bruised. Face. Yeah, with a big battered face. I loved you too much. I would have, I would have stopped a bullet for you. Oh yeah! It looks like you stopped one with a face. Looks like you would have put a bullet in her. I saw one guy on TV. Oh, I know who it was. The guy who was going to play OJ on Fox Television. Hosea Williams, I think. Whatever his name is, the guy should be ashamed of himself. He goes, "Boy, I, I watched the the uh, trial and I feel sorry for OJ. I feel sorry for him." I don't know why. I mean, O.J., the golf alibi is just a wonder. That's the best. <laughs> I need to kill. I need to putt. I'm so conflicted. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I go from here? Johnny, Johnny. Oh, yes? Hit me, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That must be some meeting when they all get together. Johnny. So, O.J., would you say that you were playing golf that night? I uh, don't know what the hell I did. I, no, no, no. But don't you think you were playing golf? I think I was playing. But what about my hand? Yeah, don't you, did you cut your hand on a... You might have cut it on the golf. Uh... All that arthritis draining out on the floor. Right. right. No, 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 no. O.J., listen to me. Mm -hmm. I said, couldn't it be that you cut your hand on the golf club? Johnny, what are you doing? Why, are you listening, O.J.? I'm, I'm listening to you. All right, listen to me. Uh, I'm going to say, yeah. Johnny, what do you do when you feel like killing your wife? Well, what, I do you, what do you do? I mean, now you act on it like... <laughs> yeah. I must be some meeting. All right. It's really quite interesting that uh, O.J. was severely... He couldn't hold cards in right. the middle of the afternoon. Couldn't hold it, but he was playing golf. <laughs> and he was playing golf at night. It's really getting... It's getting wild. Now, you know what? I still... I talk to people as recently as yesterday who say... Oh, my opinion's starting to change on the OJ case. I said, you're kidding me. You're that stupid, huh? I mean, people can tell you anything. 
And you would listen. Another thing. O.J. has a house full of phones. Right. He's bleeding, and he has to run to his car to get a phone. Right. Wonder That's why. where all the blood came from. Oh, is that the explanation? <laughs> oh, my God. Why don't you say that? Why don't you say that from the beginning? You shouldn't be in jail. Fair. Why would you need your cellular phone in your house? Uh, <laughs> it just seems like the defense tried to raise as much doubt with the public before yeah. they actually had to go in and be accountable to someone. Yes. And now it's all retarded. That's a mess. And, and by Johnny Cochran actually going in there and uh, doing what he did and having the judge chastise him. Has totally blown all credibility. He should be fired immediately. Seven hundred an hour, and he still collects no matter what he does. These lawyers got the how best racket. You know no matter you... how they behave, they will collect their seven hundred an hour. I'll Johnny, let me hold what... on. Johnny, let me hold on to Exhibit A. I want to stab you. And that's what I was going to say. The best <laughs> defense that OJ's getting is the fact that he's sitting there, and those lawyers are screwing up like that, and he yeah. hasn't blown up. He should be attacking them. And every day he keeps shrinking in size. OJ, he's like he's almost disappearing. He's a shell of his little yeah. self. He looks like a marionette after you let the strings down. Yeah, he's just like hunched down. His skull is starting to cave in. His eyes are starting to like wither. And there's no more smiling. He no. is the artist formerly known as OJ. He is <laughs> the football star and wife beater formerly known as OJ. Johnny, I don't trust that Lee. I don't. I, I don't think he beats his wife, do he? <laughs> yeah. Now it turns out everybody on the defense beats their wife almost. What they say today in the paper, Kardashian? Kardashian, he has a problem. Well, they didn't say he beat her physically, that it was it was uh, mental abuse. Right. But every guy puts his wife through that. Yeah, it was that I can't blame him for that. in his hair, they got him all set up. My wife's queen of mental abuse. <laughs> but she abuses back. No. <laughs> Moving on now to O.J. <laughs> <laughs> so guilty now, it's ridiculous. What we can look forward to today is ten minutes of... Um, a reopening statement by the prosecution, and then I suppose prosecutors will be calling their first witnesses. Oh, yeah? If there are no further delays, we should be able to actually get on with the witness portion of this trial. In the opening, the reopening of the prosecution's opening statements, they will address the things that Johnny Cochran, the defense attorney, brought up in his opening statements that were not admissible under the law. Yesterday, uh, Johnny Cochran decided he could finally get on with closing off his opening statements. And here's how he wrapped up. Let me see if I can... Number four. ...point you in the right direction. I think that should be it. Hmm. Huh. If you follow the evidence, if you believe Mr. Simpson could not have done this, but this, this timeline is such that... There's no time for him to do it. No indication that he could have done this. That the Bronco was still there. Objection. Objection. And the character evidence would mean absolutely nothing. Objection. Because how could you then predict that someone who gets into a fight with his wife in 1989 will then kill her in 1994? Yeah, sure. That's logical. So guilty, O.J. <laughs> but some people bought into that whole Johnny Cochran rap. I couldn't believe it. Some people actually came up to me and said, oh, yeah, now I... I yeah, well, that was the first day he sort of, like, again, lost everybody yesterday when he started saying that the blood could have come from anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and that O.J. was playing golf at the time his wife was, murdered. was being killed. In his, in his in backyard, the in the dark. But he, but O.J. himself said he was asleep when the limo driver pounded on his door. Yeah, he was supposed to be asleep at one minute. He was also not supposed to be able to shuffle cars. His hands hurt so bad. Right. But now he's awake playing golf. Sleep golf. Under the moonlight. <laughs> While all this stuff is going on. That's pretty cool. Johnny Cochran was uh, met by reporters outside of the courtroom mm. and had this to say about finishing, completing his opening statement. I'm pleased to have that part over with. Objection. It took a long time. Uh, I, I hope that the message was, was clear that we have a, an innocent man wrongfully accused. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it was that clear, Johnny. You better go back. Yeah. It's and clear we have an innocent man who was wrongly accused. <laughs> Here's Marsha Clark. She was, she uh, presented the argument to Judge Ito that won them the opportunity to reopen their opening statement for 10 minutes a day. Here's a little bit of her fiery argument. This is very unfair. The defense was required to show all their exhibits to us on Friday, and we did for them. We sprung nothing. Anybody beat her up? Yeah. That... Drink too much coffee, honey? <laughs> on them. They came marching in Monday with Ooh. twice as many exhibits as we were shown on Friday. Hmm. We were expected to absorb everything in a nanosecond. I wonder her eyes are popping out of her head. 
In a nanosecond, you're up. Nanosecond. Nano, nano. They come up with... Objection. I'm objecting to myself. <laughs> Objection to each and every item. And that's very unfair. The people were put at a great disadvantage at having to absorb a great deal. I object, I object, I object. What do you object to? Everything. <laughs> a very rapid amount of time and come up with an objection as to each and every item. I, you know, I don't think it should be all that surprising that I couldn't remember seeing one of about 50 new exhibits that was thrown at me Monday morning before our opening statements were to begin. She's pissed. And that alone should cause the court to, to realize that the people were put... I think O.J. sitting there going, man, Ooh. now that pissed. Boy, she feisty. I think that I am in good shape. Because they must be reacting to a good defense. Yeah. Sounds like somebody at a party in the 70s. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First time on coke, honey? That's what it sounds like. I mean, not that I'm saying she's on coke, but... Just sounds saying it sounds like. Sounds like somebody on coke. <laughs> the disadvantage with respect to being able to make intelligent objections to all of the wealth of new information that was unjustifiably thrown at us at the 11th hour. Objection. Doing a few of those black beauties, honey? Hey, if you, are, you sound like you're flying out. <laughs> object, object. I should beat her. Maybe she mellow out. <laughs> no wonder I had a killer. <laughs> that's, how, that's how Nicole used to talk to me. Well, anyway, the uh, point is that the prosecution actually, uh, you know, got Georgie to all confused. I was watching the lady on CNN, the one who actually offers commentary. She's some lawyer. That Van Susteren woman? Yeah, Miss Van Susteren. <laughs> she sounds like a real ball breaker. <laughs> yeah, I don't she goes, to see her in court. She goes, well, ha, 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 Judge Ito's lost control of the court. <laughs> oh, my. It's like, whoa, really? Gee, I thought he was just like listening to some people argue. Any other judge would ignore all of this and just go on with the case. Well, I said that last week. It's all BS. Yeah. <laughs> He's enjoying himself. Well, whatever. <laughs> Well, today, as I said, they will be entertaining their first witnesses. That should be fun to see. Also, there's tons of speculation about all the people who surround O.J. Today in the newspaper, they say that Robin, Robert Kardashian, who is one of O.J. Simpson's best friends, also was accused of spousal abuse during his first marriage. Good. A whole bunch of guys have been accused of spousal abuse. <laughs> all the people around O.J. Yeah, all the people around O.J. are into You can't blame the guy. <laughs> like a club, I was going to say. We hate girls club. <laughs> uh, Kardashian's uh, ex-wife is actually now the wife of Bruce Jenner. Wow. And they say that he was very upset about the affair she was having with Jenner at the time of their marriage. Yeah. They also say there are a lot of similarities between that marriage and the marriage of O.J. and Nicole Simpson. Kardashian was 30 years old when he first started dating the 17-year-old Chris. Wow. Hubba hubba. Yeah. Hey now. And then, of course, carted her off, married her, and lavished her with tons of gifts. But she claimed that he refused to allow her to even write a check, so she yeah. had no financial control. Would you let a 17-year-old write a check? Hey, you're going to marry him? Give I him wouldn't. I'm not giving no 17-year-old access to my checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. What after, a bad husband. A few months after Kardashian started dating his 17-year-old, that a 28-year-old O.J. found himself a 17-year-old. <laughs> You know. They uh, partook of that fast life in the or life in the fast lane out there in uh, Beverly Hills, mm. going to the parties, and they were quite a foursome. These two older guys with their young wives. Super. <laughs> and then when uh, Kardashian yeah. lost her to Bruce Jenner, he got very upset. And in court papers, she uh, Chris uh, alleged that he would call her whore and slut and yeah. bitch every time they talked on the phone. You should have cut her head off. <laughs> <laughs> no actual physical abuse was alleged, but she said that lots of emotional and verbal abuse was leveled against her. <laughs> so anyway, Johnny Cochran is still denying the reports yesterday that he physically abused his first wife. Right. And his current wife says she doesn't think it's possible. Well. So there. That's OJ's cool. OJ's movie will be on Fox tonight. If you haven't had enough of OJ, the the Fox people have put together a TV movie. Yeah, it seems like a real realistic movie. Did you see some of the promotion for it? No. Some of the coming attractions. To sanitize OJ's story. <laughs> well, OJ can't talk like he really would. It's television. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Like he's mad at his wife. He's like, "Come on, baby." <laughs> you know. <laughs> No F word, no nothing. Yeah, he's not grabbing at her crotch and dragging her across the Yeah, right. Her. That's my <laughs> vagina. <laughs> That's where my babies come from. Yeah, I, I would say that one's going to be pretty lame. 
But you can tune into that if you want. Although the girl who plays Nicole looks pretty hot. They put her in a thong on there. Nothing like watching beautiful women get beat up. <laughs> what, a, what a great night of entertainment. It's like American Gladiators. If they'd only do it right. Put yeah. up a ring, have bells. Well, they say this is one that treats O.J. fairly and Nicole fairly. And I go, well, who wants to see that? Take a point of view. Either take O.J.'s or take Nicole's. Then I'm there. Show me a... In our politically correct society, especially Hollywood, we yeah. never have a point of view. Show me the Ike and Tina Turner story. Now, that's a good one. <laughs> Watch a guy hit, beating his wife with a shoe on her legs so oh, she won't bruise. Oh, not a shoe. Yeah. I'm going to beat you with my shoe <laughs> on your legs. I'm going to take off this western boot. And cheat it <laughs> with some bad western boot. That's the way it's done. <laughs> Show me a point of view. Make I'm somebody a villain. Drag you by your hair into the They're going to show you a story where no one is the villain, where both of them are at fault. Good. I'd like to see them pulled out off. Because <laughs> I saw the guy who played OJ. He goes, after I did this story, I felt a lot of compassion for OJ. And I'm like, well, then there's something wrong with the story. I should go away hating OJ. He says OJ probably wouldn't like it, but he will see the dignity with which I played him. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I hope OJ cuts your head off. <laughs> hope OJ gets a hold of you. Yeah. Who played Cato? So anyway, that's... Christian uh, Slater. Oh. That's the latest on O.J. Chevy Chase. No word from him as to what happened the other night when he was arrested on the charge of drinking while under the influence. O.J. Simpson trial yesterday. Marsha Clark got to reopen for 10 minutes, and it's just like you said. It's whoever talked last. Right. Because today, she won. Right. <laughs> when Johnny Cochran was talking, he won. Right. Now, she has solved the whole case, and we might as well convict O.J. and throw away the key. Right. So yesterday, after she reopened for 10 minutes, the uh, experts are saying that she now addressed all the new information that Johnny Cochran brought in with his uh, opening statements and showed the witness, uh, the jury that you can't necessarily believe everything Johnny Cochran says. She exposed the prime witness, this woman, they say they're going to call, who said she saw four men in ski caps in the neighborhood that evening. They now have a, a friend of hers quoted as saying that um, this woman was never even in the neighborhood that night and that she's just a... O.J. Simpson case groupie and she would do absolutely anything to become a part of it. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I mean, when, when that guy Shapiro put that number up that basically said, hey, call us if you have anything going on. Yeah. I'm sure they got calls from tons of people like that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'd like some money. It's almost like saying, hey, call me and, you know. I'll become OJ's best friend. Yeah, of course there's kooks out there who are going to do that. I mean, I don't know. Maybe this woman's legitimate, but it sure doesn't sound it. Well, according to their investigation, she is not legitimate at all. Yeah. Then we saw the um, prosecution introduce its first witnesses in the first part of the case. Obviously, they are trying to rip apart the image of base, uh, you know, basically the TV OJ. Right. One we've all come to know and love in Hertz commercials and as a sports commentator and uh, sometimes would-be actor. By addressing the history of... Uh, wife abuse and uh, domestic disputes that uh, characterized the marriage between he and Nicole Simpson. They called the woman who took the 911 call in 1989 when O.J. Simpson was actually brought into court and accused of wife beating. You know, it's amazing that this guy didn't end up in more serious trouble before this. I mean, the fact that some judge let him go with some community service when he was in court is amazing to me. Mm -hmm. That's where the National Organization for Women ought to be, not worrying about toilet bowls. Yeah, worrying about judges giving light sentences to guys who beat women. Yeah. So anyway, here is the uh, 911 operator who took the call on that night. Her name is Sharon Gilbert. I heard a female screaming, and then I heard... What I thought was a slap, I went back and updated it as a female being beaten at the location to give the responding officer an indication of what was going on. Hmm. 
It was very funny to watch this whole thing yesterday. You didn't see it. I saw some of it, yeah. When Johnny Cochran was ca- cross-examining her, yeah. he got her to admit that she didn't know exactly who was attacking who. <laughs> you know, that she couldn't swear that it was O.J. Simpson who yeah. was attacking Nicole and he thinks at he, that point. Yeah, he thinks he revealed something. <laughs> Because a 911 operator can't tell over the phone who is attacking who. And what, in O.J.'s house. Yeah, so what was the, what's the conclusion? It wasn't O.J.? I said, isn't that ridiculous? Because right after that, they're going to call the officers who responded to the call. And say it was O.J. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, this case is such a joke. <laughs> it is such a farce. And it you know what? It's a total waste of time. The only reason that we pay it attention is not because O.J.'s a celebrity. Because if... I'll tell you why we pay attention to this. Because juries have become so wacky, uh, so uh, motivated by race or motivated by God knows what, they come up with wacky decisions, a la, you know, coffee cups spilling in someone's lap while a moving car is going and they, and they award $20 million, $2 million. I think that what you're uh, pointing out here is very valid, except that it's not a recent occurrence. Uh, let me just say that the reason that we as a society, love this, is because this guy can actually become innocent mm-hmm. in the eyes of a jury. He could beat this case. Yeah. You wouldn't be interested if you know, look, the guy did it, he's going to go to jail. Right, if you knew the conclusion was he's guilty and yeah. they're going to find him guilty and he's going to jail, you wouldn't be interested. What makes it a great story is everyone in the country knows he's guilty. <laughs> everyone. There isn't a person on the planet that doesn't know it. But he could get off. But he'll get off. It's I'm like telling a, you. It's like a football game. Sunday, I sat in my own home. A friend of mine came over and said to me, this is a very intelligent woman, very intelligent, said to me, now I am not sure if O.J. is guilty or innocent. <laughs> now, that's what makes this a great TV show. You know what? You're beating on that desk over there like they're beating on that lectern. I know. In I'm like court case. I'm like a nut. <laughs> It always pa- kills me when they start hitting it. I'm it pounding on this desk. Registers on the microphone. I'm pounding on this desk like I'm pounding on one of those girls' asses from this morning. <laughs> oh, those were some asses. Uh, just keep your mind on the news. All right, go ahead. What else happened? <laughs> so anyway, right after, as I said, this woman got off the stand, they called the officers who responded to uh, the call, the 911 call that night, going to the Rockingham residence. Rockingham. Okay. I need a residence with a name. <laughs> that's the problem with this show. I get no respect. If I had a residence with a name, all oh, you guys would respect me. I don't me. think that's the name of his residence. That's the name of the street it's on. But oh, I thought it was called it Rockingham. Rockingham residence. Wow. And then uh, Nicole lived at the Bundy residence. <laughs> the Bundy residence. <laughs> the Sockingham <laughs> residence. <laughs> stupid land. <laughs> Let's name it Stupid Land. First, everything stupid went on. Chipping golf at 10 o'clock at night. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, here is John Edwards, the officer who right. responded to the call. I want you to play number four first. Here's what he saw when he got to the Rockingham residence. She was wet. Mm-hmm. She was... I wish I could see my wife wet. <laughs> Stop it. This is She's Nicole been dry for the Simpson, list. Simpson we're talking about, who has now been chased out of her house. Even with the vibrator, she's dry. <laughs> it's like sandpaper, I tell you. It was, uh, she was shivering. She was cold. Mm. I could, I could uh, feel her, her bones, and she was real uh, cold. Cold. I never get to feel anybody's bones. <laughs> Being a cop is cool. And... Uh, you don't think Bill Kennison got her, do you? I don't she know. She was beat up. Beat up? Yeah, and then they show the pictures in the courtroom of Nicole's uh, swollen forehead yeah. and her split lip. I'd love to produce a video where it's like O.J. going, I loved her so much I would have even taken a bullet for her, you know, from his new book, mm-hmm. his new best-selling book that yes, some imbeciles are buying. Yes, I was going to say that it, they can't keep it on the shelf. What retard would buy that book? Well, since it's selling so well, I might get <laughs> Oh, you're not getting that. I'll turn you over my knee. You won't even know what hit you. Don't you buy that. I'm not buying that. Somebody could give it to me. <laughs> well, we have a copy. I mean, someone gave it to us, but you're not even allowed to read it. I'm sorry. Well, you're a reporter. You can read it. I can't read it. But, you know, the point is that who cares what he... It's a pack of lies, that book. 
They should show. Here's the video. I would say, "Oh, baby, I loved her so much. Everyone knew I would take a bullet for her." And then you show pictures of her face, all bloody and mm. pounded. That's some guy who would have taken a bullet for a girl. In that uh, movie last night on Fox, they reenacted the uh, scene in the Bronco. Yeah. And O.J. was supposed to be putting the gun up under his chin, up under his, uh, yeah, his chin. Hmm. And he kept saying to A.C., I want to go be with Nicole. I yeah. want to go be with Nicole. Yeah, sure. If you did, you could have slashed your own throat If you're innocent, night. what do you want to go be with Nicole for? You dope. You were with Nicole and you beat her every day. And that book. Would I buy that book? Absolutely not. You should be ashamed of yourself if you buy that book. You know what guys are doing? I know a guy buys the book. He hits his wife over the head with the book. <laughs> I see that the guy... He beats his wife with the book. One of the uh, some guy found out yeah. that they were selling all the contents of the room in Chicago that O.J. stayed in Absolutely. the night of the murder. He bought all the contents and now he's selling it yeah. at auction, expecting to make a bundle of money. Wouldn't we give you two cents for any of that garbage? People shouldn't buy things like that. That's right. That's right. Then um, that's right. Officer Edwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was cross examined. By Johnny Cochran, the ace attorney. Cochran. <laughs> What's that, Fred? Oh, I didn't realize. Fred bought the hand towels from the Chicago Hotel. Oh, no. Let me see those. Hold those up to the camera so people can see them at home. Very nice. All right. But here is Johnny Cochran doing a little bit of his magic, his voodoo. Voodoo, that's what it is. Voodoo. <laughs> he looks like a witch doctor, that guy. <laughs> He's seen that episode of Superman where Jimmy Olsen gets put in those chains. You know, paper chains. Well, they would forget, and one of the guys running through to us, the jungle would wear glasses. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the old Tarzan movie. This conversation at West Los Angeles Station, it's your testimony that Mr. Cole Brown Simpson told you that this argument was over Mr. Simpson having sex with one of the housekeepers? No, I didn't say that. Who'd you say you had sex with? I didn't say he had sex with anybody. I said that she told me that he had sex with, I believe it was a, uh, she described it as a personal secretary. It was two women that were living in the house, and he had sex with one of them mm. prior to this incident. What a life. Yeah. OJ came running out in his bath towel screaming, I got two women in my bed. I don't want her anymore. That one anymore. Wow, what a life. Yeah, but can you imagine for you have sex with one woman, then you come home, beat your wife? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're so busy. You know what it is? Here's a guy who basically was retired at a young age. So, I mean, his, his, on his hands. Yeah, I mean, his whole day was like, all right, you get in bed, I'm having sex with you. You get confused. Then you go home, beat his wife, then you have sex with a different woman. Can you imagine his day? <laughs> all, all around women. Beat one, have sex with one, have sex with another one, beat another one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sins, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did I beat last or have sex last? Oh, my God. He would forget. Thank God for women. Give him something to do. <laughs> what would O.J. have been doing if there weren't women? Me, I go home. Guess what I'm beating? <laughs> Myself. <laughs> yeah. Then there was an officer, Mike Farrell, who right. was also involved in the case. He took the stand next. He you ready? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Explained to me that after he and Nicole returned home after a uh, New Year's Eve party, that uh, they were ready to, they were, they're in their bedroom and a uh, verbal dispute broke out between them. And uh, that the dispute got out of hand and it became physical. He told me that um, it turned into a mutual type wrestling match. Jeez, she's still right, a chance. Yeah. <laughs> you weigh 215 yeah. pounds and are over six feet. Yeah, but he's so arthritic he can't move. <laughs> he figured, I can uh, I can take her. Let me see. This guy's wrestling women. Unbelievable. And then they, uh, Mike Farrell continued. They asked him, well, you know, was there any kind of physical change in O.J.? What was, what was going on there? His facial demeanor, his uh, voice, and he had uh, veins were popping out right here on the on the upper part of his head, along the side of his head, the veins, the veins were pulsating and, and popping out. And I, I had never seen that before on television or anything. Dude, every time they'd seen OJ on the on the football games, his veins were never popping out of his head. They were pulsating. I said, it sounds like one of those transformation werewolf movies, you know, when the yeah. moon comes out, those veins start to pop. He's amazing. <laughs> O.J. goes through a transformation. But look what this guy gets worked up. He's like the most simple of men. You know, he's like big veins popping out of his head, yelling at women. Just leave. Wrestling. Yeah. Socking. Yeah, I mean, unbelievable.
What a life. And why would it be funny? He just had sex. Not only did he have sex, he played a round of golf in the morning. What else did he do? He played golf, he had sex, and then he beat women. That was his like, life. I think he'd be mellow. Yeah. Isn't like what you say, you you get like very calm. I'd be so happy. <laughs> Didn't work with OJ. If my day consisted of beating women, having sex with women, and playing golf. And hanging out at the clubhouse. It's more than enough for me. Playing gin rummy or whatever yeah. he played. Cool. I love to play gin rummy with guys. <laughs> That's like the perfect life for me. Beat women and have sex and then sit around and talk about it. Right. <laughs> Where's the downside? And he gets away with it. Even when the cops see that he beats her, so the cops just like, yeah, okay. They have a nice, reasonable conversation with him. Right, that's all. Oh, Jay, what happened? Yeah. Well, things got out of hand. We wrestled. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you mean? A cop shows up my door right away. They, pay, they pull me away. <laughs> they got a, a yeah. in your back and yeah. you're on the ground. Whatever I do, they pull me in. <laughs> Some guys have all the luck. Uh, He'll get off on this thing, too. After he killed two people, you'll see. It's amazing. Who knows? Well, today, uh, I think we'll see more. Meanwhile, in the Colin Ferguson trial. Anybody watch the OJ trial yesterday? I did. did you? Raise your hand if you did, please. <laughs> <laughs> you watched it, right? Did yeah. you see that guy? Ron Ship. Ron Ship. This guy. So, so check this guy out. He's about. Uh, he was 16 years old when he met OJ. Yeah. And like OJ, you know, started hanging out with him or something because OJ evidently had a fixation for 16 year olds. <laughs> So, the guy becomes a cop, and ironically, becomes a cop trained in wife battering, spousal abuse, and how to handle situations. Mm -hmm. So every time O.J. beats up Nicole, you know, punches her around a little bit and punches her in the face and knocks her out, when Nicole calls the cops, O.J.'s good friend Ron Ship comes over. Yeah. And Ron Ship, this is the testimony I heard yesterday. And Ron Ship would come over and calm OJ down, of course, because OJ needed calming. Well, he would hold OJ. OJ's yeah. the batterer. He'd hold OJ in his arms. And Ron, the the groupie that he is, the police groupie or star groupie, he uh, would cuddle uh, with OJ and <laughs> uh, make sure he was okay. Make sure OJ was okay, and of course, not report any of these things. <laughs> So I'm listening to this testimony, and I said, well, I guess they're going to take Ron and lock him up now, <laughs> making him accessory to uh, to uh, spousal abuse. But instead, no, he walked off the stand and went home. They said, please come back tomorrow morning. Yeah. <laughs> and sure enough, I opened up the paper today, and uh, Andrea Pizer's column said the same exact thing. Yeah. I'm sitting there saying, well, wait a second. You mean the guy, every time Nicole Simpson called, this, you know, called the cops, this guy comes over, and he's an expert in spousal abuse. He sees that O.J. is a typically um, uh, vicious, vicious abuser. abuser, has all the symptoms of an abuser, and basically says, hey, I'll try and work things out for you. Mm -hmm. Don't and he worry doesn't... about a thing, O.J., I'm here. <laughs> yeah, your worry. Ron is here. Ron, your ship <laughs> has come in. Your S-C-H-I-P-P -P has come in. Ah. Your ship is here. Yeah, your ship is here. Ron Shep with you. <laughs> so I said, well, that's an interesting uh, twist. Yeah. And they're wondering if this guy is really O.J.'s friend. Mm. That's what they're trying to impugn his testimony yeah, on. No, he is a real friend. He is a better friend than anybody's got on this side of the country. He's the kind of ship head you'd want uh, <laughs> working with you on you if you beat up your yeah, wife. Yeah, if you're going to do that kind of thing. Yeah. Jeez. And he says uh, the reason he testified this Ron Shep is because he didn't want the you know he didn't want the nightmare of of oh, not the coming forward. Blood of Nicole on, on him. his hands. He's got plenty of blood on his yeah. hands. Not that he was the abuser, but he certainly. Uh, well, um, he facilitated. Have, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you know, you're a cop. You should just take O.J. Haul his ass down to the station house. At least, at least give him a scare. No, no, no. Then you don't get to use his tennis court oh. or his jacuzzi. Oh, you don't? And come over to the house with a bunch of friends. Do they take away your rights to the <laughs> club, OJ? Your jacuzzi rights go right yeah. out the window. So that's the Ron Ship story. Yeah. Boy, when these these uh, when this trial really uh, takes off, man, you really start to see how sick everybody is. Well, that's what I said. It's like the sleazy bunch of characters mm -hmm. you will see drag their little snaily butts through this court.
Yeah. You'll feel dirty afterwards. Hey, by the way, I want <laughs> So anyway, now, back to OJ. But I thought I'd tell you that first. O.J. Simpson was in court yesterday, and uh, a guy who described himself as a good friend, Ron Shipp, a former police officer, took the stand. Do you know why Carl Douglas on the defense team was handling the questioning, the uh, cross-examination of Ron Shipp as opposed to uh, crack lawyer Johnny Cochran? Because Johnny Cochran's Ron Shipp's cousin. That's right. They're distant relatives. Right. So I suppose it would have been considered a conflict of interest for uh, Cochran. I have a really racist friend calls me up and he goes, look how lazy and shiftless this Cochran is. 700 an hour and he can't get his ass up to cross-examine this guy. I said, hey, I'll have you know something, my You friend. didn't have any friends call no. oh, you <laughs> tell you that. Oh, I started getting mad for OJ. I said, 700 an hour, let the guy get up there and cross-examine the guy. All right, so I didn't have a friend. Don't put it off on anybody. I don't really have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> if I did, he would have called. Your phone is constantly ringing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to push it off. I yelled at the guy for an hour. Oh, man. Racist before you bastard. Heard, huh? Yeah. I'm sick of these racists. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, Johnny Cochran, uh, I guess, Johnny. couldn't do it. So it was... Uh, imagine Ship is your Douglas. Ship is your, your cousin. Imagine <laughs> imagine Johnny's enemies when they get up on the stand. <laughs> People who aren't related. That guy was really damaging. But what was, Well, the it, question is, why wouldn't you come to your uh, cousin there and tell him what you knew? That That's kind of strange. Well, all I know is that guy, Ship should be ashamed of himself. And I think that he, this is testimony that he gave, and he's not too proud of himself in life. And the reason he's feeling guilty is he's a, a former police officer. He knew O.J. Simpson and Nicole. And he knew the problems they were having. knew the problems they were having. He was trained in this area and basically didn't report a lot of the incidents that went on. He had known O.J. since his teenage years. I guess he became or, you know, just fell into that awestruck state. Mm -hmm. Early in life, because O.J. was playing football and became a big star. So now, in one last desperate attempt to ease his conscience, he came forward and sat down on that stand and said, "Look." It's interesting to me that a lot of the commentators sat there and they were trying. Everybody's trying to analyze what the jury will think of every word that's said in the courtroom. Yeah. And a lot of people were saying, "Well, he did admit to lying." And holding back evidence, I said, you know, there's no way to impeach this guy's no. credibility. No, you cannot. He could have come up with a much better story if he was lying. Yeah. No, he's telling the truth. And What he says is that he was in O.J.'s home for a week after the murder of Nicole Simpson. And on the night after Nicole was killed, he and O.J. had a conversation about lie detector tests. And O.J. at that time admitted to him that he had dreamt about killing Nicole. Yeah. So sure. He went away for a while, didn't tell anybody about this conversation, and finally admitted it to a person who was writing a book to get it off his chest. Right. And people say that's not understandable. This is a guy who was in awe of O.J. Simpson, loved hanging around him. Of course he has these kind of questions in his mind. What should I do? He didn't know how to report O.J. when he was battering his wife. It's a classic case of closing the barn door after the horse gets out. Now he's like trying to make amends because, you know, he should, re he should be up on charges himself, aiding and abetting O.J., mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. But the question people are having is, well, why didn't he tell the police? Why didn't he tell the prosecutors? <laughs> it's not the kind of thing why you want to talk about. Why didn't he tell the defense attorneys? Because the guy really was pained. He didn't want to squeal on O.J., not only that, he didn't tell about any of the abuse. He no. didn't report O.J. when he attacked his wife. It's the guy who keeps quiet. He didn't do anything but cover up for O.J., take care of O.J. Right. This has been his pattern for 26 years. This is the first time he's ever broken a confidence. And in return, he got to hang out at O.J.'s house. Yeah. But people can't understand that all of a sudden. This is the guy's pattern for years. He's never told on O.J. Yeah. So, here's some of the testimony of Ron Ship in the courtroom yesterday. All right, we'll start Just with... go in order. It doesn't really matter. We can... His Ron Ship. His Ron Ship. His Ron Ship. <laughs> he kind of jokingly just said, you know, 
to be on a ship. That's what he called me, ship. He says, I've, I've had some dreams of killing her. <laughs> that is not funny, Jackie. Now, the and then more... there's cross-examination between uh, Carl Douglas, the attorney, for hammering away at the testimony of Ron Ship, trying to break him, essentially. I'm going to break you. There was never an occasion when O.J. and Ron Ship were together alone. No? <laughs> you didn't say it, Ron. Oh, you got to... You got you got a, you're all over the place on this one. Hold I on. said there's test they, you know there's some that are labeled with okay. the two of them. Let me see. Didn't I ask you during that conversation to tell me the worst things that you knew about O.J. Simpson? Yes, you did. And wouldn't you agree that this statement about this supposed dream is a pretty bad thing about Mr. Simpson? Yes, it is. So did you lie when you didn't tell me about that dream? I sure did. See, yeah. he's not pulling any punches. Right. Yes, I did. I did. I, I wanted to protect O.J. I did. This guy was a very good witness, very Excellent credible. Witness. And you know what? He didn't say anything we didn't know already. It, what he said was, yeah, O.J. beat his wife. No, but they're, they're, you know what the big deal was? The fact that O.J. had said he dreamt about it. Yeah, and what, why that's a big fact is... That guys who think that they have to take lie detector tests because they wanted O.J. to take one, he, they come up with wacky things. He says, well, I dreamt about uh, killing... Uh, yeah, I don't know about taking that lie detector test because I did dream about it. Yeah, I had a dream, kind of. You know, that's what... That, the guys who administer lie detector tests for a living say, lots of times, people who have committed murder and stuff, they don't want to... They take the lie detector test and before they take it, you know, I once dreamt about this. Will that make a difference? Right, yeah. But the... What? People who are come up with the same scam and they think they're the first one. Yeah, right, yeah. But the people who are analyzing the case in the papers and on TV, they ran to something called dream experts. <laughs> yeah, dream experts. <laughs> and ask them what this meant. And the dream experts say, well, you know, just because somebody dreams something doesn't mean they do it. It doesn't yeah. make them guilty. Dream experts. No, but when you ask them to take a lie detector test and they start saying, well, I once dreamt about yeah. stuff. We don't know whether O.J. dreamt anything. Right. So anyway, let's go on with the cross-examination between Carl Douglas and Ron Ship. You're not really this man's friend, are you, sir? Well, I, okay. To, all right. If you want me to really explain it, I guess you can say I was like everybody else, one of his servants. I did police stuff for him all the time. I ran license plates. That's what I was. Okay, I mean, I, like I said, I love the guy. Did you see O.J. during this part of the case? Now, they've been telling O.J. to sit still right. and be quiet. Right, right. And Just to make goofy sudden, faces. Yeah. O.J. started that wild gesticulating. Yeah, right. And he goes like this. I can do it. Here's yeah. the O.J. gesticulation. Where he goes... It's like, uh, what I just heard was unbelievable. He was like... Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's like, what? It's like... Me? <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> what you mean? What you, what you, what you making like, this up? Hops out of his chair. Yeah, like, like all this is... This is completely not, but look at this life O.J. had. Look who, he, look who his pals were and stuff. Well, he had two sets. I think he had two sets of friends. Yeah, like people who could do stuff for you. The people he would play golf with. Right. The people he would play tennis with and mm -hmm. go out with, and then the people who did things for him. Right. And Ron Ship happened to fall into the category of people who did things for him. Right. What else have you got over there? Mm, another cross examination. All right, let me hear that. Isn't it true, sir, that you mentioned to Mr. Simpson that the police had found a glove on his property? I had no idea what they found in that house. Nothing. Didn't you take Mr. Simpson out to behind the the garage to show him the area where the glove was supposedly found? This is sad, O.J., but no. This is really sad. Yeah, I'm going to strike that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are dis to disregard... Yeah, sure. Ship's direct I love when they say that. Senate. Yeah, sure, we can wipe that out. This is sad, O.J. So, so explain something to me. Like, when he said that, he was just saying, hey, O.J., what are you making some stuff up here? Yeah, yeah, is this what you're doing to try to cover your track? This is sad, O.J. Because the way O.J. has it, that what they are going to try to prove in court today, uh, play that one card by Carl Douglas now, because they talked to him outside the courtroom. They were questioning him as to whether he thought uh, the Mr. Ship's testimony was very damaging to O.J. Simpson. And uh, he responded that they, they plan to come back in the day and, and really fire the heavy guns on this guy.
There was never an occasion when O.J. and Ron Ship were together alone for there even to have been any such conversation. So they're going to try to prove that this thing never, ever occurred. Mm -hmm. And that uh, they're also going to try to tear apart this man, uh, his personal character. They're going to tell you why he was fired from the police force today. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to imply that he had a terrible drinking problem. And a number of other things. So when they said to him yesterday... I'd say there's a guy who really wouldn't want to testify unless his conscience was bothering him. Yeah. Because who would want to have all this brought out in front well, of people? Well, that's my point exactly. This is no picnic. Right. To go through all of this, just to say I heard o about O.J.'s dream. Yeah. This man is, is really going to be torn apart. Right. He's going to look bad. Stand. So this is not an easy thing to go through. Yeah. But they were claiming that he had a... Co an acting career. Who doesn't in L.A.? <laughs> Is there another call, Douglas, over there? Yeah. Yeah, play that one. Everyone will hear and will learn how much faith he had placed in his acting career and how disappointed he was that O.J. Simpson was not as helpful as he had hoped to further that career. <laughs> so that's their contention, that he is doing this because he's angry at O.J. for not giving him some roles in his movies. I don't, I don't think O.J. had much of an acting career. How can yeah. he help this guy? Can you imagine going to O.J. Simpson saying, can you help me with my acting career? <laughs> <laughs> hey, why don't you watch the uh, O.J. Film Festival and <laughs> tell me if you think he's got a career. What's he going to put him in? Yeah. Oh, what, do you want to be in Police Academy? I'm barely in that. They push me around in a wheelchair. Yeah, they make me get under a bus. Yeah. So anyway, Ron Ship back on the stand. Today, for more cross-examination, they expect it'll take a major part of the day. The uh, legal experts, though, saying this is a bad move on the part of the defense. They were trying to tear this guy apart, and he's turned into a really incredibly good witness. Sympathetic character. Yeah. Yeah. So there you have it. Let me take a break, Robin. <laughs> oh, this is another uh, little... Aside in the O.J. case, I was reading in the paper today that Faye Resnick, the woman who wrote the... Uh... I knew a Jewish assassin once. Well, yeah, what was... He used to uh, sue people to death. Wow. And it was awful. Everyone was in court for years. Tons of litigation. <laughs> Sue Resnick will be telling a story on hard copy that uh, didn't sort of throws a little kink in that effort by the O.J. defense to say that he was severely crippled by arthritis. Who is Sue Resnick? Not Sue Resnick, Faye Resnick. Oh, Faye Resnick. I'm sorry. All right. Anyway, she's going to tell a story about that uh, dog, Cato, running away. Hey, maybe he's a surfer dude, but you don't have to no, call no, him a dog. No, they also have a dog named Cato. Oh, Kato. okay. I'm not talking about the guy, Cato Kalis. Right. I'm talking All about right. the dog, Cato. Don't you make any commentary <laughs> <laughs> that dog. No. They say the dog ran away, and uh, she says she and O.J., this is about eight weeks before... Or is it eight days? Eight days before the murder of Nicole, that the dog ran away, and she and O.J. chased the dog for a half hour. The dog was going under fences and yeah. jumping over things, and O.J. followed the dog everywhere he went. O.J. could outrun a dog. <laughs> no, he couldn't outrun the dog, but he could certainly follow it. Right. So he was in great shape. He wasn't uh, suffering. I know a guy saw O.J. square dancing right the night before the murder. <laughs> Yeah, just eight days before the murder, he was... Yeah, running after a dog. Giving a dog a run for yeah. his money. O.J. the cripple. <laughs> okay. Man, yeah, since severe arthritis, he's going to run after the dog. Let me see what else is going on here. <laughs> well, I wasn't understanding the O.J. trial. I thought maybe I could get some information on that. I was having trouble following it. I thought they were talking about a wheel and not a will. Explain the whole thing about running plates. Huh? Yeah. Well, let me let me just say something. This was kind of interesting discussion we had during the commercials. Jackie has obviously gotten me into it by giving you a vague reference. Yes. So, not realizing what we've said on the air. No, I don't want to be anything by you. Oh, he's reading your mind. Yeah. Anyway, um... <laughs> During the commercial, we got into this discussion about the O.J. trial, and I didn't understand this, but that cop guy, that dude who was friends with O.J.? Ron Ship. That guy I'm sick of already? That guy who should actually be in jail for not doing the right thing when Nicole would uh, say that she was beaten by O.J.? But anyway. Yeah, I wonder why his, what he's doing isn't incriminating himself. Nobody gets incriminated. Uh, Do you get so. immunity for being on the stand? I don't know. 
If I fart, they'll drag me into court. I got the FCC with $2 million worth of fines. Someone names a toilet after me, this 900 articles. Sa state senators writing letters. Yeah. Some guy gets on a stand and admits that, eh, yeah, she was getting beaten, but I tried to protect O.J. a couple times. I didn't do my job. I didn't do my job. But... Eh, okay. All right. I was an officer, but I knew he's breaking the law, and I let him. Does that guy have measles? He has, like, dots all over his he's face. He's got freckles. He's a black guy with freckles. Yeah, that's goofy. <laughs> but I, when I see black guy with freckles, I go, I could beat him up. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why he had to become a police officer. I've yet to meet the man who a black guy with freckles that I couldn't take. <laughs> black guy with freckles means you have some white in you. It's a weakness. <laughs> I, grew up in, I grew up in a black community. You saw a black guy with freckles, that was it. He was worse off than a white guy. <laughs> so anyway, that guy, he's on the stand and he says, yeah, you know, O.J. was my friend and I used to run plates for him. I had no idea what running plates yeah, meant. Yeah, I didn't know. What, and nobody ever really approached it as a topic to be discussed. You know, they didn't say, what is running plates? Well, Newsday explains that cops ran plates for O.J.'s dates. O.J. Simpson liked being friendly with cops. There were times when even a world-famous celebrity can use a little assistance from the law. When he saw an attractive young woman driving a car... Simpson would copy her license plate number down, call a police buddy, and have him trace the plate for the woman's name and address, uh, uh. according to one willing recipient of one of those calls. And then he would just show up? Uh, well, let's see. Let's read on. Former, yeah, probably call her. Former L.A. police officer Ronald Shipp, who testified this week in Simpson's murder case that the uh, football great told him he had dreamed of killing his ex-wife. You know, you know the whole story on there. Mm -hmm. Um... Told the court yesterday that he checked license plates for the Simpsons mostly to investigate suspicious vehicles in the neighborhood. Yeah, like right. there was somebody uh, after I OJ. I suspect there's a beautiful girl. Yeah. <laughs> I got a suspicion there's a beautiful lady in there. Mm. Like he can't meet enough girls. This is a guy who used to go down and cover the Hawaiian tropic or something with right. bikini girls. That should have been enough to service him for the whole year. But OJ could go into any club and the women would come to him. Right. So, so he's copying down plates. The license plate rundowns were part of a dating game played by Simpson and his friends, said the woman. Gee, boy, you're not saying, you know. What friends? But, 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 but the point is, I mean, you're not safe on the streets. I mean, cops are getting license, giving out your home address and phone number. I know, but wouldn't you say, right? if you got a phone call and the guy says, hey, I'm O.J. Simpson, do you want to go out? Wouldn't you just, like, hang up? Wouldn't you think it's, like, really weird or a prank no, You call? know why I know you, you wouldn't? Because... That night that Dice was making phony phone calls, yeah, and he was saying he was hot tub Johnny West, right? And he was doing that goofy voice. He go, I was on the phone about four in the morning with Dice, and he goes, "Watch me make a phony phone call." He would call up uh, Vegas uh, strippers, mm -hmm. and he'd get on and go, "Hi, this is hot tub Johnny West," like, oh, like a weird voice like that, right? And they would agree to go out with him. Right over the phone. Well, let me tell you. you and who's Hot Tub Johnny West? You think that's wild? There's a guy out there somewhere who was calling women, yeah. and he would say, "Open your door." Go to your room, strip off your clothes, and put on a blindfold and wait for me. Really? And 15 women did it. Mm. And now they're trying to charge him with rape because he came over and made love to them. They claim they thought it was their boyfriend or their husband. Oh, yeah. no. And now they want to charge him with rape, and nobody knows what to do about it. That's a tough one. The women did it. The license plate rundowns were part of a dating game played by Simpson and his friends, said the woman, who told New York Newsday that she frequently partied with Simpson and his crowd in the early 80s. The woman, who occasionally would ride with them, recently explained the game. They cruised Sunset Boulevard, which connects Simpson's exclusive neighborhood to the beach, and raced their cars alongside those driven by pretty women. Sometimes they were in O.J. Simpson's black Bentley, sometimes in Marcus Allen's sports car, or in a Ferrari or a Mercedes-Benz driven by one of their pals in the women's fashion industry. Wow, what a life. They would flirt with the ladies at stoplights, or as they slowed around the boulevard's rolling curves, yell out, I'll call you, Simpson would say when the light changed, and Alan would smile and wave. So, you know, they'd see it was OJ. 40-year-old men acting like teenagers. And getting away with it. <laughs> and believe me, I'd be doing the same thing. <laughs> but if they liked what they saw, Simpson and his friends would write down the car's plates. Then one of the police officers would get their names through a computer check of state motor vehicle records. Oh, man. And nobody will be looking up these officers. Hmm. Cool. Simpson and Allen, and sometimes Simpson's longtime friend A.C. Cowlings, would invite the women to one of their fun houses, either to fun Simpson's house. estate on Rockingham Avenue with his jacuzzi available for late night soaks, or to an ivory 
an ivy-covered home of a woman's clothier where they park fancy cars on the street, play tennis, and drank in the back. What is he killing people for? How could he be upset? Yeah. How could anything piss How you off? How could he get mad about anything? I heard when O.J. and A.C. were escaping in the Bronco that day, they met ten chicks. <laughs> they were trying to run license plates from the car phone. You know what? I right. can tell you, all those police cars out there were checking girls. <laughs> yeah. Hi, um. uh, this is O.J. Simpson. O.J., give yourself up. All right, look. Some girl just passed out. I just heard a license plate. Give me a, give me a call back and tell me who that was. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> All right, O.J., one last time. We'll do this for you, but after this, you got to go to jail. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you. I really am innocent. Thank you. But isn't that against the law for cops to give out people's phone numbers and addresses from their license plate <laughs> records? Yeah, I think so. Motor vehicle that could That could be a violation. And there'll be no investigation of this. And did you see? I don't know if you, if you, I don't know if I'm the only one who checked this out. But did you read? They, they showed up on the screen OJ's letters that yes. he wrote to Nicole. Yeah, three letters. He should go to jail just for a spelling. That guy's a college graduate. He, wait, yeah, but, you wait, wait, you see, put in jail. He said, "Dear Nicole, I think we should start to get things right, something like that." Uh -huh. And the word "start" was S T A R T E. Did you see that? All I, I remember the word acceptable. He was t trying to say there's no acceptable reason for me hitting you. And How did he spell that? E-X-E-B-T-I-B-L-E. Uh, oh, -E. And he's... How, and when, oh, I'd like to see what he's scribbling on those yellow legal journals. <laughs> oh, just very intelligent. But Howard, he was... Spelling's almost a joke. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a guy, you know... <laughs> college graduate. But, you know, he went to college, uh, you know, on a football scholarship almost before they even had any rules. I mean, it's yeah. bad now. Yeah. Back then, I'm sure he probably didn't, you know. So what are you saying? O.J. never went to class. Probably yeah. did. Yeah. You know, those guys like, got, got buffed right through college. This is not acceptable. Now, I'm going to sound this out. X, X, SEP, S-E-P, <laughs> Tibble, T-A-B-L-E. T-I-B-L-E. Yeah. Tibble. Except table. Except Except table. Like table. T A B L E. See? Except table. <laughs> X S E P T A B L E. Except table. Hmm. I was taught to sound it out. I've always stuck by that rule. Imagine you, you send a love letter apologizing to your wife and it's written like that. Your wife's got to do What a moron. Who did I marry? Yeah. Big brute. Uh, and then he always signed the letters me. Hmm. You can't spell OJ. <laughs> <laughs> M E. That spell O J. <laughs> Start S T A R T E. Instead of chasing all those women, you should go into like an English class or something. You know, because you, you know, I know when like somebody writes me a letter and there's a couple of uh, typos and and like some weird handwriting, I get like real turned off to them. Oh yeah. Yeah, like you know, stupid. Yeah, but you know what the funny thing is? He, it doesn't appear to have affected his life at all. No. Well, he's a multimillionaire. He's had a great life and all right. the women. None of the women seem to be bothered by it. Yeah. You just think you'd be a little embarrassed. But if you yeah. wrote that way, would you sit down and write something? Never. No, ever. Yeah. ever. <laughs> like, if you're going to apologize to your wife, why not call her or send her flowers? or well, Why would you write? Or have somebody else write it for you're you. Yeah. He's got 10 billion friends. I guess when you're apologizing for punching her in the face, you might not want somebody writing it. Yeah, who do you get to write that for you? Plus, Robin, all his friends also went to college on football scholarships. <laughs> yeah, AC's gonna write it. Marcus, right there. Well, I figure that Robert Kardashian must be able to Maybe tell. And that whole that whole courtroom scene looks like a one big rap video. Where's all the white people? I mean, what? And everyone's black. The guy in the stand is black. OJ's black. The lawyers are now black. And the court assistant. And you got a Japanese guy for a judge. Ito's assistant is black. Yeah. You know what? Uh, Robert Shapiro has been sent to the corner. Hey, did you see him yeah. almost not at the table with the lawyers? Everybody's anymore. black. The jury's black. <laughs> Everyone in the criminal justice system is black. Well, uh, blacks are going to jail more, so it should be that way. Me and Gary did something really cool yesterday. What? This guy called us up and said, hey, you, you know that when you're watching TV and you see Judge Ito and to his left is a woman who sits in front of that piece of glass? Yes. I don't know what that glass booth yes, is. I Do you know? Either. Okay. So the woman who sits in front of the glass booth has a telephone. And she's always on the phone every minute picking it up and uh -huh. stuff. Who's she talking to? Well, I'll tell you who. She was talking to me and Gary. Because, oh, no, check it. this out. So this guy gives us the number. He goes, I got the number to that phone. So the camera is always on. So yeah. I said, Gary, let's get on. We'll do a conference call. And we'll call the number and see if she picks up. 
So we call. First time we called, but the camera like kind of moved, and we right. couldn't tell. But right. it, it, you know, we said, "Let's can we speak to Judge Ito?" And she goes, "He's he's he's tied up right now because they were on camera." So then we call back two or three times, and each time we call, she picks up. What does she say? Hello. What, what? She, she tells you what um, what courtroom it is because it's like courtroom 103. Oh. You know, yeah. Like courtroom 103. Yeah, we were rapping at her. Wow. And then uh, she said, can we speak to you know to the judge? And she said he's a. But she whispers, he's in session right now. She's mm -hmm. a receptionist. Yeah, yeah, she's like his assistant, I guess. I, we should have said we were Larry King. <laughs> so <laughs> was, Judge Ito would have called a reason. Uh, this is Larry King. I need to speak to Judge Ito immediately. <laughs> you got to try to get to Dave and do that. All right, we'll call her today and I'll be Larry King. Why don't we get Billy and tell him it's Jay Leno? Right. Because he does a great job. Jay Leno, uh, I need to speak to Judge Eno about a booking. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, that that black guy who's the prosecuting attorney. Chris Darden. He starts and he goes, uh, we're going to need the wheel. We're going to need the wheel. No, he kept saying, I'm not, I don't want to introduce the wheel. Yeah, the wheel. So uh, everyone. I don't want to introduce the wheel. So everyone thought the wheel was like some sort of evidence about the wheels on the Bronco or something. And then Sergito goes, are you talking about a will? <laughs> yeah, a wheel. <laughs> no one's speaking English. No one can write. It's like the Amos and Edo show yesterday. <laughs> the wheel. The, the wheel. wheel. The wee uh, Do you mean the will or the wheel? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Everybody's messed up. Hey, speaking of people who can't talk. Yes. Elephant Boy stopped by. But anyway, you know, this OJ, I know you're going to talk about OJ. This OJ trial now is becoming more and more fascinating to me, and I'll tell you why in a nutshell. It's fascinating to me because the guy on trial, OJ Simpson, mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to go to jail. I think all his lawyers are going to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> They're finding out so much stuff. It is not good to be an OJ trial lawyer at this point. And the guys who are taking the witness stand, I mean, I can't imagine what anybody's motivation is to take a witness, uh, you know, to become to a become witness. To become a witness. Because, boy, do they pull your life apart. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's what why... I'm going to talk about today. Ron Ship. They're, say, they're trying to claim he's doing this for some uh, motive, like getting in the movies. I don't buy I it. don't think so. I'm who the... would go through this? No one. Just to be uh, in the movies, to have your whole life dragged across the screen of a TV. And it's not a, a life that you really want to uh, admit to. You made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, but basically your life was running and getting the license plate numbers of good-looking girls' cars so O.J. could call them. And, and you could play tennis. In yeah. His ten on his tennis court and bring your friends to see his trophies. I say pay, go to a public tennis court, play and, tennis. And, and go to a museum. Yeah, and skip. Getting license, like t using your job to get license plates, yeah. uh, license plates identification uh, numbers and uh, phone numbers and addresses for OJ's good-looking girls. Have a little dignity. Yeah, that's weird. Don't let OJ use you. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy's looking like a real dick, you know. And yeah. Plus, on top of that, the guy was trained in uh, wife and husband abuse cases, spousal abuse, and he went ahead, of course. And every time Nicole told him about abuse. He basically went over and asked O.J., hey, man, why don't you cut it out? <laughs> Instead of, like, reporting it and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, you know. So O.J., don't hit her again. He did the exact wrong thing. Yeah. You know? Everything he taught in class, he forgot. Yeah. Once he stepped out of that classroom. Well, they mean that for regular people. O.J. Simpson, now you're talking I about. I love the man. I love the man. <laughs> Keep saying that. I loved him. Yeah, I think he wanted to marry O.J. Yeah. You know, the pro the one of the uh, defense attorneys was uh, asking him if he didn't want to get next to Nicole. I think he wanted to get next to O.J. Yeah, I don't think it was about Nicole. <laughs> and then this Johnny Cochran, the uh, defense lawyer. Yeah. Well, he's he's looking worse and worse. And then he's defending himself. He can't think about O.J. Well, what was the first allegation? The first allegation was that he had beaten his wife. Right. Now, she refuses to say that he didn't. Now, he claims that he didn't, and if you talk to her, this is what he told all the reporters the very day the story came out, because apparently when they divorced, in the papers, she accused him of roughing her up. Right. Like grabbing her, choking her, something, hitting her. Yeah. And uh, when they talked to him that day, after the story came out, he says, that never happened. A lot of times in a divorce case, things are said in order to, you know, get a settlement or whatever. But if you talk to her, she'll deny it. So they talked to her. She said, I'm not denying anything. Yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, of course, the new allegation is... Yeah, now he has a secret family. Secret family that he got 
from one of his clients getting a divorce, and he yeah, made this, love to her. This woman was uh, came to him for, I guess, divorce advice. <laughs> and he was handling the divorce, and he started coming over and sleeping with her. And I guess he took sort of... care of her for a long time, and they say she looks just like Nicole Simpson. <laughs> Women always fall in love with their divorce attorney. They always do. It just it doesn't even matter what I they look like. I would say always. That's uh, a hasty uh, generalization. A, a hasty generalization I'll back up and prove <laughs> if called into court. I'm telling you, they all do. They, but it is. They're going through a miserable time with their ex-husbands. It's getting real ugly. They go to see this guy, and this guy says, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And that's, like, so great when this guy says that he becomes, like, the focus in their life, and so they're calling him every minute. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have indisputable proof that good-looking women will fall for ugly guys. Any attorney who's going to handle their divorce. I'm telling you, I have indisputable <laughs> proof. And it's... I'm telling you, I don't care what shape the lawyer's in. <laughs> he could be blind, crippled, and crazy. Right. It don't make a difference. <laughs> could have any problem. If he can handle a divorce, he's in. Could have an eating disorder, whatever. <laughs> don't make a difference. So the point is, Johnny Cochran went from being a $700 an hour attorney to now being a guy of, I don't know, a guy who maybe they can throw him in jail. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Wife abuse. Secret family. Having uh, sex with a client. Well, oh, this uh, woman came forward and said, yeah, Johnny Cochran's the only father she's ever known. He used to come over to the house for dinner. And this is all during his first marriage as well. Right. Yeah. That he's coming over to the house, sleeping with the mom, you know, staying over. Uh, they finally wind up getting this woman pregnant, and he names the boy who's born from this union, Jonathan Cochran. Yeah, they, That's they a keep good way a to keep it a secret. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, look at that stranger. He got the same name I do. <laughs> so, uh, as a matter of fact, hey, Gary, maybe this is a good time. Get Geraldo on the phone. Geraldo evidently got an interview. Yeah, with this woman. This, yeah. Uh, little, this, she's a grown woman now. Yeah. Who says that Johnny Cochran was the only father she's known. And uh, Jonathan Cochran, his son, is her stepbrother. Oh, Johnny Cochran. Or a half-brother. Well, let's give Geraldo a couple of minutes to tell us if she said anything to him. Anything cool. Well, she just says that uh, Johnny's her daddy. And she wanted, she came forward, she says. To defend his reputation. And I said, mm, not I good. don't think so. No, that's not working. <laughs> it's not going too good. She looks cute. Let me see her. She looks cute. Well, Johnny, it, yeah, well, that's, the, he's not her father. He's, oh, that's, is that the woman that Johnny was having sex with? No, that's no. the daughter. That's the daughter. But that's not his daughter. No, that's right. the, the, you know, she was the daughter of this she was woman. there already. He yeah. was uh, handling the divorce. Hey, Geraldo. Oh, How you doing? Father. Looks like Johnny Cochran had a bigger, busier sex life than you did. <laughs> Sounds like you guys are fellow sex addicts. It, they, they should call the subtitle of this whole O.J. Simpson thing of, of black men and blonde women. I yeah. think so. Everybody's got a blonde Nicole lookalike. What is the problem here, Howard? The problem is that once a black guy gets a little money in his pocket, he dumps the black race and goes off with white women. Well, he didn't marry this woman. He keeps marrying black women. Oh, that's okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> as, long as, he marries, as long as he marries and cheats he on a black woman. Black, he had the mistress white. for longer than either of his marriages. Yeah. Hey, Rondo, this is sounding like you. <laughs> you can relate, can't you? Well, Geraldo's uh, not a black man. That's the only reason. reason I brought it up. You know, Cochran and uh, his henchman, uh, Carl Douglas, went all over his Ron Kim's case for bringing the blonde over to O.J.'s house. They didn't say, you brought a woman over to O.J.'s house to play tennis and get in the jacuzzi. They said, you brought a blonde over. And then he supposedly talked to another blonde in the car. They wanted very much to stress to the uh, eight African-Americans on the jury, the six women especially, that these guys are sellouts, uh, ships a sellout, he, you know, went for a bunk. And they, all the while, you know, the woman called me, the, uh, you know, the daughter of his mistress called me. We checked her out. It's absolutely true. Uh, Cochran divorced uh, her mom, Patricia, from uh, her dad. And then uh, they started this affair. It's been a torrid affair. It was 18 years uninterrupted. And, and you're then, saying this uh, Patricia Cochran calls herself Cochran? She changed her name to Cochran, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and now yeah, because but Geraldo makes... But just imagine how, but Geraldo imagine doesn't... Imagine how Cochran must feel, though. Uh, here, all this time, they're telling these yarns, they're spinning these tales, when he's got 
this deep, dark, or deep blonde secret. As yeah, he's got a better story than O.J. Everyone's sitting going, boy, what a life does O.J.'s have. And meanwhile, Cochran... He's got the life, too. You, you, know, you, you know what I just said, O.J.? Uh, oh, I almost called you O.J. You know what I, you know what I almost said, Geraldo? About the $700? Yeah, I said, yeah. 70 cents. I, yeah, well, I said, well, here's a guy who's, like, he could end up in jail <laughs> after, after this trial. If we keep going. If we keep well, going. I, I asked our mutual legal guru, Dominic Barbara, whether it was a violation of the canon of ethics to sleep with your divorce client. He yeah. said, uh, definitely now, he didn't know what the law was back in the early 70s when it started. Yeah, right. Hmm. Hmm. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how uh, how they play this out, whether Johnny's going to comment. I know they went ballistic yesterday. How could he think this wouldn't surface, Johnny? Uh, these, these guys all walk around in the world thinking they're smarter than everyone else, yeah, but you and know nobody what? will catch them. Johnny Cochran will get away with it because it's the same reason Marion Barry gets reelected in Washington. I know that like at some point you're going to start reading... A lot of uh, like black ministers are going to come out and start saying, "Hey, the this reason they picked yeah, this is an attack on a successful black man who's a lawyer." And you know, but meanwhile, he's done all this stuff. Yeah. It, it's clear, and uh, you know, you must live with terror when you have something like this in your pocket when you're talking about everybody else doing exactly what you're doing. Hey, well, 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 are you saying this affair even spanned the second marriage? It, it was the almost the entire first marriage. It was the hiatus between the first and second marriage. It went into the second marriage. And there are reports that uh, he's still supporting her to this very day and that they'd seen each other very, very recently. Hey, Geraldo, good thing you didn't become a lawyer. <laughs> I am a lawyer. I know. I mean, imagine <laughs> yeah, with you your pay. Uh, every lawyer in the world. Really Geraldo, isn't it true that you had sex with the interns while working at ABC? <laughs> isn't it a fact? That... Isn't it a fact that you had sex with them? <laughs> I never pretended to be otherwise. So I'm not a hypocrite. Well, the story was on Kevin. Yeah. But anyway, Geraldo, so when is that show going to air? Today? Today, 4 o'clock. It's, right. the, uh, it's the bombshell of the trial. It should really uh, cause him at least a little moment's reflection. You got pictures of the mom? Oh, we've got pictures. We've got pictures of the, the mom, Johnny, together with the uh, with uh, little John and uh, with uh, April, the, the woman who came on. We have all kinds of Johnny playing Santa Claus. Oh, at boy. home, Johnny <laughs> sitting around the, uh, you know, the electric train. A black Santa? Black Santa, yeah. With those big power frames? Those big glasses? Yeah, uh, yeah. he had an afro in some of the pictures. Oh, yeah. boy. And where's the mom? Is she on the show? Mom is uh, still in Southern California. Right. Um, She's probably laying low because she doesn't want Johnny Cochran to stop. Doesn't, isn't he supporting her? He's still supporting yeah. her, right. Right. And the daughter came forward saying she thought she was helping Johnny Cochran? Well, her initial... Reaction when reading the first wife's charge that uh, Johnny had beaten her was to defend her father. My father never beat my mother, his mistress. Good boy. So, uh, Somebody ought to talk to her. Yeah, That's yeah. not a good defense. Yeah, it's not. It's not really helping the situation. He never beat much. the woman he was cheating on you with. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Araldo, thanks for calling in. Okay. We'll watch today at uh, four o'clock here in New York and uh, around the country. Take your local listing. Right. Thanks, Araldo. Right. That's Araldo Rivera. Boy, oh boy, lots of activity going on out there. I like Geraldo always needs an excuse to ruin somebody's life. Yeah, he needs a, a cause. A cause. So he goes, hey, wait a second. The only reason I'm doing this is because Johnny Cochran's up there saying how bad Ship is for having a blonde friend and trying to show him to be a race trader. Meanwhile, I am showing the hypocrisy of Johnny Cochran. I'm like, whoa. No, you're going for dude, rating. Dude, you don't need an excuse. Just ruin the guy's life. Well, where were we in the news? Well, we were still at the O.J. case. First, we have to discuss all the new news we've uh, found out about O.J.'s lawyers, and then we can move on to the case. So we have now determined that Johnny Cochran had a secret family with a white woman <laughs> while they uh, tried to tear apart Ron Ship on the stand because he was in a jacuzzi with a blonde friend. Now, it's like being in a jacuzzi with a person, like having sex or something. I don't know. It just seems like a lot of people are jacuzzi <laughs> you know? Everybody wanted to jacuzzi at OJ's place. I know. And, like, when they say jacuzzi, are they talking about, like, a big tub? Or are they talking, like, is it like I a bathtub? I think this is an outside thing. Oh, I see. Yeah, this is something he had by his pool. Oh, I like see. Like you would at a hotel. You oh, know, they have the oh. jacuzzi by the pool. Boy, if I was single, I would, the first thing I'd buy is a jacuzzi. Because <laughs> everybody <laughs> wants to be in it. I know. Like, a lot of hijinks happen in that, hi <laughs> in that jacuzzi. You know, it's just a big... You know what it is? It's a way to get a woman in a little bit of clothes and sit with her in a body of water. That's right. Yeah. 
toes go wandering, everyone's loose, and you always have to drink in a jacuzzi. <laughs> it's like the perfect thing. Right. Ron Ship gets in the jacuzzi, as though Jay to go get him a bottle of wine. And I'm sure when you're a black guy, you know, you're probably sitting there going, gee, I don't know if this white woman really wants me, you know, maybe maybe she's trying to be friends, I don't know. But you, as soon as you say to her, you want to go in the jacuzzi, and she says yes... Then she'll get out of her club. That's a pretty good indication that she might want to have sex with you. Well, I don't think that... I think Ron Ship was uh, telling everybody that he was in there with a friend of his wife. Yeah. And his wife was fully aware of everything that was going on because there was some eye contact made between he and his wife during all of this testimony. And they both sort of shrugged and said, yeah, you know, they're going to do this. They're going right. to try to paint me as a guy who was a philanderer and a this and a that. Right. And who knows what the heck he is. He says he had a conversation with O.J. about... Um, dreams he had of of uh, killing Nicole, and that's what he wanted to testify to. Yeah. So yesterday it was the defense's turn to try to rip him apart in the eyes of the jury, and here is Carl Douglas once again with Ron Ship. Wasn't there occasion, sir, when you came to the academy with alcohol on your breath? Yes, yes there was. Didn't yeah. you receive a discipline as a result of that conduct? Yes, I did. Yeah. What was that discipline? I received 15 days suspension. What year was that? Uh, it was 1988, I believe. And then once again, Carl Douglas and Ron Ship. Are you saying by that that you have not been drunk since 1989? Yeah. No, I'm saying, to me, a drinking problem. Let me explain this. You know, when I did have a drinking problem, I was the one that told myself, according to all my friends and family, they were, everybody was shocked. It was me. It was my standards. I respect that. But my question is, you still have gotten drunk since 89, haven't you? I'd say yes. Yeah. And what's wrong with that? What's that got to do with any of the testimony? Yeah. That's like saying, O.J. now says he didn't kill Nicole, mm -hmm. but wasn't he a wife beater? Therefore, can we believe the word of a wife beater? I mean, well, that's the yes, same logic. Absolutely. So, you know, who cares? Quite Meanwhile, frankly, who even cares? OJ by saying just because a man beat his wife doesn't mean he murdered her. And who even cares about any of this testimony? Edo shouldn't have allowed any of it. Because what's he really saying? Oh, OJ had a dream. Who cares? Blood in the car, blood on the socks. OJ with no alibi, history of wife abuse, Basically, get him out. You have to also create the impression that the man was capable of doing that right. because you don't have a, uh, uh, you know, a smoking gun. The other thing that um, Ron Chip said, you know, they tried to imply that he did this for notoriety, he did this for any number of reasons mm -hmm. except for the that it's the truth. So here he is when he was asked by Carl Douglas about money for his participation in the writing of a book. I personally felt there was blood money. And I, would, I didn't want any part of it. Except for the money that went to Justin and, and, uh, Jason, uh, Justin and Sydney. And the money that went to Justin and Sydney is the money that went directly to them from Sheila Weller, part of the book. See? That's pretty honorable. I think this guy's 100% credible. He did not want any money from this. He didn't want Nicole's blood on his hands. But you know what's weird? Like, what? then you watch CNN and they have that lady come on, the analyst. And she said they defused him. Yeah, and I'm like, whoa. In what way? But what see, way? you know what? When you listen to those attorneys analyze what's going on, you know just what's going to happen on a jury. She was swayed. Right. The other guy they had there wasn't. Right. So that's what's happening, and that's what's going to happen in the jury room. Some, some people will, will believe uh, this man, and some people will say, well, wait a minute, he had a drinking problem? <laughs> what what idiot's going to believe did. that? Van Sustern did. Yeah. Well, she's an idiot. <laughs> she gets on, after every day, she goes, well, the prosecution won today. Whoever goes last, she says one. And that's what I'm saying. There are people in the jury like her. Yeah. There are people all over the country like her. <laughs> Dopes. I know, because I, I, I'm telling you, I had a conversation the other day with a really bright woman, a you know, woman I hold up to be pretty bright, and she was like, oh, I'm starting to doubt O.J., you know, that O.J.'s the murderer. And I said, you're kidding. This is a, a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. I said, you're kidding me. Because you know she represents a portion of... No, he can't believe she's saying that. Yeah, I, just, I said, well, no, what did I'm you doubt? if she believes that... Yeah, what did you doubt? A lot of people. This is a family member, actually. Yeah, and she was like, I said, how could you, how could you say that? 
I said, what do you mean? What, what would sway you? Well, it's just like looking at the governor's poll. One minute, Pataki was up by 20 points. Hmm. The next minute, he was down by 20 points. Yeah. Nothing happened in between. No. People just fly all over the place with their opinions. So anyway, yeah, go ahead. You were saying. So anyway, um, then the uh, prosecution got a chance to uh, readdress all of the damage that uh, the defense could possibly have done to Ron Ship. He had always claimed to be a friend of O.J. Simpson's. The defense tried to attack that and show that he was just some casual acquaintance. Well, here is Chris Darden and Ron Ship. While you were watching television in that room with the defendant, did he ever ask you who you thought killed Nicole Brown and Ronald Goldman? Never. Did he ever express any sadness or sense of loss because Nicole was gone? I didn't see it because of Nicole. No, I didn't. Oh, that's a different cut. That's where he's explaining that... O.J. never once asked him hmm. any question that would indicate he didn't know who killed his wife. And he didn't seem to have any remorse hmm. or regret at her loss while they were together. But he also said that um, there were times that O.J. called him when he needed someone to counsel his son, Jason. Jason once took a bat to uh, the life-size statue of O.J. I guess he has statues of himself Ooh. around his house. A guy who can't spell. <laughs> So there was this big statue of O.J. out there, and wow. Jason got upset, and he took a bat to the statue. So O.J. gets on the phone and calls Ron Ship to come over and talk to his son. <laughs> there was another time that Jason was taking cocaine with some friends out in, you know, when he was growing up, he was a teenager, and O.J. found out about it, and he called Ron Ship and then called a meeting with all the parents in the neighborhood to determine who had gotten the cocaine for Jason. Wow. And to counsel the parents as to what their kids were go uh, doing. <laughs> so this is how much O.J. thought of this guy. He was no casual acquaintance. O.J. Yeah. used him all the time. Can you go talk to my son for me? Yeah, he's beating up my statue. <laughs> That's pretty weird when your son starts... First of all, it's weird to have a statue of yourself in the backyard. <laughs> That's really weird. I haven't even gone that far. Yeah, I mean, you've got a giant picture of yourself, and I think that's strange, but a giant statue. Although this is giving you ideas. I see your eyes lighting up. She just doesn't have hmm. room for the statue. Is that a full bust or a, uh, hmm, a full size. figurine? Should it be alabaster or copper? <laughs> I thought that was pretty hysterical. Yeah. After uh, they finished with Ron Ship yesterday, he finally was allowed to leave the stand after they raked him over the coals. They got into the 911 call that came in 1989. They had the operator on who took the call. And this is just to remind people of what happened in 1989. This is Nicole Brown Simpson making a 911 call because O.J. is scaring her. 10-type movies? Yes. Is he also the man who appeared on ABC television for the left? Yes. Is he also uh, the man who was in the Hertz was commercials? He, was he a yes. Heisman Trophy winner? Was he the Heisman Trophy? Does he have a statue of himself in the back? Yes. Can you get me his autograph? Yes. Can you? Okay. I, I mean, how many questions do you need? You know the man. I, I, you, you call, this stuff drives me nuts. <laughs> Because if anything had happened, we'd have more evidence. Yeah. But, you know, it's yeah. funny. Everyone goes, well, gee, you know, we don't have actual uh, video of O.J. killing this. <laughs> no, you've got an audio tape pretty much. You know, but I just want to point out that O.J. is a man with severe arthritis. Yeah. 
who can't shuffle cards. Yeah, <laughs> like running after dogs at high speed chases. Possibly oh do this kind of thing, but he just knock down a door and walk through. Yeah, yeah. He can't. He can't. He can't do anything. He's a cripple. He couldn't have possibly kill those two right. people. Yeah. So anyway, F. Lee Bailey, who is one of the attorneys who we hardly ever see or hear from. F. U. Bailey. He was asked about the testimony of Ron Ship on the way out of the courtroom yesterday. Here's what he had to say. Everybody should have a close, caring friend like Ron Ship or Faye Resnick. Which do you prefer? Flip a coin. <laughs> now, hey, who told him to, to choose these friends? Yeah, that was his life. I think Ron Ship actually was a pretty good friend to the guy. Any Got guy, him numbers of license plates. Any guy who you can call up and say, look, I just saw a hot chick in a car. Can you track down her? Uh, I'll give you her license plate number. Just get me her phone number and address. I say he's a pretty good friend. At and the risk it, of losing his job. Yeah. 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 And not only that, hey, my son's out there beating on my statue. Could you come over? Yeah, can you have a neighborhood uh, sit down and talk about cocaine abuse <laughs> with my all my neighbors? Because my son uh, had some coke. I'd say that's a pretty good friend. Yeah. And quite frankly, I've been looking at Faye Resnick. I'd like to be friends with her. <laughs> You're choosing her over uh, Ron Ship. What a head of hair. <laughs> they also say that this is what uh, boggles my mind. O.J. still wheeling and dealing. Now, while he's sitting in that courtroom, he appears to me not to be capable of doing anything. Right. I find him to be very stressed out and almost incapable of understanding what's going on. That's way he looks to me. Yeah, well, he's ha he's almost gone. Meanwhile, I see in the paper he's now considering another book. Yeah. <laughs> he's thinking of now writing his autobiography. His other book has done so well. Hey, you know, you wrote a book. I mean, there's nothing to do in that jail cell. You might as well. <laughs> and you see how well he writes. They flashed up one of his letters that he sent to uh, Nicole Simpson when he was, like, apologizing to her. He spelled the word start, S-A-R-T-E. <laughs> and half the letters were backwards. It's spelled O-J. <laughs> yeah, it was M.E. <laughs> this guy's a co college graduate. It's amazing. Those love letters must have really turned her on. You know? Brought her back every time. Dear Jaime. Jaime? Oh, honey, I think you mean. <laughs> Gee, what a genius I'm married to. I love you, Nicole. <laughs> L-U-B-Z. I love you. <laughs> I'll tell you, he wants to make money. Screw the book. Just put out a collection of all the things he's scribbling on that yellow legal pad. I want to see that. That's what I would love to see. All those crappy spellings and pictures and collector's, <laughs> collector's item. item. That's a collector's item. This guy doesn't know what to sell. And the bad acting. They are also, there, there is more money to be made on this case. They're also going to start selling videotapes of the opening arguments of the attorneys. No kidding. Look for that to come out soon. <laughs> They should let O.J. really write his autobiography with no help and all the misspellings. And, 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 yeah, right. Yeah, the, the title is Innocent. I-N-O-S-E-B-D. I want to ask you something. Yeah. Because I noticed in the post today when they re-copied the letters, they changed, they corrected all the spelling. Yeah, I know. And put it in that well, way. That's why they should let us write a newspaper. <laughs> why would they do that? Because they don't know what people want to see. Hmm. There's also going to be a uh, segment of A Current Affair tonight in which Paula Barbieri's father will claim that O.J. told Paula that uh, Nicole was a bitch and somebody ought to slit her throat. He's a little upset with his daughter. He feels that she's ignoring her family, and all she cares about now is a guy, well, who's not on death row yet, but mm -hmm. she's abandoned them, and he's a little upset. Yeah, if he if he wants Paula to be with a good man, why doesn't he introduce her to me? <laughs> she, they say, visits O.J. once a week and has been going with him since he split with Nicole. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I saw on one of the tabloid shows that she forced O.J. to make a choice between uh, herself and Nicole because O.J. kept running back to his first wife. Is that right? Yeah, it seems that he was real clear on what he should do. <laughs> well, I'll kill her then, Paula. <laughs> Who knows? We have to wait until the trial is over. See what the jury decides. Right. Colin Ferguson continues in court defending himself. Robin gave me um, 
pictures of Marsha Clark naked. <laughs> now, I don't have pictures of Marsha Clark naked. Tell him what I gave you. You gave me naked pictures of Marsha Clark. <laughs> she gave me the National Enquirer and Marsha Clark's secret past. I love the National Enquirer. God bless them and all their hard work. Honestly, God, I mean, you know, remember the first time Marsha Clark was on TV, Robin? You'll back me up on this. Okay. I said to you, that looks like a woman who's pretty hot underneath all those yes, clothes. Yes, you said very clearly that you thought she wanted to break loose. Yeah. That's what you said. Well, evidently she had broken loose. <laughs> she already did it. <laughs> yeah. And remember I was talking about how she had that baby fine hair? Mm -hmm. Like, it looked like she was going bald. Evidently, she's been plagued by that, so she used to wear wigs and stuff. Yeah, you seem to have her number. Yeah, but you could put a hair weave in that hair, and it would look real thick. Sure. I could fix her up. She doesn't have to go around like that. And they got a picture of her with her first husband, and she's topless on the beach. <laughs> well, she don't look bad. You know what picture she looks really good when she first married this guy? Look at this picture. She's sitting there on the beach. Look at that. Look at that, you guys. Over there. I see, her body don't look bad. I mean, she's not Amy Lynn, but... She's got a sheer quality, don't you think? Yeah, she looked kind of hot, especially early on. Not bad. Pretty good for anybody. That's a hot minky. Uh. I bet you OJ sits and goes... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Well, of course, in the O.J. trial today, everyone will be riveted because uh, Denise Brown, the sister of Nicole Brown Simpson, will return to the stand. And the defense attorneys are chomping at the bit to get to her. She's good. Because her testimony was incredibly strong. She, she cried from the second she got up there. Yes. I'm going to tell you a tale of abuse <laughs> and humiliation. And he grabbed her crotch and said, this is mine. She's a better actor than Richard Lewis. <laughs> well, that's what the defense is saying. That oh, please. That was no act. And that it's, sister. Uh, it's embarrassing. And this, this new story she's telling about such an abusive relationship... Why was she saying right after the murders that there was never any abuse? She didn't change her story until November, they're saying. Yeah, okay. So, um, they don't know whether to go easy on her or rip into her. O.J., according to Cindy Adams, now, I don't know how she's talking to O.J. But wait a second, do you see that they're going to let the, you know, the white guy... In yeah, Shapiro, Robert Shapiro's going to take over this... Uh, Shapiro has never tried a murder case or anything like that. They're going to let him, go, let the white guy, the Jewish white guy go up there and, and be the bad apart. guy. Yeah, yeah, be the bad guy. Yeah. Well, of course. Smart. <laughs> They're playing all the angles. Yep. But the point to me is that O.J. wants to be tough on Denise. He feels that, uh, you know, this is all an act. And he wants them to go in there and start asking her about her wild side. Right. And the guy she's had in her life and her uh, bout with drugs and whatever and her bisexuality, all kinds of things. But, why, but why, why would that change the opinion that he, she was abused? Well, they want to, he wants to erode her um, credibility. credibility in front of the jury. Just much the same as with Ron Shipp. You bring up his drinking and, you know, that he was with a blonde woman in the jacuzzi, that kind yeah. of thing. Don't you think that O.J. wants to just get out of the chair and beat her? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. I really think Do you think, think that might happen? We might see O.J. in action. Right. O.J. might actually get up and just start... You know, they should, they should put a blonde... The chairs like in the commercial. No, they should put a blonde wig on her and I'll have a flashback. I think That's it's... Right. I think it's... Uh, what's her name? Nicole. Nicole. Yeah, beat her ass. Wow. He also claims, <laughs> according to Cindy Adams... Those noise, I'm going to remove the cameras from this courtroom. What is that, Judge Ito? I'm warning you, I will remove the cameras from this courtroom. Yeah, that's a, that's a bail for... Uh, keeps making those rowling noises. <laughs> Sergito. What are those time pieces on his desk? Those um... Sergito's desk is so crowded now. Yeah, you no, can hardly. It is in every part of the world. Did you see Sony put up a big sign that says Sony? Yeah, on remember... the back of the computer. Remember, I was saying on the air the other day that they they just sort of sell like spots, mm -hmm. like like golf, like like in tennis. Yeah. Like why doesn't Sergito just, you know? Like put a big Nike sign on himself or something? Well, it seems that he's been going through equipment. I have computer friends who tell me that when the uh, case first started, he was using a Toshiba notebook. Yeah, that went out. The, now it's IBM. And now that went out. Then yeah, he got the mind. IBM, and now there's a Sony logo. Yeah, they put a Sony. Now, let me tell you something. On the back of the computer, there is never a logo. Right. 
If you watch today on the OJ trial, you'll see a computer monitor, and on the back of the computer monitor where the camera faces, it's a Sony. Right. There isn't a computer monitor in the country that's built that has a big Sony on the back of it. Not. So, Giorgito, I guess, put that up there for consideration. So, because I think it defrayed the cost of the computer. And probably IBM offered him a notebook or whatever that system he's using, too. It's called the IBM um, ThinkPad. Yeah, yeah, because all of a sudden his Toshiba was out the door. Mm. Yeah, he's smart. ThinkPad's much better. <laughs> they wanted a six-hour commercial, too. Toshiba wearing Nike sneakers. <laughs> hey, Where's like my Reebok see. gavel? So anyway, I suggested that on the air. The other day. Then I read this guy, this columnist from Newsday uh, did the same column that I just did on the air the other day. And I think he copped a free idea, but it was a pretty good <laughs> article well. anyway. I agreed with it. OJ says that uh, Denise had a thing for him and was jealous of her sister and didn't really get along with her sister, so these are all crocodile tears that we're seeing. Oh, I see. She's pining away for OJ. Right. I mean, she could have been the lucky one to She's get killed angry. and beaten. Yeah. Yeah. She's angry that she didn't lose her head. Let's take a break and come back to this very riveting story right after these words. Let's return to the Howard Stern Show. Giorgito needs to say something, Roman. Yes, Judge? I'm going to ask that you strike that. Thank you. It has to be stricken. The jury is reminded to Not the dependent, Mr. Thing. Simpson. What was that? Don't strike the witness. Strike that from the record. Oh, you said strike. Yes, and I will also ask that the defendant stop making faces every time he's accused of something. <laughs> Did he actually say that, Giorgito? No. I believe uh, he should. Have a nice lunch. <laughs> That's another thing he says great. When he dismisses everybody. Have a good lunch. We'll be back and reconvene in 45 minutes. Have a good lunch. I like his ending, when he's ending the day and he's dismissing the jury. He's all pissed off. Turns and he says, I want you to remember <laughs> my orders to you not to discuss the case among yourselves or with anyone. You are to remain open-minded until you've heard all the testimony. And he doesn't even say that. You know what he says? He says... I don't want you to think about the case. That's what he says. <laughs> I haven't rains, heard that one yet. If it rains, remember your gloshes. <laughs> and OJ stops staring at the ceiling, you look like a moron. <laughs> Have a nice day and enjoy your lunch. And in closing, I would like to say... I'm so glad we had this time together just to have a laugh and sing a song. <laughs> Seems yeah. we just got started, and before you know it. i got to find out more about that Sony big sign that he put up. Yeah. It's the size of Times Square. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Jumbo Tron. He's Japanese. Sony. He's got a big Sony sign. Anybody got a problem with that? <laughs> like, what is this? But, you know, I, I can't stand when you see a judge involved in that kind of stuff. What is, yeah, it has no place in the courtroom. No. On behalf of Sony and I, have a nice weekend. <laughs> and enjoy your lunch. I have to say that on behalf of Sony and myself. Have a good lunch. <laughs> he's always pissed off, too, when he admonishes them. He doesn't even admonish them. He just, like, gives them rules, and he's like, he's pissed off. He's like, all right, boom, and he pushes his chair away. <laughs> Swings that chair around, stroking that beard. This would be a good time to have a court reporter break. <laughs> court reporter break. That's an outdated concept. Court reporter break. The court reporter is that lady who sits there with that stupid machine right, with that the four buttons. Machine with the five buttons, yeah. Yeah, and somehow types down every word you say instantly. It's amazing. Yeah, can't use a tape recorder for that. Court reporter break. It's <laughs> murder trial going on. We got a break for some court reporter. Can't they get a second court reporter to keep this thing going continuously? 10,000 billion people right. are watching, her fingers are tired. Yeah. <laughs> we get a case. Sony, Sony's finally got a sign up and we're going to break. I have to leave now. I'm going to Morton's Steakhouse to drink Snapple. Right. Don't discuss this case with anyone. And remember, Jackie, the joke man, Martling, next to... I'll do anything for cash. <laughs> anyway, Robin, you were still reporting on OJ when we last left. Yes, we were talking huh? about the fact Excuse that me. Denise Brown, her sister, will be on the stand again today, and the reporters Cried are all saying that uh, the defense has to be very, very careful with her. If they are too rough on her, the jury might become very sympathetic and um, begrudge them that uh, anger that they show toward her. She has been crying a lot on the stand, but according to Cindy and her insider in the courtroom, the jury is OJ country. Right. And they were there wasn't a wet eye in the place. You know, nobody was impressed. She was wet. 
With uh, peace, my dear. With uh, Denise Brown's tears. Really? On Friday. That's what she's saying. Who I don't says know that? that? Cindy has it in her column today. But Cindy is a heartless cow. You know that? What is wrong with her? No, 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 no. She's saying when they looked at the jury, the jury didn't seem to be impressed oh. or affected by her testimony. Well, it's because you got Captain Japan telling you not to look like you're being affected. Of course you're affected. A woman's sister has been murdered, and she's standing there going, O.J. picked me up and threw me out of the house, onto the ground, and... Oh, for God's sakes. How do you know what is going on with the jury? Unless the jury is made up of nincompoops. <laughs> Captain Japan t instructs you not to look like you're being inf affected, so these people, you know, keep a yeah, grip on it. Yeah, uh, but sometimes, you know, when something like that occurs, you can't help yourself. Was Cindy Adams in the courtroom, Robin? No, she wasn't. Well, tell her to shut up, that <laughs> beehive head. You know what it is? She's looking to fill up a newspaper. She's got to write something. <laughs> well, it certainly got to you. She gets to me. <laughs> Anything else, Robin, or you want to, uh... Yes, uh, finally today, I was going to tell you about this, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida woman who is featured in O.J. Simpson's book. She says that God spoke to her, and that O.J. is innocent. Hmm. Yeah. Why not let him out now, then? God Why are we going through this charade of a trial? She's had a number of these incidents, and this time, he told... Sister Washington, Sister uh -oh. Bernice Holmes Washington. Why is she in the O.J. book? <laughs> that because God says O.J.'s innocent. Oh, so O.J.'s like quoting her like... Yeah, he oh. publishes her letter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. that's proof. Desperation. See her if we can letter, get her on the show. Her letter is 138, on page 138 of Simpson's new book. And she said God is trying to talk to O.J., God is trying to make him a leader. Right. And wants to model him. After Hitler. <laughs> After Jesus Christ. Let her be chained to him for the rest of her life. That's, my, that's her punishment. She compared Simpson to Joseph in the Bible, who was framed by his brothers. And was made into a slave who beca eventually became a hero. So apparently this is what O.J. is going to have happen to him. He cool. will be framed for a murder he didn't commit, and then he will become some kind of hero. It's a good theory. It's just like one time God told her to back out of a deal she had made to, use, to buy a used Chevrolet. And later she got a 1985 Cadillac instead. Wow. So God came to her with about the car, and that worked out. That makes sense. <laughs> God worked for Potemkin. <laughs> God advises you on car. He finally shows himself and advises you on what kind of car to buy. Right. That's what God uh, told her first, and then he told her about OJ. It's strange what, what occasions God picks to come forward. <laughs> He's a wacky guy. You can't figure him out. <laughs> I watched the trial last night. Did you see um, Denise Brown pull that big booger out of her nose? Oh, yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, big glob. Big glob of schnot. Oh, dear. Well, what was she going to do? She was hysterical crying, but it was a big blob. Oh, see, was, I, I had to turn I, off the TV. I avoid looking at You know, Ooh. I can't watch people cry anyway, so I guess I turn away from the screen when they're trying watching to that. up. Yeah. yeah, so I guess I missed that. You missed a big booger pull. <laughs> big greasy booger. Oh. Did you see it? Fred, you saw it, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I was watching. It glistened. Yeah. It glistened. Oh. And it, when it was caught on the end of her nose, it was like going back oh, and forth. No. Big glob. She kept trying to go for it, and she missed it. Yeah. Finally, she used her hand. Did you see that? <laughs> she couldn't get it on the tissue. Well, it wasn't, the tissue wasn't working. She yeah. lock her up. Edo leaned over and tried to pull out with his chopsticks. Trying <laughs> <laughs> to get a hold of it. Oh, hosto. Oh, the jury, the jury will disregard this booger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do not discuss this booger with anyone after you leave the room. That voice is so funny on uh, Judge Ego because it doesn't match that whole Japanese look. Yeah. You're always back there. <laughs> The jury will disregard the booger. It's like the trial's dubbed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks like one of those old Japanese movies. I believe Mothra is coming up over the cliff. <laughs> yeah. Captain Japan.
Hey, look, there's Giganto. Captain Japan, Judge Ego, at your service. I gotta take a break. We'll be back right after these words. We'll get everything started. I got a couple of great phony phone calls to play for you. We we're just talking to the commercials. It drives us crazy that, you know, all of these women are going on the stand talking about what bad mood OJ was in and that he looked kind of weird that day. And yet, AC and Kardashian and all these guys who were with OJ that night or that next day, and with the, someone even spotted one of those guys with a bag of clothes. Why aren't those guys on the stand? Not yeah, not, that's not relevant. But but knowing whether or not a guy looked like he was in a foul mood that day is relevant. I mean, Candace Garvey didn't appear to know anything. Except that I couldn't understand the testimony she gave or that woman. Yeah, that other woman after her. Yeah, well, she was like just in the house once. Yeah, <laughs> Candace Garvey was like, you know, I'm a really good looking woman. And OJ didn't pay attention to me. I can't believe it. It was like I wasn't there. I mean, how many times do you see that? Well, maybe OJ just finished doing Tawny Katane and Paula Barbieri and was kind of w tired. Femaled out. <laughs> yeah, right. Like maybe you just didn't get him going. She just she was just unaware that any man could resist talking to her. Oh, it was very strange. Good-looking girls are like that. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, that could be proof that he's guilty. Yeah. So if he was so preoccupied. Doing, that, you know. It's almost like he was like, well, look at me, Judge. How could you ignore me? Hey, judge Eagle, your hands are buried underneath your robes. You're telling me. You, you know something must have been yeah. wrong. Oh, you're so good looking broad. <laughs> <laughs> you're <laughs> guilty. <laughs> <laughs> End of trial. <laughs> May go home. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, let me play some phony phone calls because everybody loves these. You claim you felt the bullets? <laughs> yeah, I felt the damn bullets. It's funny because, oh. is it your testimony? Yeah, is it your testimony? <laughs> He's got, like, all the vernacular down. You had, as you say, pain. <laughs> but by the way, Chris Darden was no better yesterday. <laughs> he had nowhere to go either. Doesn't it seem like Chris Darden has never met these people? No. It's just like, it's just like well, gee, maybe we should have spoken about this beforehand. Yeah. He asked questions, and uh, did Nicole say to you that she was upset? No. No. Oh. oh, and then he goes back. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, excuse me, Your Honor. I was fishing. <laughs> you know, I read um, some... There was this legal expert on Fox yesterday who was really good. Uh -huh. i, I got to remember her name. I wrote it down, too. Wait, maybe I brought it in. Yeah. I figured I'd give her a plug because she was so cool. Her name is uh, Sonia Hamlin. Mm. And she, they had her on Fox television. And, uh, you know, she was making cool statements, too, about how, you know, when you go in on a case like this, like the Nicole Simpson trial... The O.J. Simpson trial, rather. You're, you're supposed to be really prepared. Like, it's not supposed to be something that happens ad lib. That only happens in the movies. Right. This is supposed to be totally orchestrated, totally rehearsed. You're Everybody knows what they're going to say. Exactly what yeah. your client is, go your your witness is going to say. Yeah. I mean, you know, you literally don't have it written down for them, but you coach them pretty good. Right. You go over the testimony and the kind of questions you'll ask. It's like Darden is one chapter behind everyone else in law yes. school. Oh, he just <laughs> drives me crazy when he does that. He, he's, sort, he's sort of the uh, West Coast Colin Ferguson. And did you see he always gets upset because he is so off the mark yeah. that Johnny Cochran takes advantage of it. And yeah. he goes up and says something to the judge. Now, yesterday he got angry. And he says, Judge, I'm getting tired of this. This stepfather business with Mr. Cochran here. And what happened to the white guy who was running things? Uh, on the prosecution? Yeah. He had a heart attack. Yeah, but I mean, like, w like, wasn't he supposed to come back the next day? Where is that guy? I said to myself the other day, I said, that was no fake. No. <laughs> he really must have been sick. Yeah. So he's gone. They just uh, put another white guy in there. Yeah, but you'd have a heart attack, too, if you saw Darden asking those questions. <laughs> I got to stand there while he does this. Yeah, I mean, Jesus, he's disgracing the entire legal profession. The 63-year-old woman leaped to her death from a living room window at about 7.43 yesterday morning, landing in the rear courtyard of the couple's uh, Riverside Drive apartment building. <laughs> she left a seven-page handwritten note and jumped while her husband, after speaking to her, went to the bathroom. He returned to the living room and found a note on the floor and the window open. Wow. She apparently had suffered with a mood disorder for many years. That's what O.J. should have done in a call. Just pushed her out a window and said she jumped. <laughs> Unfortunately, none of the buildings they lived in were that high. Yeah, but O.J. must have gone somewhere where it's high. <laughs> he waited until he should have invited her to New York. It's about a billion ways O.J. could have done it better. It's a billion ways. They could have like they could have done some coke and O.J. could have slipped in some rat poison into the coke. Yeah, and then it would have looked like just a drug Bad coke. deal.
You know, Jay could have said, hey, yeah, we were doing some coke, and, like, I was in the other room, thank God, just for the chance that I didn't snort. Got loaded, we'll sleep in the garage, yeah. the car running. You know. Yeah, a million things. What is, what is he slashing a throat for? That was so gauche. Nice. There's a million ways to do it. <laughs> Crash the car. It, it, I don't know. I, well, I just that been... would endanger his life. Now you're getting crazy. Let, it, let someone else handle this. <laughs> <laughs> like you spent a lot of time thinking about this. No, I'm just saying there's a million ways. I mean, there's a million ways, you know, push her off a cliff while you're on a, like a romantic vacation or something. Like, you know, you finally had a reconciliation. Let's take Everything the kid somewhere. Well. You know, all of a sudden, she honey, slipped look, and fell off the rock. Honey, look how steep this is. Yeah, <laughs> even let the kids, like, be there. And, like, don't, like, let them turn around for a second and, you know. But it had to be a sort of spur-of-the-moment decision. Because yeah. Because when he was with her and they were happy, he didn't want to kill her. Yeah, he did the wrong thing. <laughs> I think he realizes that now. <laughs> I say let him go. He's, he's, he realizes. He's figured yeah, out enough. that it yeah. was wrong. It's enough already. He's been through it. I'm sorry. Well, since you brought up O.J., let's talk about what happened to him yesterday. His sister-in-law, Denise Brown, took the stand again and was cross-examined by uh, Robert Shapiro, who yeah. decided to go pretty easy on her. He did try to impeach her testimony by showing a few inconsistencies and bringing up the fact that she had a drinking problem, but that was about it. Is he really a lawyer, Robert Shapiro? I think that they're just letting him practice. Yeah. They all said he's never even, like, done that before. He murder seems case. very tentative in his cross-examination of some of the witnesses I've seen him try to handle. Yeah, well, everybody seems pretty bad. Except for, like, I don't know, that guy Darden is real bad. But, um, was it Johnny Cochran who was doing Candy Garvey? No, it was... I can't remember. Was yeah, Shapiro doing it, all of that? No, it was, uh, it was, uh, Cochran. Jo Johnny Cochran. Yeah, because he went a little too far with his cross-examination of her, and it backfired on him. Especially when he said, you know, you and me would look good together. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to be my secret wife? <laughs> no, hold them. <laughs> well, anyway, let's get back to this. Here's a little bit of Denise Brown's tearful testimony when she was still describing her last day. She uh, actually... With Nicole. She actually blew a goober right out of her nose no. into it, like into her hand. She was crying so much. I'm going to have to uh, ask the jury to ignore that goober. <laughs> it wasn't like O.J. just walking into a place and being, you know, hey, here I am, you know, kind of sure, I'm sure of himself type of attitude. It was more of a, um, of a, like a glazed over, kind of frightening, dark eyes. It like just Fred at a writing like meeting. O.J. that we knew. This was an effort on the part of the prosecution to show that O.J. had several different faces. The three faces of O.J. <laughs> you know, there was the public O.J. and the private O.J. And for the first time, they were seeing private O.J. Yeah, it was here's... very frightening. And the angry O.J. <laughs> <laughs> and uh... Strike that handful of snot from the record. <laughs> Some more of her testimony. I think this is where she really starts to break down and talk about her last <laughs> moments with her sister. He had a very far away look. Oh, it was... Uh, what? Was that the same, the same one? one? No, different one. Um, it was actually really kind of spooky. It was a frightening look. Maybe this is where Still she really cries. Still talking about OJ, so maybe this is where she cries. <laughs> she cries here, I bet. There wasn't much where she wasn't crying. Her nose must be all irritated. She was even wiping under her chin. So much snot and everything. Oh, come on, those were tears. Not yeah, that was real. <laughs> Green tears. She loved her sister. We got up and we walked out. And uh, Nicole was going to go get some ice cream with the kids. And we kissed each other goodbye. They kissed each other? Yeah. Oh, that must have been hot. <laughs> was Candace, Terrible, was Candace Garvey there? <laughs> I like Candace Garvey, man. Add her to this little... Hubba, hubba. Do we have photos of you two kissing? <laughs> yeah, we'll need that into the record. Girl, girl. Admissible as evidence. We need girl, girl video. <laughs> Please kiss Miss Garvey right now. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask you... Could you show me how you kiss Nicole with yes. Miss Garvey? Yes, Miss Brown, I'm going to have to ask you to demonstrate now on Miss Garvey how you two kissed each other. Are there photos of that lesbian set in that envelope? Hmm. <laughs> 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 Mrs. Garvey. <laughs> homa, homa. Oh, just play the tape. Yeah. <laughs> the last thing I told 
loved her. I said I loved her. Now, there was some speculation that uh, this was acting because she dried up and was so composed on cross. No. Oh, please. Now, I'm just telling you what the experts have been heard to say. Hey, I've seen professional actresses. Melissa Gilbert can't cry like that on command. <laughs> you only cry so right. much. You know? Yeah, no, that's real tears. Hey, look, this is really horrible. OJ should be guilty just after that. <laughs> Meanwhile, the well, best, that's what they're hoping. best acting performance of the whole day was when they showed the picture of OJ picking up his kids. Yes. You know, and picking them up in his arms. OJ, they, they flash to OJ, and he's sitting there, like, smiling at the screen and, like, remembering his son. And... Oh, I didn't notice his Oh, love. wow. He put on a whole performance. And he wouldn't look that way when the prosecution was showing the tape, when the defense showed it. Ah. They're like, yeah. Hmm. That's my boy. Well, well they the showed it. A... What? Was that the same day he couldn't shuffle cards? And... Yes. Yeah. 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 They, they poured that, that out. That when I heard that the kid weighed 75 pounds, I was shocked. That's yeah. An am... That's a lot to pick up. Uh -oh. <laughs> you couldn't shuffle cars, yet you're hoisting a 75 pound kid off the ground. Like... <laughs> and Johnny Cochran feels yeah. that the tape yeah. bore out his assertion that OJ was in pain that day. Yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> One spin. It's almost like somebody's lying. I thought OJ was going to get up and start. Hit Mrs. Garvey. <laughs> well, they did bring Candy Garvey up to corroborate the statements that O.J. was strange that day. So here is her description of the strange O.J. I had my pants down around my ankles. Right? <laughs> you were strange, too. Big giant headband on her with a gold chain and a headband. Boy, she's a high-maintenance broad. Hey, wasn't Steve Garvey accused of Cindy Garvey? Yes, uh, that was what was so interesting to me, that here is Candy Garvey testifying about O.J. being kind of weird, and Cindy Garvey has always complained of her own problems with Steve. And then Johnny Cochran, supposedly, his first wife saying that he beat her. Who Everybody, doesn't do it? I say everyone at the trial should go to jail. <laughs> I, you know, said hello, hi, how are you, and he stared at it. Cindy Garvey, I mean, Candy, Candy Garvey, Garvey, excuse me, one, both the same. <laughs> Candy Garvey is unbelievable when you hear this tape. Like, she's pissed off. Because O.J., O.J.'s there watching his kid in the school play. He probably has a hundred people coming up to him every minute. So finally he's engrossed in it. The room is dark. It's been going on for two hours now. He's, his kid goes on at the end. It's a two and a half hour wait. Candy Garvey, who's used to having every guy in the world kiss her ass, walks up to O.J. and says, O.J., I had the baby. Oh, she had evidently just had a baby. Well, she said hi first and that didn't get his attention. Yeah, so he was like kind of like, oh, hello. You know, he was yeah. just kind of like into it. I don't blame O.J. for going off now. Now I see what was going on there. <laughs> Look at the pressure and these so, women put on him. So Candace Garvey testifies that she's pissed off. She was like, well, O.J. didn't pay attention to me. He wasn't smiling. Yeah. She, she, he was strange because he wasn't paying full attention to me. Guys always smile at me. <laughs> no, Candy. Once you get, in about ten years from now, when you hit that wall and you start to change. Everybody's going to be yeah, O.J. Yeah, everyone's going to treat you that way. Once you're not good looking anymore. Steve, everybody. Yeah, get used to it. <laughs> so go on, let her testify. My husband and I, and really nothing in response. And so I said, well, I had the baby. And wow. he wow. just stared at me and yeah. said, what do you want yeah, to Nick do? told me. Yeah, Nick told me. What do you want him to do? I guess he was supposed to jump up and down or leap then, over one of those hurdles he does for Hertz. I told O.J. I had the baby. Then he got up on the stage and started doing a tap dance <laughs> and an old Negro spiritual. <laughs> She'll wake up once she makes life's about face. Start seeing her, seeing that whole thing change. Get a little dose of reality. Yeah, let her hit that wall. Women do not age well. But this is where it backfired on Johnny Cochran. Here he is. Uh, he was showing her the videotape of O.J. and saying, now here, he looks like a happy guy. He looks like a smiling guy. And now you see that videotape and you're talking about this other guy who wasn't so smiley. What do, what's, what's the deal here? What do you think? When he lifts his son up. Not Johnny Cochran. Candy, I'm telling you. This was on Cross. Oh, oh Cross. No, oh, excuse me, O.J. <laughs> Hello, huh? Am I supposed to figure this out? <laughs> In my opinion, completely different than I've ever seen him, either as a fan or someone that knew him personally, and and to see that videotape, 
it was a, it was amazing. I mean, amazing difference. I'm, but I guess that's why he's a spokesman. I mean, he's mm, <laughs> I guess uh, that's why he's a, a spokesman. <laughs> from the record, I'd like to marry her. Hmm, <laughs> hubba hubba. Boy, oh boy, I mean, that's the O.J. I, re- I know. I, did, I didn't know the guy before who was ignoring me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why he ignored me. I'm so pretty. <laughs> that's an amazing difference. Who I got it. Who is he talking to? I'm moving to California. I'll put my kids in that school. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that a public school or a private school? It seems like a private school. Cool. I, I'm telling you, man, that seems really cool. You go there and there's great looking moms. <laughs> you know, hey, there's Steve Garvey's wife. Ooh, hubba hubba. That's the trophy one. Miss Garvey, will you meet me in my chambers and dance like a wild monkey with no clothes on? If, uh, I must instruct the court, if Mrs. Garvey is to testify tomorrow, I will not wear underpants under my black robe so I can have access to my full genitalia. I thought Edo was going to fall off the chair while she was... Uh... <laughs> he was almost in her lap. He almost fell in. Oh, look at this. Oh, my God. Let me lean over and see her legs. <laughs> her legs. <laughs> I'm going to ask the jury to ignore Mrs. Uh, Garvey's legs and breasts and ass. <laughs> Mrs. Garvey, come to the sidebar and bring your vibrating egg. <laughs> ignore what's going on under the uh, bed. Wouldn't it be cool if Edo had gone home that night and beat his wife because he was so angry that she didn't look like Cindy Garvey? <laughs> Candy honey. Garvey? You be blonde. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go on. Johnny Cochran now. I'm in the courtroom assessing how he did. That uh, with yesterday's testimony after, you know, the cross-examination of Denise Brown, the viewing of the videotape, and the testimony of Candy Garvey. When he lifts his son up, and if you listen to the tape, he says, he only lifts him up about this high. And he says, ah, when he's lifting him up. So look at the videotape. I think everybody should pay attention. The videotape does not lie. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he's trying to glean anything out of this. He's all right, that Johnny Cochran. He's learning his money. Yeah. But everything you heard, did you hear that? Ah. Yeah, nobody heard an ah. The guy, the guy shooting the video was about 100 million miles away. And he got up a 75-pound kid. Right. I don't care if he said ah or not. He took that kid way over his head. Yeah. Like it was a blow-up doll. Yeah. Just imagine lifting 75 pounds over your head. And the guy's not even supposed to raise his arm. The lawyers are great. The tape doesn't lie. <laughs> you're looking at it, and you're seeing clear evidence that O.J. could lift probably a Brahma bull. Right. And didn't he say that the O.J.'s not supposed to lift his he can't. He has some condition he can't raise his arm? Can't yeah. He's picking arm. up a kid. Yeah. 75 pounds. When I used to have back problems, I just didn't pick up my kids. Yeah. I had back problems. When you heard, you didn't lift. Right. What's he doing lifting? <laughs> He's showing off for Mrs. Garvey. Maybe. <laughs> O.J. Pro- I, my thing. My thing is the only reason he ignored Mrs. Garvey. He must have done Tony Catane and uh, uh, Paula Barbieri that day. No, and according to the witnesses, he was fixated on Nicole that day. He wasn't even looking oh. at the stage. He was staring at Nicole every time Denise Brown looked back at him. So Candy was just getting in his way, blocking his view of Nicole, probably. Well, the tape doesn't lie. <laughs> Who's a better lawyer, in your opinion, Colin Ferguson or Cochran? <laughs> All right, let's take a break. They're both good. Yeah. <laughs> they both get the job done. All right, let's take a break and we'll, uh, I guess... When we come back, Judge Ito... Just play this one now. Okay. Judge Ito had to uh, disallow a certain picture that they uh, brought into evidence yesterday. The prosecution took out a picture of Nicole Simpson, and they couldn't determine exactly when the picture was taken, by whom, or for what. So after the jury had already seen it, the judge had to turn to them and tell them to disregard it. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. (laughs) This will make it go away. I am not going to allow the use of that photograph, despite the fact that you've already seen it. I know it's difficult to unring a bell, but I'm going to ask you to disregard what you saw in that particular photograph. The reason for that is there is no foundation. That's a legal finding. There is no foundation for that photograph. In other words, we don't know the date, time, and place where that was taken, by whom, What's the difference? and what it purports to depict. She's there like she just went 12 rounds with Muhammad Ali. Well, it could have been. That's what she did. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Don't unring that bell. I'm going to ask you to unring that bell. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, Judge. Yeah, I'll, I'll forget that just as fast as I forget Mrs. Garvey's legs. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let's... Today they say that uh, they will get uh, past this whole issue of the marital disputes that uh, O.J. and Nicole suffered and get down to the day of the murder. Very good. And what happens? We'll be back right after these words. (laughs) 
Maybe you don't want me to do that. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> you are not to discuss that. Yeah, right. Here's Jojito. He wants to tell you what you can discuss. You are not to discuss Warren Littlefield. You are not to discuss Howard Stringer. You are not to discuss how long these negotiations take or whether they happen in fact. You are not to discuss any of this. <laughs> right. Now, there's I your... like that. the arousal under my robe when I see Miss Garvey. All right. Hey, I thought that woman who runs Mensa Luna restaurant yesterday was pretty cute, too. Well, I know. Always evaluating the girls, aren't you? Everyone in Los Angeles is good looking. <laughs> Tia. What's her name? Tia? Tia. Tia. Georgito, you uh, like her, too, huh? Tia Gavin. Is that the one or yes, is that Tia. other one? The Crawford girl. No, I like the uh, woman with the long black hair. That was... Well, they both had long black hair. One had straight hair, though, and one had wavy hair. No, one had an obvious nose job. Karen and one Crawford. Didn't. Which one were you into? Both of them. The first one. <laughs> Judge Edo liked both. <laughs> the one who lived near Ron Goldman? I am not allowed to discuss that. <laughs> the one who worked at the restaurant and... They both worked at the restaurant. Spent seven hours trying to figure out if the time punching machine at the Metzaluna restaurant <laughs> works properly. How funny was that? <laughs> you know what? None of that makes any sense. OJ did it. Let's get. It. Meanwhile, the biggest news is they now have like they're 100... wiping out all the white. There members. are no white people left. There's a hundred percent black jury. <laughs> Yow! How did that happen? Well, it's not a hundred percent black. Oh yeah, there's an Hispanic. No, there's a couple of people. I heard this guy yeah. say this the other day. There's a couple of people. They can't tell what they are. Only one. yeah. <laughs> Mud people. <laughs> Mixed race. <laughs> They ain't got such convoluted backgrounds. I'm I know. Not sure what to label them. Oh Christ! How did that? I mean, how could you be working that thing and be the prosecuting attorney? OJ's black and allow all black people. You know, black people can't make this decision. Oh stop! They can't. He must be planning this party already. Oh yeah. Oh well, yeah. He's out. Johnny Cochran said he loves this jury. Oh yeah. And I also, you know, now they're saying that this other juror, the white woman. Was let off the case because she and O.J. shared a doctor. Yeah. The doctor who's going to testify that yeah. O.J. had arthritis. Right. But I also heard a report, I think it was in the Los Angeles Daily News, that there was a shoving match. Between the jurors? Between that juror and another of the black jurors. Boy. Yeah. And I heard one of the black jurors was reading something called the Black Experience or something. Um, oh, dear. Well, that's oh, why dear. Judge Ito's... <laughs> Uh, instructions to the jury yesterday were really detailed. You have it there. Yeah. Instead of his usual pronouncement yeah. that uh, they aren't supposed to discuss the case, he got really specific. I'm going to get very specific now. Now, that long one, the first one. Right? Okay, I got I it. wasn't given an angel pin. <laughs> Hold on, here it is. When I say not to discuss the case, I mean everything that goes on here in the courtroom is not to enter into, is, is not to be a topic of your discussion. That means you're not to discuss how long the case is taking. You're not to discuss what Something good must have happened. You're not to discuss the apparel of the attorneys. You're not to discuss the personalities of the court and personnel. Anything that is connected with this case, you may not discuss amongst yourselves. Give OJ, the, give OJ the keys to the cell now so he can let himself out. <laughs> you people are just not supposed to discuss this case. There was a lawyer... Uh, no cheap jokes. There was a lawyer in the New York Post today <laughs> who said um, the evidence against OJ, the case against OJ is so strong mm -hmm. that the only thing that could not convict OJ is a racial decision mm -hmm. by the jury. Isn't that amazing? Well, it would be really sad for this entire country if O.J. walks in the face of insurmountable evidence. Right. Because then we might as well be two armed camps. Right. He might as well just say, you are not to pay attention to any of the overwhelming evidence against him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because justice won't be possible at all. I like all whole... whites will then start voting for the white defendants, and all right. the blacks will start voting for the black defendants, and all the all the criminals will run, will be uh, continuing to run around in the street. Right. Well, anyway, stupid freaks. Plus, he's a black guy. The blacks ought to come out and like riot in the streets and oh, stuff. Please. That'd be cool. Now they'll riot for OJ. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> OJ. <laughs> Well, there's a guy you could riot for. You're going to riot. You know you're going to riot, so you might as well riot over that guy. You couldn't riot for anything. Riot or something good. Get a free uh, ham or something. <laughs> you know. Go to the supermarket and take everything out of there. Empty it all out. <laughs> Whatever the hell you can loot.
Meanwhile, in the O.J. trial yesterday, right. the testimony given by witnesses was kind of boring, but the fighting between the lawyers was kind of fun, <laughs> and they had to dismiss another of the jurors, so they're down to one white juror. Oh. <laughs> And you know what? I love... I mean, where is this Marsha Clark? Where is everybody? Are they dreaming? Black people aren't going to convict O.J. There's now five men and seven women. Is that right? And you know what? CNN, like when they announced it, and they had like a chart showing you what the ethnic breakdown now is. Yes. But they're afraid to really say... They, they won't come out and just say, listen, you don't know black guys are going to convict O.J. This is a real problem here. They just give you a chart and let you draw your own conclusion. And what do they say? You know well, what they say. I resent that, Howard, because oh. uh, I'm a black person who would convict O.J. if the evidence was there. You're a rare person, Robin. I'm not rare, I don't think. I think that you oh. and the media try to paint us all with one brush, like we all think the same. You don't? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You know that, uh, who is it that got off? Oh, you talking about that limerick uh, now? Yeah, oh, come on. It's absurd. Everyone votes along racial lines. In fact... Uh, one guy in the paper today said he was a lawyer. He said, case against OJ is very strong. No, he? you're you're misquoting this. No, I'm not. I read what, read he, what he said. That Read it now. Read it now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, you're talking about Raul Felder. Raul Felder. He thinks the defense strategy is so weak that the switch probably won't turn the tide for Simpson. The only thing that can no, 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 no. Wait a minute, is voting along racial lines, is what he said. And read the paragraph before that. I Robert just did. Said. No, you didn't. You didn't I read the whole thing. Too. He said the case against OJ is very strong. The only thing that could go afoul. The, the... I told you everything he said. Give me that paper. <laughs> Here we go. You ready? Go ahead. All right, here we go. You ready? Yeah, I'll well, give you a second. But you're not. <laughs> I think the jury is the only thing O.J. has going for him at this point, said lawyer Bruce Smurdy. Where's the statement about the, the case being so strong? All right, are you ready? Yes. All right, here we go. <laughs> well, don't you think that's a pretty strong statement? <laughs> You need either further? I think the jury is the, is the only thing going for O.J. That's not what you said, Howard. No. <laughs> Let me see. It's not there. Mm, I saw it. <laughs> they changed it. This is a different copy of the paper that I had. <laughs> yeah. That still says the same thing, though. Not quite. But to me, it says the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> You wanted it to say that, but it doesn't exactly say what you I said. think the jury is the only thing O.J. has going for him at this point. What does that mean? That means if they vote along racial lines, O.J. gets off, but he doesn't know that for a fact. It means there's a very strong case against O.J. if that's the only thing he's got going for him. That you're reading into it. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I disagree. I disagree. Absolutely. <laughs> I hate to call you on your reading comprehension. I know you scored very well on the SAT. I got. A, I had a combined 900. I don't make any mistake about it. I didn't do that well, but I know what I read. And I'm telling you, my comprehension says that OJ don't have a case except for the black people on the jury. Go ahead, Robin. Go ahead. Yes. How many are there? Nine black people? There are. Let me see. I'll give you the breakdown. Right. There are 12 people. Now, on how the does jury. that happen? Nine blacks. One white, an Hispanic, and one mixed race person. Mixed race? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> mixed race. Can't even identify the guy. That's how. That's how. He's a shame. He's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> that must be some mixture. Would that be representative of the population? Absolutely. Well, a lot of people are saying that it's a totally skewed jury. They must have uh, paneled heavily in the black community because. Even in Los Angeles. Really? I think that all of Los Angeles is black from this jury. Well, but I think there will be like 13 to 15 percent of the population. Well, they do say, listen, most people who have anything going on in their lives are able to get out of jury duty. <laughs> and they have said that a lot of poor people now do this jury duty, as a matter of fact, as a way of earning some money. It's 12 bucks a day. And uh, from what I understand, they're living in the lap of luxury. This is fun. Yeah. So a lot of black people do serve on juries. And there was a co an item in Cindy's column today that said one of the jurors was reading a book on the black experience. Yeah. 
<laughs> that, that, that can only help OJ. And also a report that there was a shoving match between the white woman who was dismissed yesterday yeah. and one of the other jurors. So, of course, they dismissed the white woman. All right, Robin? Well, I don't know what happened, Howard. I'm just telling you about reports in the paper. I don't jump to conclusions. But L.A. isn't all black. I mean, it is mostly I, Mexican, isn't it? Well, I don't know what the other part of it is. Right. I told you, 13 to 15 percent black. Wow. And the jury is 99 percent black. Yeah. <laughs> now, how do you let that happen if you're Marsha Clark? I don't know. Do you think she went to sleep? I don't know, man. Maybe she was busy pinning herself with angel buttons. We were going to get into that. Also, um... I was going to bring up a point, and it just slipped away from me. So let's go on. $12 a day in revenge on Whitey. Maybe that's what you're going to say. There you go. Lying around the block. Oh, I know what it was. Not only Cindy now, but a lot of other people are saying they can't read this jury because they're not reacting to anything. They're in a coma. I don't know. Are these people understanding what's going on? A lot of them said they were, yesterday they totally lost, and they were yawning and everything. <laughs> And you know what? The, you know what I saw one lawyer say. One of the guys that you know, the guy that replaced, because it was a man who replaced yeah. this white woman, black yeah. man. They said he was one of the guys they saw nodding off a lot. Yeah. In the trial. Well, he figured he was an alternate. What does he have to do? Mine's <laughs> already made up. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> the man it in it then. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. But I mean, you know, uh, one guy said I saw a lawyer he says if you're going to hold this jury's attention, you better draw more pictures and have. You know, crap. Oh, no, you didn't hear somebody. Swear to that. God, on CNN, he says you got to draw. Maybe it was even that more woman. More audio been, visual. Visual aids, more pictures and graphs to try and keep the jury interested. You got to be really entertaining with yeah. the jury. Yeah, you need to be an arts and crafts teacher. What do you got? Attention deficit disorder? Yeah. Maybe some field trips, some subtitles. Well, you they know. are planning a field trip. Yeah, you know, right. To the oh, good. Of oh boy, we get to go out today. <laughs> Fresh air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the big bone of contention yesterday. Oh. The big bone of contention's right here, Ron. <laughs> and I think you need it. It's been a long show. The big bone of contention yeah. was bone of contention. Marcia Clark's jewelry. Right. Well, she's a, she's a, there's something wrong with that woman. So after uh, they got into court, there was a big meeting about the juror, and then this jewelry. Here's Johnny Cochran arguing. Hunt <laughs> This is an orchestrated thing. So, we have an obligation for our client to bring this up. We brought it out. You know, I'm not going to belabor it any, any further. And she can make these long speeches. But the fact remains, she has it on. She shouldn't have it on. She knows she shouldn't have it on. And we ask you to rule on it. Of course she shouldn't Marcia have it on. Clark is wearing an angel. Like, she was wearing an angel pen yesterday. If you remember the testimony of Nicole Brown's sister, Denise, she was wearing angel earrings, and they were very prominent during her testimony. And Marcia showed up in court yesterday with a pen resembling those earrings as a show of sympathy with the family. Yeah, you can't do that. Here is her defense. I would so strongly urge the court to deny this ridiculous request and yet another request to suppress any sympathy or human emotion that may be um, appropriately given to the side of the victims <laughs> who, after all, uh, are two young people who were brutally murdered. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> Here's Judge Ito's ruling. Now, make sure you get to, uh, number eight, Howard. I have it. Mine, uh, get that hair fixed. <laughs> pull up your skirt. Not only take off that jewelry, but try to wear a little shorter skirt and... Show off your boobies a little more. I'd like to see those topless pictures without the bar. If I may have those put into evidence. Maybe you just better rip off your top since you don't know what to put on it. <laughs> Let's go to the sidebar. Smell my beard. <laughs> Let's go to the clam bar. <laughs> I agree with you. They are very subtle and they're very small. Uh, but I don't believe... Jewelry, uh, it sounds like the sh Home Shopping Network. Very subtle, very, very small. small. It's appropriate for counsel to wear one of these. So she has to take it off. I wear a plastic watch. Did you hear he started talking about how he wears a plastic watch? Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, the judge had to be very specific with the jury mm. when he gave his instructions at the end of the day. Usually he just says, please don't talk about the case. And is very, uh, you know, out of there in short order. Yesterday he gave them quite detailed instructions as to what they are allowed and not allowed to do. Please don't get in fist fight with other juror. <laughs> when I say not to discuss the case, I mean everything that goes on here in the courtroom is not to enter into, is, is not to be a topic of your discussion. That means you're not to discuss how long the case is taking, 
You're not to discuss what goes on at sidebar. You're not to discuss the apparel of the attorneys. You're not to discuss the personality and the personnel. Anything that is connected with this case, you may not discuss amongst yourselves. So there. Could you repeat that? You are not to fart in your hand and smell it. <laughs> what else is in the news, Robin? Carol Shire. Mr. Dani, tra le mani dello stesso presidente della Commissione Europea, due giorni dopo un pacco con il libro in fuma. I think that did you watch the OJ trial yesterday? I saw bits and pieces of it. I was in and out. I think I think that dog is guilty of something. <laughs> well, he had a lot of blood on him. He might have done it. <laughs> he had more blood on him than OJ did. <laughs> How did OJ get away so quickly? That, that's a very disturbing breed of dog, that Akito. Why do you say that? You see that dog's face? That looks like a human face. <laughs> Have you seen that dog's face? It's got blue eyes and it's got like like a it looks like a human kind of face. Yeah. Expressive, as opposed to a yeah. dog face that usually shows nothing. Yeah, more human than OJ's face. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> Actually, the dog was more concerned. Yeah. He kept at it until somebody yeah. came. The dog really bums me out. I mean, I mean, and actually, it made me want to get a dog even more because I really do want to get a dog. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, that's pretty cool when you get your head chopped off. The dog keeps, like, trying to get back to you and, and warn people and tell yeah, people. Yeah, but he was no Lassie. Lassie never yeah. has that much trouble getting through to people. Yeah, I mean, this, this dog, <laughs> some, guy, some, guy, some guy comes along. He's got the dog. The dog can't lead him to the house. He gives his dog to his friend. But what was cool about it is the dog kept scratching at the door at the friend's house saying, right. you know, I want to get out. Yeah. You know, those guys were pretty brave. Uh, Steve Schwab, number one. By the way, Steve Schwab, I have a link to St uh, Steve Schwab. Why is that? Did you see him on the stand yesterday? Yes, I did. Steve Schwab is the guy who found the dog. Mm -hmm. Steve Schwab was one of the guys who uh, did transcription work for me for my book. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, he's mentioned in my book. Hmm. I give him a credit at the uh, beginning. I'll have to look for his name. Yeah, because I took a lot of tapes and had to transcribe them, so I hired about five different transcribers, and Steve is one of them. So you're involved in this case. You could be called. In a strange way, yes, and I do have information <laughs> about you know Steve what? Schwab. What cracked me up was the defense team trying to show that the dog was just stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, they, it, like, no stupider than OJ, believe me. <laughs> Didn't the dog go to the wrong house? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it, it's Didn't not an stop exact sign. <laughs> but you're right when you say the, do the dog was no lasting. <laughs> But it made me want to get a dog because look at this dog. He was scratching at the door, yeah. you know, screaming to get out so that someone would find this body. Yeah. And he did manage to lead this, uh, this God knows what, what ethnic, ethnic group that guy was. <laughs> I think he's a, a dothead. I don't know what he was. <laughs> Mahmoud. Mahmoud. What was his name? I'm, I'm sure. looking for it because he you had a even, weird name. I don't think there was a vowel in there. <laughs> that guy in the stand yesterday who had the dog, who was Steve Schwab's friend. Where is it? Bostepi. Yeah. yeah. Bostepi. And, and Johnny Cochran was like, well, thank you, Mr. Bostepsky. <laughs> you know, you know. Did you hear what no, they, no. they asked Bostepi. his name? He said his name and instantaneously, instantaneously spelled it afterwards because he knows people can't believe it. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. True. You know what was real annoying? That old lady. The one with the hearing aid. Yeah. yeah the everyone, one who heard the dog barking. Yeah, everyone was kissing her ass. I wanted to take her and just bury her right then and there. <laughs> Not even wait for the funeral. <laughs> She was driving me nuts. How everyone, you know, I said the big smile. She was so excited to be there. Yeah. Well, a lot of people, they seem to be, you know, all dressed up and yeah. fixing themselves up. And... Hey, it's a big shot on TV. Yeah. Steve Schwab is a star now. I knew him when he was a transcriber. <laughs> he also, I think, wrote the Barbie Twins comic. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know he had that credit behind him. They're trying to keep that out of court because it'll ruin his credibility. <laughs> That's what it was said in the newspaper today. <laughs> That's not something you want out there. Yeah, try to keep that low, uh, low key until the trial is over. I don't know. I'd be proud of that. Why not? Hey, it's honest work. It's hard work. Guy didn't chop his wife's head off. That's right. Nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. I see OJ yawning. What are we boring him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just going on too long. <laughs> I know the one. You know, it's probably a ten-hour day for OJ. He yawns one time. The guy probably can't even sleep at night. I know. He yawns one time. They put that picture in the paper. <laughs> like OJ's bored by the whole proceeding. <laughs> You know, it's great. Isn't the press just great? Me not guilty and get it over. Well, that's just like when I was at the Pataki inauguration. Uh, the guy accused me of looking at my watch and fidgeting in my chair. Yeah. And I was like, wow. They trained on you for 10 hours. Yeah, I didn't know I did that. I kind of enjoyed the whole thing. <laughs> I'm the only guy who said after Pataki's speech, I didn't think it was too long. Everyone else, my mom, my dad were like, it was too long. 
Yeah, but the guy in the newspaper nevertheless put his spin on it. So you fidget. Yeah. If I was Steve Schwab, I'd start thinking about doing a nude Marsha Clark comic. She's a big star now. So, um, I started thinking, like, I really want a dog, because if a dog is that cool that they could, you know... Oh, they're terribly loyal. Yeah, I mean, because my cat would, would care less if I got my head chopped off. I say, if I fell down in my house, my cats would eat me. Right. <laughs> Eventually, yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. They could care less about you. They can't lead you anywhere. No. They can't tell you anything. Yeah, so I'm thinking about getting a dog. One big dog. <laughs> big stupid dog. But I don't like those Akitos because, man, they, they look like people. They'll eat you. Yeah. I didn't like that. But, although that dog seems pretty cool. And you know what? That guy Steve Schwab is pretty brave because I'll tell you something. If I was out walking my dog and a dog came up to me howling and stuff, covered in blood, I would just like, you know, I'm not going to bring this into my house. Well, you know, there was that one question Carl Douglas asked him. Uh, you saw blood on the dog's paws? Yes. Well, did you bend down to see? You? Uh, you don't go near a dog you think is wounded. Yeah. That guy, he says, yeah, I examined the paws. No, he said, I looked, but I didn't touch. Oh. You know, he's like, well, if you thought the dog was so hurt, yeah. why didn't you touch him? Well, that's a stupid thing. Nobody does yeah, that. Yeah, let's see, you'd do that. <laughs> and then that other guy, he like he went out and he, um, you know, whatever that, that Indian uh, guy's name sucru. was. Sucru. <laughs> sucru, I thought that's like a sugar substitute. Not <laughs> uh, sucrose. But uh, Sucru was... Uh, he took the dog, walked along, found a dead body. Now, as soon as I found the dead body, I would have tore ass out of there. <laughs> he was, like, pretty calm. He went and knocked on people's doors. Because, first of all, when I see a dead body, I go, wait a second. The killer could still be here. That's right. What am I doing? I said to my wife, Where have you dead found person. a dead body? Yeah. What did he say? I said to my, I said to my wife, a dead person here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you see that guy? Like, was he in a coma? That guy, Sukiyaki? <laughs> he was like, correct, 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 correct. Correct. So I turned to my wife. I said, there's a dead body here. Oh. Boy, you guys must have some pretty wild conversations. Yeah, that, I, I you wonder know. what else they've seen. Yeah. If that doesn't... Week, what movie you want to go to? If that doesn't raise your heckle. Oh, I'll go next door. Tell old man. <laughs> old man. There is a dead body next door. I'll need to call 911. I don't think this is the kind of neighborhood where you see a dead body every day. <laughs> I don't know. Wouldn't that well, most people said, I heard a dog howling all night, and I could see it from my window, but I wasn't going out there. Yeah. I'm not going to go deal with a dog. Dog's crazy. So the woman called 911 and said, hey, can you go shut that dog up? And the guy goes, we don't deal with dogs. <laughs> not even the police will go. <laughs> you know, we're busy beating up Rodney King. We don't have time for dogs. <laughs> you know, there's more fun going on than you know about, yeah, lady. There's drive-bys in South Central. We're not coming over there. So the old lady wasn't going to go out and check the dog. Why should she? Well, quite frankly, if a dog came up to you that <laughs> animated, you would have been gone anyway. You're damn right. <laughs> I'm the biggest pussy on two feet. I know to stay away from trouble. Imagine O.J. still there. Body. Imagine O.J. still out there killing, and he sees a sukiyaki. <laughs> taking care of the witnesses. <laughs> yeah. And this guy's like, oh, there's that dead body. Hello. Okay. He's a brave guy. Those two guys, Schwab and, and Sukiyaki, are, are pretty you brave. Sure that's bravery? How did they instantly... Are you saying it's stupidity? How did they know the dog didn't do it? The dog did do it, Jackie. You're oh. brilliant. How did they know that? Because, the because the, their throats were cut with a knife. Do you think well, a dog no, can do it? You don't know. I mean, you see a dead body and you see blood on the dog. Wouldn't you be panicked? Yes, absolutely. I would not, I would not go near a dog covered near. with blood. Exactly. Because to me, it could be a, an animal that just finished killing anything. Exactly. Jeez. Or an animal that is hurt that's now right. in pain, a mode right. of... Self-protection right. and he'll attack anything in sight. Yeah, those guys are pretty amazing. That's what I would think. The dog is hurt. He might hurt me. And that's why I never, like, I hear people screaming and stuff. I never go out to help because I go, there's always some guy out there who's much more competent at this <laughs> than I am. Who really, you know, there are guys who know what to do. Don't look to you if you're right. in trouble. That's I know I don't know what to do. I'll get out there and panic. Well, uh, on the phone is, excuse me, on the satellite. Is he on the phone or the satellite? Satellite. Wow. You seem impressed. There's a guy named uh, Lawrence Schiller. Yes. Used to be known as Larry Schiller, but became a whole big shot once he wrote the uh, O.J. book. Once he grew up. Now, uh, he... Lawrence? How are you, Howard? I, I thought you were going to hire this guy to reorganize your mind. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, Lawrence, are you making jokes? No, no, no. I'm getting this feedback. I oh, I have see. To turn down your speaker on your side. Let me see. Uh, why is there feedback, uh, Scott, my smoky engineer? Push this down. Why would you? Let me ask you something, Scott. 
Why would you leave if it isn't set up right? <laughs> I didn't hear the feedback. You didn't hear the feedback? Okay. We have because he wants to prove to you, Howard, you need to be reorganized. How are you now? Are you getting an echo? No, I'm fine, Howard. Now you're fine. Hey, so, Lawrence, I've been seeing you around on TV, but these guys don't know how to interview you. Well, I don't know how to interview myself. Well, let me, uh, let me handle this, then. Okay. This is the guy who got to go to O.J.'s cell with him. And write the book. First off, O.J., say anything to you about me? Well, the first thing is, Howard, we never discussed you. We did discuss that this was O.J.'s book and not mine. I wasn't going to be an investigative journalist in this instance. He had a lot he wanted to say. It was like a dam bursting, you know, water, torrents of water coming out. He was all over the world wall like a shotgun. And my job was to organize what he wanted to say and find a form to put it into a book and eventually on an audio tape. And that was saying... different than I normally do for your friend Norman Mailer or your old friend Albert Goldman, you know, when I've done thousands of interviews for their books. Right. But are you saying that O.J. was crazed? No, I'm not saying he was crazy. He's saying he had a lot to get off his... It sounds like he said he was shot off the wall. But he had and a lot and to say, and when you look at all the transcripts, you see it's all there. No, this but first of all... 300,000 letters. There were bundles of it all over his cell, and he wanted to communicate. First of all... If Barbara Walters didn't want him, or Larry King, he would find a way to communicate. Lawrence. So obviously, Howard, he needed to make some money. Oh, boy. we got a train wreck right going here. Right on, right on the audio tape. He hey, Lawrence. Right in the book. Oh. Lawrence, even and a train you know, comes to a stop. He was out of jail on bail. Oh. Oh. Can he hear us? In a sound stage. Hey, Lawrence. He's working maybe with three writers. Hey, Lawrence. There's no difference of him being out of jail or in jail. His rights are... Uh, who even is? The, right to vote. the only <laughs> difference Lawrence. is the white Bronco and Al Collins he, drove him down. Can he hear me? Wait a second. What maybe happened? He's How did you he was on a flight from justice, so he's not out he on bail. He can't hear us. Hey, Lawrence, can you hear me? I can hear you wonderful. What are you, you, you just, uh, you're just talking, you're not answering. <laughs> you're, 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 Holly, I'm trying to interrupt Holly, you a little Holly, bit. The only way to do a good show with you is to take charge. <laughs> no, 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 Lawrence, let me slow you down, uh, pal. Howard, this is, a, this, this is, is Lawrence. the greatest challenge of my life. Lawrence, this Lawrence, is a Lawrence. challenge than Calm Gary Gilmore Lawrence. or Madam New or... Where is my meditation Lawrence. tape? Where is my meditation tape, and Fred? And I've got to tell you, when you want to talk about uh, <laughs> Lee Harvey Holy Oswald, I'll do two hours with you one-on-one. Wow, no, no, no chance of that. Mailer and I just finished this book called Oswald's Holy Tale mackerel. of the American Dream. We went to Russia. We interviewed the KGB. And you got to have Norman This guy's on. out of when control. You with Norman, you can have me. Wow. It's a, you know, it's a miracle O.J. didn't kill you, Lars. Yeah, how did he ever get a word in? I don't think he killed... Howard, I don't think he killed anybody because if he did... Right. ...get involved in this crime, if he was responsible in some way for the death of his ex-wife... Uh, it no longer exists in his mind. And I've interviewed enough people that have committed antisocial acts over the last 30 years that you can't put that out of your mind after 15 interviews in 30 hours. Don't you so think... I've come to the opinion, based upon my interviews alone, yes. that O.J. Simpson did not commit these crimes. But if the evidence in court shows otherwise, if the jury is convinced without a reasonable, beyond a reasonable doubt, and it is unmistakable that O.J. committed the crimes... Then I got to tell you, I'll re-examine what I've done, and obviously I got a book of denial, and I got a tape of denial. Hey, wait a but second, right Larry. Now, based upon my interviews, <laughs> O.J. did not commit the crime. Larry, let me first of all let me play you something so you can relax a little. You're you're you're, you're hyper. I can't relax. No, it's no, listen to me. Clock in the morning. Do what this guy says. Listen, listen. Every time you inhale, inhale, feel that you are filling your body ah. with total peace and tranquility. Can you hear that? Each time you... Are oh, you doing it? Lawrence. I can hear it. You are shot can out of I a cannon. Can understand it? No. No, listen to me, Lawrence. Listen yes. to me. Listen to me. Howard, am I as good as Ross Perot on your show? No, Ross Perot never came on my show. Listen oh, to me. shoot. Lawrence, you are telling me that um, you don't think that O.J. Committed this murder. Committed this murder. That is what you're saying. I don't believe he was involved in this crime at all based upon my interviews with him. Now, I've interviewed a lot of isn't people. Isn't it possible that psychologically? Isn't none it, of them can really hide it. <laughs> isn't it possible psychologically that somebody can snap and therefore just go into a total denial and say, I didn't do it. I'm telling you, I didn't do it. I had nothing to do with it. Howard, you're 100% right, but I've got to tell you. And you're not a criminal expert. to me. Two stories side by side, mm -hmm. in tandem, yes. that made me make up my mind. And that was when he talked about the death of his father and how God had given him five minutes with his father. And then he automatically started to cry and talk about why God did not give him at least one minute with his 
ex-wife before she died and how horrible it must have been when she saw the killer and what was going through her mind. The way he told me those stories, the way he broke down and cried. Eh, this was not on. a man in denial. This was I think that's a guy who's afraid of going to jail for the rest of his life. Going from one event to another correlating the two events, putting them in tandem, and i got to tell, tell you, that was a very convincing moment for me. Hey, Lawrence, is he uh, masturbating in the cell, or he, oh. he still, uh, can I ask that? Is that uh, a legitimate How question? Would only a man like you would answer, and there are some questions that have no answers. And really? That doesn't mean somebody's withholding the answer. Howard, and, and, lift and, yourself up, rise above it. This is an important issue. <laughs> this is a trial of the century. You think that's uh, an outrageous question? Which is exploiter. You think that's an, an outrageous question? For this interview, yes. Really? Well, I'll strike that from the but, record. But because but, I respect you a lot more than that question. Whatever producer wrote the question for you and put it in front of you. Did it? No one I wrote it. What are fired. you talking Came about? Out of my own mind. Organization. <laughs> Let's get rid of those types of questions. And what about OJ? When he, when you took a look at his notes and things, uh, I noticed that in some of these love letters he wrote to Nicole, he spelled the word start S T A R T E. <laughs> Well, I have dyslexia, too. Yeah, but come on. When I get done with my editor and my grammar, you know, it's all cleaned up. And, you know, you can yeah, tell a little bit on this show. I see. So OJ's, uh, you know, doesn't come clean to the writing world, and neither do I. Now, who do you but, think killed uh, Nicole? Know, we express ourselves in the best way we can. Who does OJ the think killed Nicole? The moment. Who does OJ think uh, killed Nicole? I think he feels that the answer to the murders lies in the world that Faye Resnick inhabited. What he doesn't mean? like the pro. He didn't like the fact that she rose up in their lives again, a woman who was involved in drugs. In fact, that checked her in, checked herself in only two days before. And he was drug related. About the third time. Mm -hmm. He didn't like drugs around the house. He didn't like the fact that Faye Resnick was living in that house with his kids. Uh, and uh, I think that disturbs him. And I think he believes the answer to the murders are there. He knows that even if he's acquitted, the public is going to think he's guilty. That so, never be doesn't O.J. have a, a, the real the killers are caught? And that's only going to come about not by the police department, who could but investigate by yes. this crime. Why isn't O.J. taking this Faye Resnick then and investigating her and getting deep into what was going on? I don't why know isn't the defense taking the tact that we can present an alternate case? Yeah, because that's not the way our judicial system works. You know it as well as I do. I don't know and anything. But we're not lawyers. <laughs> is to show the jury he didn't commit the crime. I think we're it not show Terry if you Mason. presented some you know, other... We're not I think the evidence... Television. Let me say hey, something. Oh, here's the answer to the crime, <laughs> and Lawrence. everybody looks the other way. Lawrence, let me say Howard, something. you're an intelligent man. And Are you reading, you Lawrence? A long yeah. way. He is, right? You He's know right. what the first one is. He is reading. He's reading. Is. And after the first one wow. of business, I'm sure he there's going to be a public outcry. He knew what questions we were going to ask and wrote answers? He's like Kreskin. Lawrence, are you reading from a piece of paper? No, you I have to tell you this is extemporaneous. You're I'm kidding me! You're amazing. Days at Pepperdine, and I really enjoyed it. Howard, I got to tell you the list today. I didn't know I was doing Howard Stern until about three hours ago, and right. I said, "Thank God, somebody is finally going to hold me." to the ground and Howard, you make, I gotta tell you yes. this is really enjoyable and one day I hope to talk to you about Lee Harvey Oswald well let me just say something you make G. Gordon Liddy sound short winded I gotta tell you the first guy but I, I gotta tell you something uh, the evidence to me is overwhelming. The blood in the car, the blood on the socks. Yeah, how does, does O.J. So explain that? Howard, you're, you're right. I respect what you're saying, but you know enough about DNA. That yes, I DNA do. DNA does not force I mean, does not prove that somebody is that. What it does is it excludes people. I don't have blood on my socks. The percentage Forget DNA. Where'd the blood in, come and that's from? That's what happened. Why is there blood on OJ socks? Is in that Lawrence. Percentage, but there are lots of problems no. with DNA. Lawrence. And I don't think that's <laughs> I the only thing which this case stands on. I give up. If I was investigating it, I'd look at all four legs. And you've got a timeline, which is one leg. Four you've got legs. DNA, which is another OJ leg. OJ has four you've legs. Got motive, which is another leg. And spousal <laughs> abuse doesn't mean motive. Oh, and come on. Sure it does. The I'm guy was a stalker. Logic. The guy was a stalker. Wait a second. Well, Let me I tell you something? something. A wife abuser well, stalker. I got divorced the first time, I was interested in who my ex-wife was going to Well, I'm looking with. into your background. Was too. I'm going to send you to jail. You is your wife did it with the drape still alive? So anybody walking down the street could watch her on the couch. Is your life still alive, Lawrence? My first? Yes. yes. She's a wonderful woman. There you go. And, you know, she raised my first three kids tremendously. Right. But I got to tell you, uh, she never conducted herself in public the way I think Nicole Brown did. So what? What got to do with anything? anything? Look at the way O.J. conducted on. himself. Look at the way O.J. Do you think uh, O.J. used to he, beat her? He's not innocent either. None of us are. I am. We've all got trucks that have run over us. Lawrence. A lot of track marks. Lawrence, you know, you, know you know the truth. You know the truth. You know the truth, Lawrence.
You That's know the right. truth. You know, we're not on the wall. Get uh, down into the gutter with the rest of us sinners. Lawrence. That's what I say. Lawrence, you know the truth in this case. Deep well, down I inside. I the detective that solved the crime. You know O.J. cut off those two heads. I, I know you know, know it. You're too off, smart Lawrence. for this. You're too smart for this. You're not a dumb guy. No, I hope I don't have a pair of socks in my house with blood on them. I don't have a There's Bronco. There's no blood in your car? There's no blood in my car. But, uh, you know, I do my job the best There's no blood on the bottom of your bed? Lawrence, there is no blood on the bottom of my bed. There is no blood on my socks right now. There is no blood in my car right now. Can I tell you If I saw my wife in bed with a whole football team... But that doesn't mean that you didn't kill Well, unless you get a videotape... a lot of evidence, Howard. We're not going to run away from the evidence. Lawrence, what the evidence Lawrence, what you are saying is... unless there is a lot of blood the police on the very first day... Lawrence. Took some blood from OJ, and about twenty percent of it, from what I understand, is missing. What happened? Lawrence, Lawrence, you know, you know every that every police department. <laughs> Howard, every Lawrence, police you're not department listening to me. Hey. All of these drug cases. If you saw your wife, of there are oh. too many guys getting away from crimes, and I'm not saying that they. How did they get OJ? Hurt OJ intentionally, right? But there's a lot that goes on, and you and I know it, Lawrence. So you think the police is framed right OJ? Nobody is wrong. So if, the police if framed OJ. Falsified the evidence. They've got to be. No, I think he's saying the that. drug deal is. OJ Simpson committed the crime. He's got to pay. His I give up. I got to say, I, I can't take and it. And there's no question about it. But Lawrence, innocent until proven guilty, and the jury's going to decide. Lawrence, thank you for joining us. You are Lawrence Schiller. You co-wrote the OJ book. I want to tell you, and it is available on Time Warner Audio Books as well. Am I correct? Thank you, Howard. It is. Thank you, Lawrence. Wow, Lawrence is man. Lawrence can rap. I'm exhausted. Well, I tried. What I wanted to say to Lawrence... Sounds guiltier than OJ. <laughs> there you go. I, I, what I wanted to say to Lawrence is, if you saw your wife in bed with a whole football team, would you Doesn't kill her? Doesn't mean you go kill her. Right. Judge Ito, will, I predict, will never put him on the stand. You they, know, one, in one breath he says OJ lo uh, loves his wife, and then OJ wants to assassinate her character after she's dead. I don't get it. I don't know. With, like, she was single. So she had some sex. O.J. was doing it with everybody uh, and beating her and throwing her out in the cold. Yeah. Oh, um, please. Look, look. <laughs> I don't know. Everyone's all heated up. I just, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Will O.J. walk nine uh, blacks on the jury? <laughs> Very good chance. Oh, that's, Very that's good a chance. shameful statement. Hate to say it, but a it's true. Shameful statement. Listen, it's proven. They're already fighting. They're already fighting. <laughs> they say that woman from yesterday who was kicked off the jury, her husband is denying that his wife had a shoving match with one of the jurors and that there was any fighting. <laughs> but that was a shameful statement, Howard. I will say it well, again. Well, I, I am. I'm you not afraid to say it again. African Americans will. You do not know these people, and once again, yes. you are making a blanket statement that all black people think the same way. No, I think all black people think the same way when it comes to not all black people, but uh, a majority of blacks are very hesitant. Listen, we you had a time. Gone out and interviewed blacks? We had yes. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> I grew up with blacks. I got to tell you something. For many years in this country. If a black man was on trial, it automatically meant conviction. Yeah. Now, what happens is, and maybe it's maybe it's the proper knee-jerk response. Nowadays, I I personally think times have changed somewhat. But nowadays, what it means is, if a black guy a black guy sits down and he looks at a case where there's a black man accused, he wants to go overboard and say the guy is innocent no matter what the evidence is because Let they're just framing him. Let me say uh, something to you because yeah. you're missing one of the points. Yes. The, that has been the case in situations where the police are giving the majority of the testimony. Right. That's true. The exculpatory testimony. To uh, talk to Lawrence Schiller, who wrote the O.J. book, about how I would never buy a copy of the book, but he's a hard guy to talk to. <laughs> I would never buy that book because I would never. It would have even been fascinating to know how he felt about O.J. before he talked to him. I don't know. We just the guy can't filibuster. I, I think if you're going to defend O.J., you got to filibuster. You know, you got to sort of like That's the only way to do it. I yeah, think. to sort of bludgeon. Questions get in there edgewise. You're dead. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Sound like he believed what he's saying. Well, I think he. Be I, I think on some level he believes. It. I'm not calling the guy a liar. I'm just saying that. The point is, he just wants to ignore the facts. I mean, the moment you bring up blood yeah. or any kind of evidence at all, yes, 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 I'm not ignoring the evidence. Right. I mean, the evidence. The evidence is so overwhelming that uh, you know you just can't dismiss it and say, "Gee, Faye Resnick lived in a fast world, therefore 
Nicole lived in a fast world. Therefore, how come Faye Resnick isn't killed? OJ changed his mind by saying he had five minutes father and he wished he had a minute with Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> And what did he? What did uh, he? What did Lawrence say? Uh, OJ said, "I wish I could have had a minute before she was killed." Yeah. He, why didn't God give me a minute with Nicole? Well, God could have given you as many minutes as he wanted. You, you could have said, a whole lifetime. "You could have talked to her, and then killed her." It's all up to you. <laughs> yeah, he was in control. <laughs> but uh, I would have told Lawrence if I, I could have gotten a word in edgewise. I would never buy the OJ book, and the reason I would never buy the OJ book is I wouldn't contribute one penny. To his defense? To that freak's defense. Because I want to see him rot. Because I feel he did it. And I feel that there are two people who are dead. I hear the story. There's Ron Goldman. You know, he's a young guy just starting out in life, and he's got a whole bunch of things going on. And this guy shows up to give a pair of glasses, and this O.J. rips his throat out. Yeah, he's nice enough to do a favor for a friend. Wow, yeah. Teach you and be like me and don't do anybody a That's favor. That's right. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't, <laughs> don't a, get involved. Somebody calls up for glasses. Although I do think that if it had been not Ron, if it had not been Nicole who lost the glasses, but let's say. If the job had been taking him to her mother's house, say Nicole lived in Laguna and the mother lived right around the corner. It would have been. I don't think Ron would have run out the door. <laughs> I mean, it must have been pretty exciting to deliver glasses to that blonde bombshell. Mm. They were showing some pictures on Current Affair last night of Denise Brown, the sister. Yeah. When she used to model. Oh, I didn't wow. know. Wow. We. What a bod. Bathing suits with the big breasts. Mmm. Ooga. <laughs> nice face, too. You know, now you see her, she's a little older. You know, she's a little scranked out from crying and junk. But uh, you, could, you could doll her up. They had her old boyfriend on there, and he was no good-looking guy. He wasn't? No. Funny-looking guy, if you ask me. Well, they tried to imply while she was on the stand that she took advantage of her brother-in-law, O.J., dating his friends and so forth. Big deal. She was jealous of Nicole's life because she still has to live at home with her parents. Oh, so, so she killed Nicole? <laughs> I mean, what's the point? No, I think they were, you know, here was Denise representing her sister. Right. And they were trying to show that there was yeah. a lot of closeness while they were alive. And this woman was a wild... Party woman who just used the whole situation was jealous of her sister. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So let it, let OJ go. <laughs> Makes total sense. It's just always interesting to me what the pros I mean, what the defense attorneys choose to do with these witnesses it has nothing to do with whether they can impeach the evidence. It's changing a person's opinion of the person giving it. I was going to ask Lawrence Schiller if he had a morality problem doing this for OJ. Well, that's what I was saying. I wanted to know if he thought O.J. was guilty at the very beginning? Was, does he do anything for money? Or right. is he just justifying his participation now because right. by saying he thinks O.J. is innocent? Well, maybe if he calms down, we'll get another crack at him. <laughs> I just couldn't get anything going there. It was... I, I don't know. I tried. I did sit quiet for one of the answers, and then I saw her, you know, it was going on way too long, and I tried to jump in. And I really, truly believed he couldn't hear us the way he was going on. I thought there was something wrong. Damn, I really wanted to get into it with him, but now I'm kind of disappointed. Hey, Gary, where is he? Is he still on the satellite? Probably talking to someone else now. We can't, we can't, yeah, I, I can't start it. <laughs> I'm not going to take another stab at that. What's in the news, Robin? Well, since we're talking about O.J., we might as well continue. Yesterday, uh, Cato the dog was on trial. <coughs> Several witnesses came forward to talk about the dog barking <coughs> in order to fix the time of death between 10.15 and 10.20 on the night <coughs> of June 12th. <coughs> Cato, it seems, encountered a number of people. I don't even, I guess, why was he out? I never even got that story. Well, Kato the dog? Yeah. Or Kato the kid? <laughs> Kato the kid. Kato the surfer boy. Kato the dog. I mean, Can you imagine naming your dog Kato and you got a guy living there named Kato? Kato. Yeah, could. They really love this Kato. Yeah. Everything revolved around Kato. Have you named anyone after the people who help you around? Yeah, my cat's name is Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> but why was the dog loose? She probably left the door open. Well,. I don't think she left the door open. I think she came out, and when O.J. Uh, knifed her, I mean, the door was open, so the dog came out. All right. You buy that? 
It sounds reasonable to me. I can make up something else. <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to keep going, I'll do it. He let himself go. All right. So I guess she didn't expect to be out there long if she left the door open. That dog gave me the creeps, man. When you see the pictures of that dog, his face looks like a human face. I think you're reading into that. Take I a look at it. I looked at that face and I said, I don't know what you're talking about. It, 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 it's strangely human looking, those Akitas. I don't dig them. You like a dog that looks like a dog. Yeah, I don't know. His face looks human. I thought he was a cute dog. That face could smoke a cigarette and write a letter. <laughs> I don't know, but, uh, no, I think the dog is an incredible dog. I mean, the fact that it, you know, kept scratching until it could get out. And... Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Just the idea that here he was running around looking for help. Yeah. And he approached people. You know, he ran up to this stranger and was trying to indicate something, yeah. you know, as they walked along. And then when he turned, when this uh, Schwab guy turned the dog over to another one of his friends and that guy took him home. He kept scratching to get out so yeah. that he could go back to the house and help with the discovery of the body. So, I mean, that's an incredible thing to have happen. You know, like you wonder, what does a dog know? See, but like Lassie would have like taken his paw and written, you know, murder in the sand or something. The murder would have never occurred right. if Lassie had been around. Exactly. That's what I feel. And yeah. Cato is no Lassie. Right. There's not going to be a Cato the series. No. Although we're through, I've to, I pitched the E Network last night about doing Cato the series with the dog. Wouldn't that be a burn to Cato, Kalen? He's only trying to get on the E Network. Right. You take the dog instead. Yeah. But, oh yeah. We're we're hiring Cato. Oh, the guy, the surfer. No, no, no. Cato the dog. But Cato's like Colombo. He always comes after the crime he's been committed. Yeah. And helps to figure it and out. And he just warns people afterwards. Here's where the body is. I but, let the dog uh, host talk soup. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did everything but put him on the stand yesterday. Cato the dog. And then I thought that those guys were pretty brave dudes. They had, you know, the, the guys who discovered Cato because yeah. they see a dog with blood all over it and they're willing to like take it into the house and wrap it. Well, here's it. Stephen Schwab to uh, Stephen? tell us what he saw that night. Stephen Schwab. Stephen Schwab, who, by the way, uh, Robin, worked on my book. I'm amazed and... I am tied in with the O.J. case. Not at bizarre. all impressed. <laughs> I was watching to see if my name came up at all. He was one of the transcribers. Unfortunately, he was watching Mary Tyler Moore and Dick Van Dyke as opposed to the E! show or right. transcribing your tapes. First thing I noticed, it was above the pore, it was slightly on the leg. There was a, a streak of blood or a drip of blood on one of the back paws. Did you find any injury on the dog that could be the source of that blood? No, there was no injury. It let me touch the paws. Oh, so he did touch the dog. Yeah, I, I, uh, he lifted, the, he lifted to see if the dog had blood on him. But I, um, I, I thought would he never was, have touched that dog. No, he's pretty brave. Either stupid or brave, but I thought he was pretty brave. All those guys, that, that Indian dude, I guess he's an well, Indian. Well, we're, we're going to get to that. Here's more of uh, Stephen Schwab's testimony with Marsha Clark. All right. Every time it would pass a house on the east side of, of Bundy where you were all walking mm -hmm. that had a path leading up to it, it would stop and bark? It would stop and bark at, at bark down the path. And how many times did it do that? I would say approximately three times. Now, the pr uh, defense attorney called that into question. You know, they were trying to imply that the dog was doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. <laughs> because he barked at every entrance. Like, the dog's supposed to know right. what the address is. So uh, what I is thought it? that was pretty wild. You want, to, you want to talk to a woman who's uh, she's very upset with you. She says that you reach a lot of people and you're uh, unintentionally biasing this case. And she also happens to be from West Africa and has a pretty good accent. What is it, baby? Hello. Hi. How is Hello how there. How are you doing? Okay. Um, um, my name is Fadima, right? Fadima. Right. She's from, she's from Sierra Leone. I'm from Leone. Sierra Leone. What? Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. That's in West Africa. You wouldn't know, maybe. That's okay. Why are you calling it Leone? She's a Sierra Leone. He thinks it's Italian. <laughs> no, I'm not Italian. So are you a real jungle woman? I'm not. I'm not. When I'm did you not. grow up in Africa? Yes, I did. And did you wear a bone in your nose? No, I didn't. I was in the city. And oh, you were in the everything. city? Yes. You ever see a zebra? No. Why are you, you, why are you making Have those? you ever communicated on tom-toms with other neighboring <laughs> villages? Have I what? Have you ever milked a tiger? No, I've not. Where I live is not in the jungle. I'm in the city. Yeah, the city, but it's still very rural. No, it's not. No, it's not. The, we have everything. Tell me. 
We I have everything. Been in I've seen uh, I've seen National Geographic. <laughs> we no no we're not like that. We 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 were under the British. It was only like during the slave times maybe. You know, it was good, but after that, you know. And you went to school with shoes on or bare feet? I went to school. My mother was very, she's a businesswoman. They own a poultry. Oh, yeah. What business is she in? Witch doctoring? Poultry. No, she's not witch doctor. You try to what religion are you? What religion are you? Uh, what? What religion are you? I'm a Muslim. Did you ever boil a human skull to make soup? Howard, I don't do that. Ever dig a pit and fill it with uh, spears sticking up? No, I, no, I want you trying to make a joke. You've never been in the jungle. You've never been. I the... have never been in the jungle. You never went I to the bush. I have never been in the jungle. I grew up oh, as you don't a very that... middle class. You girl. never met a witch doctor. I I have gone there sometimes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you better with doctors. So, so like, we no, went you're... from we went from never to sometimes. No, you go to witch doctors to find out stuff you know about whatever oh, is happening. Oh, so you, you know? went to witch doctors, did you? Yeah. Oh, you, you did. There. You go oh. there to secure. Listen, you know why you go to, to those places to secure yourself because they have so many people around that can do stuff to you. Oh, you know? I see. In other words, you feel that there are other primitives who were going to do things to you. So in order to ward them off, you went to the witch doctor. Yeah, to protect yourself. But I tell you, she's a primitive. <laughs> what? Hey, I'm going to do something to you right now. Ooh wee wee ooh ah, ting tang, oh, wally wally stop, bing bang. No, stop joking. That's not what I called about. Have you ever stuck pins in a straw doll? No. <laughs> You've I never don't... once stuck pins in a straw doll. No. You never got a potion from a witch doctor. Yeah, a potion. Oh. I don't do those. I don't oh, do that. I don't, you don't do that. Nobody. I yeah. go to protect but myself. But you took a you took a potion to protect yourself. Did you, you not? You protect yourself from bad Admit people. Admit the truth. Did you did you, you protect you. yourself with a potion? I don't do that. I don't, you I go did drink a potion, didn't you? Howard, stop joking. I'm not joking. Stop joking. You know. Those things, I believe. Do you hang things. anything in your house? Have you ever hung? Yes, yes, I do. Tell us what you hung in your house, you you, you uh, woman of the city. Tell me what you hung in your house. Uh, what I hung in my house? Yes. Uh, I have stuff that to protect myself, to drive evil away. Oh, oh okay, yes. okay. So you, so you hang stuff in the house to drive evil away. Yes. And what evil would we be speaking of? Uh, you, people can just look at you and don't like you and try to put... Um, Bad luck on you. All right, let me ask you, have you ever worn a funny mask and danced around a fire the night before an attack? No. Have you ever been attacked, your tribe? You were part of a tribe, I assume. No, I've never been. I'm, I'm telling you, the mm -hmm. city is mm -hmm. peaceful. Yeah. Oh, I see. It sounds very different so far. It is. We're you got things city. hanging I'm in your house. The, I'm not from the country. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not from the city. I'm a city girl. Yeah, oh, I, I bet you are. Catholic school, girl school. Oh, yeah. You're some high Catholic. And high school. You don't even know the meaning of being a Catholic. A good Catholic doesn't hang I'm things in the house Catholic. like that. I went to a Catholic school. I'm a Muslim. Oh, I bet you are. Yes, I am. Ever and kill a chicken? I, kill, I don't kill chicken. Men kill chicken. All right. Did your man ever kill a chicken and drip the blood onto the stomach of a white woman? Tell the truth. They don't do that. They don't oh, do that. Oh, they don't do that, don't huh? Do that. Yeah, that's you never heard of that. Me. That's, that's totally what... foreign to you, isn't it? Howard. Yeah, okay. Listen, Robin, Howard. I go. this is a jungle bush Stop. woman, and she can't fool. She can tell you Howard. about the city all she wants. You can say whatever you want. Got a want, big bone in her nose. that's not what I call about. Have that's... you ever put plates in your lips? I've, I've, put, I've never done those. I told you, I'm not a primitive girl. I'm All right. a city girl. Mm -hmm. And I have you, how long, the, the answer this, how long does it take to rebuild a village after an elephant stampede? <laughs> they don't have hours. Look at that. You see? Yeah, look and at that. Every, you, you know what a city is to her? It's a straw hut. You make a joke, Howard. Liar. Liar. I expose you for what you are. So you yeah, haven't. We don't have those things in my country. We don't have elephants in my country. You've never pulled up a rock, seen like bugs and termites and eaten them. I want some plane. I, you know I don't know about no. those things. Do you no. know what she does? She goes to witch doctors, gets potions, takes them, and hangs like dead chickens in her house. I don't do that. How can you oh, hang a dead chicken? You just said dead? you did it. How, now you're how lying. How can you hang a dead, dead chicken in your house? What do you hang in your house? It's going to smell. Tell Robin what you hang in your house. She doesn't believe that you're a bush woman. Let, let, let Robin think whatever she Tell means. Robin what you I'm hang in your house now. I know which which is do what I say, I'll put a spell on you. You can't. We know. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't? I can challenge any witch doctor. They can't put nothing on me. Yeah, how can I'm you challenge a witch doctor? You you don't know my power. I'm sick. No, you're not. Oh, I have so much personal power, I could I could kill you over this phone. Howard, stop playing. Stop it. I could stop. do it. Howard, I'm going to put a spell on you. Stop playing. Stop you want me to put a spell on you? Stop playing. You Tell can't. me what you hung in your house. You wouldn't. That's, that's my personal business. That's no, private. that is not personal. That's private. That's you ever kill food with spears? No. Or your I people just throw every rocks? Every day, every day, my mother goes to the market, buys food from the market. And yeah, yeah, yeah. For us. I never had 
there's no time in my life I struggle to have anything. You want a blowgun? I don't have a gun. I don't believe in killing people. You don't have a blowgun. I don't believe that in is a lie. nothing. I don't it's believe a lie. in killing That's a filthy somebody lie. because You're I a believe in lie. life after death. You have to do to work for somebody whatever you want them. You've to never do. painted your face when you go to war no. with a neighboring village. We don't That's do a the, lie. We don't go to war. I've never heard about war. What did you I hang go. in your apartment to keep off the evil spirits? That's Tell not, me. That's not that is not your private business. You can then you're gonna give out the information. No, that's I my won't. Business. No, you, I want to know what you hung from the roof. If you if you if you're not clean and mm -hmm, you come to mm -hmm. my house, yeah. you, you're gonna be you're gonna I expose be, you for what you are, bushwoman. No. Primitive. Howard, listen. What what year did your village discover fire? That's not primitive. The white people do it too. You ever eat giraffe? They have primitive. Did you ever? What did you hang from your ceiling? Tell the truth now. No, that's not. Let me see what the white people are hanging too. That's it, my business. I guarantee you, white people the never white heard people, of it. The white people they have primitive too. They have those people that go catch all the the evil Th in. That's the right. And what do you and what do you hang from your ceiling? That's my business. Those people who hang things from their ceiling in this country who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, I've you are hanging things that are are are, are work of the devil. That's my business, Howard. Don't oh, I know what you're up to. <laughs> you ever dance topless in a grass skirt? No. Did you ever eat giraffe? No. You've never eaten giraffe? I do, I'm not that type. That That's is a lie. I'm not, I'm not a country guy. Did I'm you give your virginity to the chief of your tribe or not? I'm, no. Answer the question honestly. I, my parents are very educated. They cannot do that. Were you circumcised? Did you receive female circumcision? Was your clitoris removed at an early age? Not an early age when I was old enough. When you were, okay, so at an older age you removed your, your clitoris was removed, is that yes, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, you do admit that. Yes. That is a primitive jungle tribe, so you do not have it's a clitoris. A, it's, a, it's, a thing, it's a thing to slow down your sexual act, so, yes. so what? Yeah. You, you think that's right? Jumping man to man, jumping bed to bed. You Can have you to read, with your how mind. old were you when you had your clitoris removed? Like 15. 15? Yes. And, and, and aren't you sorry you lost your clitoris? What? You're sorry you lost your clitoris. A little bit, but not Of course. Oh, man, am I in pain now. I know. Do you admit that you can read... Can you read it? you're just talking about having that done. I mean, a clitorectomy... It hurts, but... It takes away all... Who did it? A doctor? A witch doctor, right? It's not a witch doctor. Tell the truth. They don't call them witch doctors. It's a society. Was who removed your clitoris? That's a secret women's society. I'm going to tell you something. You not only had your clitoris removed by your cousin, you've eaten giraffe. How could I say cousin? I don't know. Somebody removed. Who removed your clitoris? Was it an in fact a witch doctor? It's not a. You witch. are a jungle bush woman. I'm not. You are yeah, it's primitive. A, it's a. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a tradition. They what have. did you hang in your house? Tell her. No. Tell Robin now what you no. hung in the house. No. And Robin, Robin will know if she want to know one day. Did you ever hang a shrunken head in your house? No, I don't. Do you I have don't a... kill people, so would, I don't believe in. Would you remove people. your daughter's clitoris? No, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank mm -hmm. goodness. Oh, yes, yeah, she would. You'll see. No. Woman has no clitoris. She doesn't even no. know the meaning of pleasure. No. Oh. I know, I do. And do you achieve I orgasm vaginally? Me. Do you achieve orgasm vaginally? Uh, yes, I do. You admit that you do? Yes. <laughs> that had nothing to do with it anyway. No, Howard, let's talk something now. What I call... Has your village ever made a stranger honorary I'm chief because they had a watch? What? I'm not from the village. You I'm are. You, had your, you can't fool me. I know. I grew up in the black community. I know a primitive when I speak to one. I'm I had not, primitives living I'm with not me. A, I'm, I'm not a. Um, there are primitives and city folk. You are not a city folk. You had your clitoris removed and you hang it things and drink matter. potions. People live in the city. And you drink potions, don't you? Tell Robin what you hung from the ceiling if you're not a primitive. No, I'm not. I'm Wait till she tells you. I know what she hung, but I'm not going to say it. It don't matter. You say it. No, I don't have. I know it. all no, about you. I grew up in a black community, honey. Why do you think stop. I know you so well? Listen, stop playing. Stop playing. Oh, no, I'm not playing anything. It's not funny. You hung. So, it's, it's plenty Robin, funny. Robin, help me out here. Robin, no, admit, no, admit no, something, no, Robin. No, no, no. When she first came on, it's you thought funny. she was a city woman, didn't you? She still says she's a city woman. Yeah, now I'm you know the woman. truth. Come she's on, a bush woman. Say something. Tell him. Uh, well, you did call for a reason. Now, what was it? Uh huh. That's what I want to know. Okay. Howard was talking and uh, making bush comments woman. a few minutes ago about um, O.J., right? Yes. O.J., now listen to this. This is a bush woman talking about our O.J. Okay, listen, listen, listen. Uh. What happened to innocent until proven gu guilty? You get so many millions of people every day, right? And you're trying to be on one side. You're trying to be biased. Do you know you have a nerve commenting on how I handle yeah, no, situations? Opinion, you you a are a woman who is amazed by fire. Howard, listen, and you're going to tell me listen, that I know what's going I have, on? I have freedom where I come from, too. I oh, yeah, freedom. I saw the freedom. I see what goes where on in West Africa. But listen, listen to 
Okay, let me tell you something. Listen yeah, I see. You, you have no freedom. How you know what her area is known for? What? First ever Howard. documented case of AIDS. Of course. AIDS is running rampant there. I don't have AIDS. I don't have it because we don't go sleep around. If she had a clitoris, they could, they, could, they could rub each other instead of having uh, AIDS sex. Oh, Listen, Howard, stop. stop I wish I could send OJ to Africa. You, I, I wish he could have. But I would, warn, I would warn the animals first. Howard, don't play. Listen to me. Oh, well, she thinks I'm playing. Me. You know, you have, a, you. you have a right to your opinion. That's your opinion. That's what you feel. But, you know, you get, in, you know, get into so many people filling their head with, OJ is guilty, OJ is guilty, You tell the guilty. truth. What happened? You to tell the truth. Howard, the first time. Wait, wait a second. Innocent until proven guilty. We see all these things, police people. Darling, people darling, people. innocent yes. until proven yes. guilty yes. is a new yes. theory yes. to you. Yes. I grew up with it. You yes. grew up in a yes. land where there was no yes. guilty, yes. innocent, yes. nothing. Wait until the end. Oh, oh you're an expert now on American culture, huh? I don't, I'm not worried about American culture. Admit so that you, hey, hey, let me tell you something. We don't want you in America. We want you back in the oh, bush. Yes. I want to come to America to get what I can get. And oh, what can you get? America. You're going to get nothing. You're going to be a janitor here. You went over to Africa. You loved us. Have you Africa. ever eaten monkey brains? No, I don't eat you that. You are a liar. I'm not a liar. Listen. You are you lying now to, to me. Africa, you you ripped us all off. Admit the first time. Admit something. People, okay. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. White people. Admit to me. Deprive us of everything we had. Let me so tell you about the white man. Come here because if you're you making it like America is the only. Oh, you so now you hate the white man, huh, jungle I, woman? I don't hate nobody. Let me admit okay? you admit I'm to Robin. Saying I'm here because you people have given Oh, you people, you everything. people. Here's a woman grew up in Africa. She's blaming the white man. No oh, white yes, man took oh, you. Yes, honey. Oh, yes, you ripped off her country. Yeah, ripped off her country. Was, oh, please. There was slavery, Howard. Remember, don't forget, there was slavery. Did you... Listen admit to, to Robin the to first Africa. time that you, you divided the families. You brought people here oh. against their will, Howard. Who are you, Your Lawrence? Uh, listen to me. Ancestors. Listen to me. They listen to me. They brought people here. They brought people to America or whatever. I'll Europe show you how primitive she is. They, they <laughs> Let me watch divided this. Divided families. They first. Okay, I understand what you're saying. I understand everything you're saying. Oh, oh my goodness, where she go? I you got her going. <laughs> well, we have. Let please. me say something. Well, you know. Let me say something. Like honey, 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 the first time you saw a car, did you try to feed the car? I was, did you try to feed the car? Why don't you admit to that Robin? Was, that was, I, I didn't grow up. Or did the, you chase the car? I didn't grow up in the... In Even the Cheetah dark. knows O.J. is guilty. I did not grow up in the dark ages, Howard. When you saw the big I silver not, bird in the sky, after my did you know it was an airplane? Okay, so we had everything in our country. You know what? Why don't you go back to your country? Then go back there. I will go there when you pick. No, 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 not you people. I didn't do anything to you. Go home to Africa. I will come here and get what I can get from you people. And then no, and you're not going to get anything. I, oh, yes, get I from will. you people. What is it you want from us? Oh, Let me hear. Yes. Yes. Look at the rage. Yes. What because, is it you want? Because you make America. You've made yeah. America. You You're real civilized. All of us in go back to the bush. You suppress us. You are not civilized. You, you go take our stuff. You, you are not here. civilized. You use them. I don't you... know how we got into this discussion. We were talking about I know. Okay. I was... <laughs> because I got her going. I exposed her for who she is. How she is a jungle bush woman primitive who knows nothing about sometimes. innocent until guilty. You didn't put anybody in his place. The whole world is laughing at you right now. Well, it's not oh, they're laughing at because you. What I, what African bushwoman. <laughs> what I say makes sense. I'm going to buy you a pair Howard. of shoes. Howard, you are from me. West Africa. Howard. Why did you go back there and cure AIDS? Howard. Help the people out. Howard. What are you I, doing here? What I are you getting from? Here. Let me ask you, what are you doing in this country? I what are you getting know. from us? Let me hear. Let me t list for me what you got so at far. At least when I work, I get paid. Yeah. So about, how come in West Africa you can't get paid? Because the economy sucks. Be because, yes, because you people made it. Oh, you home. people. We're not over yes, there. Yes, I haven't been there for 500 years. You're not over there, but I'll you I'll take you. you. I'll take you. I'll, you I'll... make all the laws. You Come down here, man. You make the monetary. You make the international, the monetary business. Oh, you the make money. it all. Go make money. your own money. You give us loans and you give us high debt. You should see you the make... money in our okay, country. We want to help you out. We want to help you out. The pictures so you of have to, you have to devalue your, 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 oh, your money. Oh, you're an outrage. You want to help us out, but you want us to devalue our money. You want to put our money. Do you have calluses yourself. on the bottom of your That's feet? What you do. That's do you what have calluses? Do. do you have calluses on the bottom of your feet? That, I don't have nothing because I don't walk there. Are your calluses I thicker than a Sicilian pizza? I've never walked. I've never like. You walk barefoot. Admit it. Shoes. 
shoes. You have no shoes. I what? I always have shoes, Doc. I'm going to start hollowing out a tree Stop with a sharp it. stone Stop to it. sail Stop you it. home Stop to it. Africa. Stop it. <laughs> Why don't, don't you, you why don't you wrap this up? Do you wipe with banana leaves? Listen. Or is that your money you wipe with? Is that the money you wipe with or is it banana leaves? You want me to go? Just give me 20000 I hope it's uh, 20000 I come here uh, Come down here. I'm going to give you 20000 i got to get rid of you. Come on, give me 20000 Get out of here. Tomorrow. Tom, give me 20000 Give me 20000 I live It's the best tomorrow. money I ever spent. Give me this. The five All you do is have your hand out. Hand out. Hand out. I will never come back to America. Yeah, good. Tell you that. Good. You'll Just sign a piece of that. paper. Good. Just give me that. Now you'll be back. Use of that money. No, you'll go. No, 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 no. So what? If I give you, if I gave you twenty thousand dollars, this is still slavery. Here. If I gave you twenty thousand dollars, you know what would happen? You go back to your country, you get duped by the witch doctor when he sells you I some old roots I that would. hang from your nose. I would. Just give me twenty thousand dollars. You're a dupe, sucker. I will never come back to America. Never until I die. I hope you sit on a. I hope you sit on a terrain. The size of a softball when you go back there. And, you, and they take it to the Taurus and throw it in the river. Oh, That's right. Howard, shut up. If you, Howard, if you want right, to get, down, if you get this argument in stereo, there's a man from Nigeria. Uh, another, Nigeria. Same accent. Another Bush oh, no. man. And he's, he's also saying that, Howard, all Africans are not alike. I just told you, I expose this woman as being from the deep bush. Howard, he's educated. From the bush. You I'm can from see. The city. You're not from nowhere. If you know your history, your geography, you would know I'm from the I know city. geography, and the word is geography. And let me say something. I don't care. You, you are an embarrassment to all Africans. You, you pronounce it different. I pronounce it different. I accent, tell accent, you the following. Is different because I grew up different places. Listen to me, grow up. Different. So don't tell me I'm not right. That's how I pronounce it. That's how Listen I'm, to me. I I'm going to tell you something. To the no, no, I'm going to tell her something. i got to tell her something before I pick up the phone on the Nigerian and let him have it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something, honey. What? You are an embarrassment to all Africans, and I'll I tell you why. Not. I'll tell you why I you are. I am not. You are because... I am not. Because you look for handouts. 20,000. What yeah, are you, fleecing us? You are going to do a shakedown? You ask me what I'm uh, doing Oh, you here. make me sick. You ask us, you go to work. You go to work in this country, you pay bills, and the money on stays back here. Sir, what Let do you want? You. Hello? Yeah, what do you want? Yeah, uh, listen, I want, I'm a very, very fun of your show, right? The show. I love your show. Every Poor Mandela is saying I went to prison for these two. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me something? Can you tell me what you think of Africans when you just hear African? Words? I love Africans. You do? Yes. I, was listening. I, I was wanted to prove that this woman was lying. She's from the bush. I'm not from the bush. Howard. You are from the bush. I can tell from your accent. I grew up with people funny. like you. It's not funny. You are from the bush, Howard, and you hang. You hang. It is sir, not funny. sir, did you grow up in the city? Yes, I did. All right. Do you uh, do you go to witch doctors? Sir? Do you go to witch doctors? No, I don't. Of course not. And do you hang powdered root from your ceiling? Every, no. Everybody, everybody yeah. has what they believe in. We this man, this believe. man, everybody I can tell from his accent, believe. I can tell this man is from the city. You are from the bush. From bad people. No, listen to me. No I can tell from talking to this man that he is from the city. You are, uh, you, he is refined. You are from the bush. It matters to me opinion. when you lie to me. I know in my mind I'm from the city. Oh, please. Please, too. You Hello? Please. Hey, sir, is Hello? your wife is your wife circumcised? <laughs> sir? What? Say again, say again. I said, is your wife has your wife had her clitoris removed? No. Of course not, not because you not because you are from the city. He yeah, is not married, he said. He's not married. Do you know did you have a sister? Sir? Does you have a sister? Yeah, I do. That's how they talk in Africa. <laughs> Does you have a sister? I will be can you please pick the up? I can hardly hear you. Yeah, well, because you get your radio on. Oh, hang on, hang on. Hang yeah, on. yeah, you just figure that out. i tell you something. I can't believe it. I, I, as we speak, I'm going to put a chain across the ocean to keep away <laughs> African canoes. Oh, I'm, I'm back, I'm back. I'm back. I'm I said, you... Miss, you... miss, 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 miss. Now, she is not civilized. Listen to me. Please. Yes. What? People have this belief, you know, that Africans have a you know, general thing. Right? We are all not alive. We yeah, admit she's people. an embarrassment. Admit she's an embarrassment. Well, you know, I really can't say that. No, I can't say, say that. It, say thank it. you very I much, my brother. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tell him that. She's my people. I mean, I love did you. Your you know, sister, love did your sister? Did your sister have her clitoris removed? <laughs> it's not right. No. Of course not. D oh, don't people in the bush do that? Yes. And what? don't tell me differently, ma'am. No. You are from the bush. I rest my case. Howard, Howard, listen. I, I, I'm not listening to you. 
I'm not listening to either of you. <laughs> you have you can. to. He is civilized. You know you lose it. You have to get me out. You know you lose it. Let me No, I'm not losing anything, honey. I've exposed you for the phony you are. He is civilized, and lady, you are barely walking upright. Right. And you should go back to Africa. And I'm not giving you twenty thousand because you would just squander it on witch doctors and powdered root. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to best. And as far as we love you, I listen to you, though. I listen to you. Ah, shut up. <laughs> well, I'm glad we got that off. I told you she was from the bush, and now I proved her. The phony that she is. I got to take a break. You I'm sorry. You are amazing when you Thank get you. together with different cultures. Right. Well, I know a phony when I hear Nothing it. Nothing but clashing. That I prove it. I should be on that witness stand. I should be the lawyer in the OJ case. You could break OJ. Oh, I could break him in two seconds. Put him on the stand. I get him on his knees. I'm a one-man melting pot. <laughs> All right. I got to take a break. We were talking about the O.J. case when we went away, or before that. Oh, that was friend ridiculous! Of yours called. That woman was was clearly out of her mind. <laughs> well, let's go on. Now. Right. Because uh, we were talking about the dog Cato and how he was found by Stephen Schwab, who took the stand yesterday, and then he was followed to the stand by several other people who also could testify to the wailing of the dog and what time they started to hear it, and the other gentleman in the case who eventually discovered the bodies, Shukru Bostepi. Nice try. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> so here's a Shukru. Shukru. All right, are we going to hear from a shoe crew or not? Shoe crew, Buzz Debbie. Right. I couldn't figure out what this guy was. What is he, Indian? It sounds Indian, doesn't it? He didn't have a dot on his head. Well, they don't all come with dots. All right. Should have been wearing a diaper to turban. I saw a lady laying down. Four plus. I turned to my wife and I said that there was a dead person there. And... We, called, we tried to call 911. Is this on the right speed, Robin? No. Is that his wife? Isn't that the guy from Oz who testified? <laughs> that was the wizard. That was Shukru. It's a lollipop kill. He didn't sound that like that before. Speed. That was the wrong speed, I'll I tell you that. Scott adjusted the speed. <laughs> I was smoking in the speed. Yeah. Got to Scott back there really paying attention yeah. to what Shukru's this exchange. Hmm. Oh, well, well, that was Shukru. He oh. came upon the body and very coolly said to his wife, Oh, there's a dead body. <laughs> yeah, that guy was almost like in a coma. Yeah, he didn't get excited at all. Uh, I mean, maybe he was, you know, his recollection of it on the stand is rather calm. I can't imagine that he had such a deadpan demeanor on the night of. Well, I don't but know he either. He was the one who took the dog and the dog uh, led him back to the body. He's and a brave dude. He then knocked on the door yep. around the area to uh, get someone to call 911. Very brave man. And, you know, let me remind people, just because I think O.J.'s guilty doesn't mean the jury thinks O.J. is guilty. Thank you. The, uh, let us all remember that the jury is sequestered and not subject to hearing this show unless they're doing something they're not supposed to be doing. And you can have any opinion you want. And even if the jury heard me, what's wrong with nitwits who can't think for themselves? The point is, that's exactly the case. You right. can listen to this radio show. It doesn't mean you have to believe what Howard says. Who made you God? I mean, uh, I don't know. I got a feeling that African woman put a spell on my last tape. Uh. It's all high speed, but uh, that was an absolutely ludicrous phone call. And that phone call will be ludicrous again tomorrow at 730. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. It was beautiful. Was Worth a replay. Also, there was another development in the case, Howard. I don't know if you're aware of it, but one of the key defense witnesses, this Marianne Gurches, yeah. we heard so much about in Johnny Cochran's opening statements. Yeah. She was arrested yesterday. Here is an LAPD spokesperson to give us the details. And this would be the woman that saw the four guys killing uh, Nicole? That's right. Okay. Sure. She was arrested. A felony warrant was issued for the arrest of suspect Gurches. Suspect Garcia surrendered on 2895 and was booked at the West Los Angeles station. She immediately posted bail and was released. Wow. She has been charged with defrauding the Marriott, Ho Marriott Hotel of $23,000 by staying there and not ever paying her bill. After the Los Angeles earthquake, they say that this could possibly 
undermine her testimony in the eyes of the jury should it come to light in the trial, but we don't know if it will actually be allowed. Here is Johnny Cochran's response. Ugh outside of the courtroom to the news that one of his star witnesses had been arrested. All those things that they're talking about aren't even admissible here. That's the thing you're putting, it's oh, not even admissible. Okay. Now, if she got convicted of a felony, that might be admissible. Isn't that the witness that you said uh, some people were accusing of being an O.J. Simpson trial groupie? Well, Marcia groupie? Clark said yeah. when she was uh, screaming in court... She's always screaming. The day she found out that Marianne Gertis would be the, you know, one of the uh, witnesses to testify in the case, that she was, she had called the prosecutor's office many times to try to get involved with the case, and they considered her an OJ groupie. She is, Howard said, is the woman who claims she saw four ski masked men or ski cap wearing men in the neighborhood the night of the deaths of Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman. There was an article in the paper today. Did you read it about the woman who went down to um, Harlem or something? She went to some beauty shop? No. Started asking people what they now thought about O.J.? And what happened? Everyone said uh, they thought he was innocent. <laughs> so they, the woman said, well, how do you find all this evidence? They go, look, man. You know, O.J. beat his wife. And O.J. might have been rough with her and everything. We, you know, one thing has nothing to do with the other. other. Down here, everybody beats their wife. Did you read that? Ooh. So it's like, you know. No, you should read that to me. Yeah, Let everybody me has their that. problems. It was pretty wild. It was at, uh, it's in the post. That's a shame. I'm sorry people are living that way. And you don't think the jury is going uh, is gonna... to. That doesn't mean those people live in Harlem and feel uh. that same way, Howard. No, you have seen the polls, though, right? <laughs> I have seen polls, yes. And what do they indicate? Know. If the jury feels right. that way. I am willing to let people be individuals. Well, we'll see what happens. Might as well. Johnny Cochran is uh, kind of a mm. wild guy. It's a good thing that jury is sequestered. Yeah, because you know what? Johnny would be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's co Johnny Cochran is going to end up in jail. Yeah, O.J.'s lawyer is a wild man. He's guilty than O.J. He's guilty <laughs> And I always love the the women these guys decide to hook up with. Because yeah. they all talk. I know. You know how you're always saying, I need somebody who won't talk? I don't think the woman there ain't There yeah. ain't a one. <laughs> I don't think she exists. Yeah. Because this so-called mistress, who uh, Cochran has had for a number of years, and who he supposedly still pays uh, support to, is talking to Cindy Adams. <laughs> now, there's someone you want your mistress talking to. And she says that Cochran told her all he needed was one black on that jury, and he could get O.J. a hung jury. Oh, duh. <laughs> she said to get us a scoop. Of course, of course. Uh, that's his attitude, according to his mistress, Patricia Cochran. And she also says that he uh presents himself as a man who thinks that all people are equal, but uh, he refers to people often in terms of labels. Blacks, whites, hillbillies, psychotics, rednecks, stupid. Yeah, nobody does, huh? <laughs> I'm just telling you about his public persona as opposed to oh, who he please. is. Let me tell you something. With nine blacks on the jury, not only will O.J. be found innocent, he could end up governor of California. What do you think of that? That's the truth. Because you know what it is? A lot of black people sit there and they go, Wait a second, that's a black man on trial. Mm -hmm. I can just as easily be hauled out of my house and put on trial and they'll just convict me because I'm black. I'm letting OJ go. There's a whole deep psychological thing. And it's not unfounded, by the way. In this, in this country, many, many years... Black guy used to be on trial. You just put him away you, automatically. You know, a black man in court is guilty. It that will be was the way it was. How this Marsha Clark, I don't know what planet she's living on. <laughs> but she's obviously living in, in Mars. She's more on Mars than Fred is. She's the mother of Mars. Allows nine black people on the jury. Unbelievable. Johnny Cochran's doing a dance. You know, most listen, for many years in this country, most white people said if a black guy is on trial, he did something. He might not be accused. Maybe the crime he did... He is innocent of, but he must have done something. Or he will. Or he will do something. He'll I don't think that had anything to do with it. I think that they really? pretty much believed if you got a black man in court, he was guilty. Of course. <laughs> I don't know that it's changed. Especially if it was a crime against a white. Right. 
But anyway, uh, we, we uh, certainly, uh, it's obvious to anybody with a half a brain that O.J. killed these people, but it'll be interesting. The reason we're so fascinated is this jury could be uh, pretty racially motivated and actually let O.J. walk. Which will, uh, listen, I'm not going to leave the country if that happens. <laughs> That's not. it. Where, Where am I going to go? Gonna go? Where am I going to go exactly? That's a good question. I, I'll huh? go on with my life. What can I do? Maybe we'll start our own country. Oh, Robin, I'd love it. <laughs> you and, I can... and we'll be the big monkey mm. mom. They're oh. going to have to come to us. No one will be innocent. <laughs> <laughs> What else is in the news? Well, of course, O.J.'s trial is in the news. Yesterday, the uh, part of the case for the prosecution that could be its biggest problem mm -hmm. began to unfold. It's how the police officers who first arrived on the scene yes. handled the murder site. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, it's officer whose name is Ronald Risky, I think his name is. Yeah, his name is Ronald Risky. <laughs> Can you believe that? Well, that's a pretty wild name. Cool, risky. <laughs> Just like my cigarette smoking. It's Robert Risky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jackie Risky. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the stand, and when he was being examined or questioned Ooh. by Marsha Clark, yeah. he said everything was handled perfectly. Here you go with a little bit of Marsha Clark and Robert Risky. And why was it that you decided to step over the body of the woman and go inside the condo? To see if there's any other victims in the house or any re evidence in the house. What about a possible suspect? Possible suspect. At that point, you didn't know? No. So he's claiming that any time they might have crossed the body or anything like that, it would have been perfectly appropriate. If I had been there, I would have checked for cigarettes. <laughs> However, on cross-examination, it was very obvious that the uh, police officer didn't appreciate being cross-examined at all. I don't know if they told him this was going to happen. Yeah. He seemed surprised that this guy was asking him questions. But he didn't have what I consider the proper attitude. The cop, you mean? Yeah, toward, uh, as far as the jury is concerned. Because he was not quite uncooperative. But he was leaning that way. Really? He was annoyed. Yeah. Yeah? I, see, I didn't pick up on that. But really? No. I thought that way, and I felt that if I were advising these guys as to how to handle this in the courtroom, if my story is that I did everything right, why even be afraid of the uh, questions the guy's going to give him the proper attitude, like you're just a professional guy and you're doing your job? See, I didn't get that vibe. I, I, I know that cops are taught a way to testify. Mm -hmm. It's got to be very robotic. And it's almost like he's supposed to be machine-like. And I thought that he was actually testifying, but this is what I know about it. This, he was actually testifying in a very professional manner, only answering the questions, being very careful not to step on the, the uh, person uh, interviewing him, you know, not to step on his question or anything like that. And, oh, uh, I'm not saying he, he didn't, I didn't get the vibe. The no, I didn't get the vibe. I didn't get the vibe he was hostile. Oh, really? No. Everybody else was picking up on it. Even the commentators were really? saying, you know, he's, he's pushing it a little bit. He hasn't gone too far yet. Really? But it's very obvious that this guy is, you know, and most of the LAPD is very upset about the way they've been characterized by the defense. I was very attracted to his personality. I thought he was very up. <laughs> Much more up the mountain. Well, he's a, he was animated compared to Scott. That's true. You ever hear Scott on the witness stand? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear Johnny Cochran. So anyway, here's Johnny Cochran <laughs> talking to Officer Risky. That's a funny name. <laughs> no funnier than Officer Krupke. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Risky. <laughs> About uh, something he might have done that was uh, out of the way. And I will pay attention to how he answers to see if it sounds hostile. Well, you can't hear it. It was more in his demeanor. Uh, let me see. When you first saw this ice cream, hmm. what time was it when you first saw that ice cream, the melting ice cream? Melting ice cream. I would estimate 12, 35, 12, 40. So at that time, hmm. at 12, 40, this melting ice cream in the Ben and Jerry's container had not fully melted, Right. Uh, not in my opinion, no. <laughs> he does sound like Scott the Engineer, Officer Risky. <laughs> my wife says I'm guilty. <laughs> not in my opinion. Can no. somebody do me a favor? This is the stupidest part of this sure. case. Because all you have to do is get a cup of Ben and Jerry's and see how it melts. 
Why don't they just go over to OJ, smack him in the head with a bat, and tell him to tell the truth? <laughs> Be done with it. Speak him in the nuts two times. He'll Everybody's going to speculate as to whether the crimes were committed later because this ice cream wasn't melted or not. OJ. Also in the uh, case yesterday, they had a big argument over whether uh, a piece of videotape could be shown. The defense has videotape showing people walking through the crime scene uh, and picking up things, moving them around, people stepping into the blood and tracking it all over the place. And Marsha Clark, once again, blew up in court, Ugh. explaining that the defense is trying to prejudice this jury. I'll give her a cigarette. <laughs> She'll calm down. Hey, look, she's blowing up right in court. Look at that. You're right. I'm looking at the video here. It looks like she's literally going to blow up. There she goes. There she goes. <laughs> Here's Marsha Clark. This is another distortion. This is another deception. Because what, the, what he is trying to show this jury is that there was some nefarious sinister agency at work here in moving the evidence. In fact, that is totally false. Totally farcical. Obviously having a period. Oh, we've been this every day of the month. You can pretty much tell when she's on it. You think oh, so? Oh, man. Sure, so a lot of women get. They have to leave. <laughs> well, I understand also that Life Magazine will be showing pictures oh. of all the attorneys in the case in the more casual setting, not in the courtroom, in there private life where you can see Johnny Cochran singing on stage with the Temptations and Martha Clark hanging back in her office with a big smile on her face. And now, the Johnny Cochran special on ABC television. Here's Johnny. Hey, baby. Tonight I'll be singing with the Temptations. Just like the Mark and Brian TV show. So they're all having a good time. Here's Johnny putting out his garbage. Here's some hidden video camera of Johnny walking into his house. I, got, I don't know why people are fascinated by seeing Johnny Cochran pictures of Johnny relaxed in his house. I don't know, but Life Magazine seems to think it'll be a big turn on. I'll probably buy it. <laughs> got to take a break. We'll be right back.